Looks like we're watching some motherfucker shredded up from the 90s. That VHS era shit. Welcome to the News Underground. I am Abandoned Nihilism, a.k.a. the realest motherfucker on Twitch. Better ask your mother. Ask your mother. I'm sorry. No, but keeping it real, I am the realest motherfucker on Twitch easily. My agenda is to give you real information. My agenda is democracy. My agenda is liberty. My agenda is equity and equality wherever possible peace on motherfucking earth and i'm unashamed of that so welcome to the news underground we got a packed show it's positively obese hmm <laughs> sold there over here positively obese i didn't even have time to go through my old shit I'm back from vacation, as you can tell. Brian, I'm unashamed. Greetings from south of Boston. It's your boy, Lenny. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry, I gotta get reused to my soundboard. Welcome back, Lenny. Accidents waiting to happen. Make sure you're liking and subscribing to Lenny, folks. Hashtag more Lenny. Um, well, what the hell? I just, I just killed that link. But did I have something on it? No? Okay. I'm tripping. All right. I guess we're starting with the... Um, no, I wanted to do this after the UK. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to be starting it off. Uh, welcome back, Woke Patriot, as well. Um, thank you for all your uh, contributions in the Discord. We're going to be starting off with the UK election. Getting an update on that. I got a big, juicy video. We're not going to watch all 44 minutes of it, though. Don't you worry. going to jump into some... Uh, 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 su surprise news! This this just was a story that shocked me out of Canada, and it's it's actually a story that isn't boring from Canada. Strategy, you should be sorry. You're you're like a whole minute late. Are you kidding me? I'm a I'm a twenty viewer Andy. I'm 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 so grateful for every view. Thank you. Whenever you can get here, thank you. Uh, we're gonna be jumping into Chad El Salvador has some pretty shocking news. Uh, update from our favorite dictator in waiting, El Salvador. And uh, got some interesting things to say about that. Uh, shocking news. It's actually shocking out of El Salvador, so stick around for that. Um, we got ourselves a second whistleblower from Boeing. Dying. Yeah, just, just, so I'm just a second one. Just a second one from Boeing. Uh, a whistleblower, you know, exposing Boeing. Apparently this time, though, it's natural causes. Uh-huh. I'm uh, going to be jumping into then uh, some climate news uh, from the United States, the tornadoes that are ravaging the United States, uh, I think Minnesota, as well as Texas. I have footage, uh, Kansas and uh, Texas. Boy, that's ironic. Then we're, we're going to be jumping into something that's actually going to be useful to you if you're a young person or an old person, actual useful information. 
I know, I know. What what are we doing here? That is the wrong button. Anyway, so actual useful information. You're going to want to stick around for this because uh, changes are being made. Positive changes are being made to how we do our taxes. Of course, this all depends on if a Republican gets in, into office because th uh, this kind of stuff will be reversed immediately if that's the case. A few bibs and bobs about the fascists that are taking over, including Republicans now proudly proclaiming that they're wearing diapers. Um, so we're going to be, uh, jumping into that. Uh, don't like this economy. Yeah. I'd also, we're going to be capping off our right wing update with an article I saw from salon here about the reality of the right wing economy, the conservative, economy. there's this, there's this total canard that's running around, you know, they're just, they're happy, happy as a clam to tell you, Oh, Trump's economy was great. Trump's economy was great. Sorry for my bad joke. What are you talking about? You're fine. You're fine. Um, but no, there's this total lie that's going around that Trump's economy was somehow super great and everything was super great. You know, it's like uh, a total lie. So I thought I'd, I'd have this article, read this article here uh, to just run over that uh, that lie and push back on that because it's, you know, it's the gaslighters are so successful. Can, it sometimes can be hard to push back. You're like, well, I don't know. Was it? I, I know COVID happened and that's not his fault. You know, was it was it that great? No, it actually wasn't that great. Just because you're still suffering under Biden, who hasn't, who has made marginal improvements here and there, but mainly let the corporations completely gouge us on top of inflation. Trudeau's doing the same thing. Um. Anyway, so moving on, so we're going to be talking about that. Um, Arizona votes to repeal. So this is interesting that you know that abortion ban that we saw in Arizona using that law from 1864 before Arizona was even a state, apparently. Um, has actually been repealed um, and mainly because you know uh, Republicans are getting wise to the idea that um, you know the the other half of the population women um, don't really like greasy fat pedophilic right-wing conservatives uh, getting all up in their womb they actually don't like that it's shocking so uh, shocking you really actually totally you know once again you know shocking kind of video like if you kind of video you never see uh uh really uh, in these in these conservative uh you know they like they try they try so hard to fight even against stuff that's that's for their own their own interest right they're so principled on that it's interesting how self-destructive they are they really are principled in some twisted kind of way welcome back ice king um okay then of course we're jumping into the protest stuff we're gonna we're gonna be covering all the protest stuff uh we got evidence of uh, Jerry Seinfeld's wife fucking funding these uh, these goon squads that are running around and harassing pro-Palestinian uh, protests. Uh, all kinds of fun little bips and bobs we're going to be going over through this. Um, how counter pro... Yeah, yeah. We have this really great New York Times article that... Here it is. I was looking for this. There it is. Yeah, this really great New York Times article... That goes over that is you know we, take a snapshot uh before they change the headline to be more ambiguous and less uh you know less calling out of the antagonists of this very clear who, who are we kidding here i mean it's it's so you know <laughs> it's so obvious that it was pro-israeli people that were there to crack some heads and we're doing everything they could to antagonize and 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 really make a mess of things so uh this new york times article um actually telling the truth which is so shocking <laughs> favorite word of the day how counter protesters at ucla provoked violence unchecked for hours um total true totally totally true truthful statement let's see how long this lasts <laughs> i'll refresh the page before we cover it uh, so yeah we'll be getting into the protests um yeah bunch of clips from that okay yeah then we're gonna get into gaza um just in general gaza in general including including a very interesting clip from the view and before you before you put up your pitchforks it's uh it's the broken clock syndrome over here but really what what it is is it's a sign that you've lost the mainstream so very interesting you know i think uh pro protest uh, segment here from the vo from the view not not falling in line with the mainstream media and joe biden and the government's preferred um 
narrative, which is that these protesters uh, are dangerous. They support Hamas, yada, yada. Um, oh, really, Davey, really? You've seen you've you've seen a lot of quite a lot of videos of pro-Palestinian goons intimidating and threatening, in some cases assaulting random students. Well, by all means, go ahead and put some videos in there of pro-Palestinians out of the blue cracking heads. Uh, I would I, I would like to see that. You know, Davey, for a guy that supports Palestine, you sure do come to the defense of Israel very quickly, very quickly. I'm sure I'm sure none of the evidence that I have that points to these protesters of uh, counter protesters being um, uh, being astroturfed, being funded. I'm sure I'm sure you I'm sure you won't be convinced by any of this evidence that these counter protesters were funded by right wing pro ethnic cleansing, pro kick out the kick out all the Palestinians. Yes, those people do exist. Uh, yeah, so once we're done with Gaza, quick update on Georgia, the protests coming out of Georgia. Just have one video, unfortunately. Um, and then we're going to be doing Ukraine. So how about I quit wasting time and get, in, get, get right into the news then? But like I said, first thing we're, we're covering is going to be the UK. But yeah, I do. I, I want to see, hey, if there's videos of uh, pro-Palestinians agitating... I think what we need, I think what both sides need to stop doing is guilt by association when it comes to protest, right? Because we can see how it can affect the right and the right wing protest. We can see how it can affect the left. And there's, there's some frightening laws that are being passed that are basically saying uh, if one person who is, who is part of the protest commits violence, then everyone is guilty, including the organizer, especially. Um, and it's it's shocking that we're kind of allowing this, right? We're allowing it for our side, right? When it benefits us, and we're allowing it for the uh, for the left as well. It's primarily happening on the left, um, because all I guess all you need to do is uh, throw on a, a Palestinian scarf, beat somebody up, put that shit on social media, and there you go. Pro the entire protest movement is invalid. Done. Isn't that great? Isn't that convenient? If we go along with these narratives, right? Um, it's it's fair to say, uh, it's fair to say, according to the evidence that I've seen, the substantial evidence that I've seen, it's fair to say that the pro-Israeli side were the ones agitating, attempting to commit physical violence, um, the evidence reflects that. Um, but I would be curious to see any pro-Palestinian committing intent, you know, committing just violent, you know, not defending him or herself, but just, you know, waiting around a corner or agitating in the way that we saw the pro-Israeli protesters doing. He said he's seen a lot. So there's got to be a lot of evidence there. All right, but we'll we'll get to that coming up. Everyone wants to get yell, yelling about that, but no, we got more news to cover than that. Um, Tories suffer huge loss at local elections, but what does this mean for the general one? So that's that's the obvious question. Um, how effective have the Tories been at slowing down the momentum, and how how much has uh, the momentum of the Labour Party, and how effective or how effective well how damaging has uh, Keir Starmer's Joe Biden-esque knee-jerk defense of Israel's war crimes. Uh, how has that affected um, the Labor Party? Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert, it affected them big time. Not big, big time, but it will absolutely allow, uh, you know, uh, it will definitely hurt them. It will definitely uh, hit them more than 10%. But let's get into it and see. 
Well, let's take a closer look at the results. More than 2,500 council seats were up for grabs no, in 107 Patriot, English councils. Results are still coming those in, but as of a few minutes ago, it. 91 of those have declared. Labour have gained eight councils overall and the Conservatives have lost six. There's been no change for the Lib Dems or the Greens. And there's three fewer with no overall control. In terms of councillors, Labour have gained 164, with the Conservatives losing 386, heading towards the most pessimistic pre predictions for their overall performance. Zio Duke, looks like you're saying you've seen plenty of evidence of pro-Palestinians agitating violence. I mean, put the links in the chat. I want to see this. I'll get them lined up. The Lib Dems gained 71, the Greens gained 48, and there God are 84 damn, more independents. Mm. Reform UK has won one council seat. In the four English mayoral races for which we have results, there's now a Labour mayor in the Prime Minister's backyard after they won in York and North Yorkshire. The PM, of course, is the MP for Richmond. Labour mayors, too, for the North East and the East Midlands. The other First direction. time any of them were contested. Ah, yeah. The Tories breathed a very big sigh of relief after holding on to Tees Valley. Labour had been hoping to unseat Ben Houchen, as we've heard. So some comfort there for the PM. But the day started with a big blow for Rishi Sunak. Labour claiming a massive win in the Blackpool South parliamentary by-election with a 26% swing. That's the third highest Labour to Tory Oof. swing in post-war history. Results have also been declared in 26 Oof. police and crime and commissioner contests. And that's without hammering on Brexit, by the way. Keir Starmer just hands off Brexit, strategically saying, like, people just don't even want to hear it anymore. So this is without hammering on their worst policy decision, you know, uh, you know that's affecting everything. That's, that's literally the, the cause of, of all this, you know, uh, not all, but a good chunk of the, uh, the pain. So that, that's quite interesting as well. Tests in England and Wales. To me at least. With Labour flipping eight from the Conservatives. Clyde Cymru held on to theirs. Krish. Thanks. Well, with so many losses, Rishi Sunak has described the night as disappointing, but is apparently sure voters will stick with the Tories come the general election. Mm. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is in Westminster. Gary. One of the things pollsters do in these elections is extrapolate the national equivalent vote. Uh, and, and, and that is trying to look at basically where the parties <laughs> with the stand. And when you look at that figure, and there are different versions available, we've got our own, about Irish a 10-point Labour lead in our one. Other, other extrapolations come out with something similar. A lot of people might be scratching their heads and saying, well, hang on, I thought Labour had a 20-point lead or something of that order in the opinion polls. What's happening here? And what's happening here is that this is a set of local elections and quite often uh, the vote dissipates on the non-government side to different causes and coalesces uh, when it comes to a general election a bit more and that is obviously what uh, Keir Starmer will be uh, hoping happens but even in these local elections when you drill down into the numbers and look at the key seats that Keir Starmer needs to win uh, to get a ah, decent deal. majority in a no general problem. election He's doing quite well in those seats. Look, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to bamboozle here. You know, if you got some proof of, you know, pro-Palestinians causing some shit, I absolutely want that to be seen. Um, because it should be called out, and you know, of course, you know, those that are leading this protest movement should, you know, should be asked, you know, do you agree with these actions? And then given the opportunity to say, of course not, because of course they don't. It's a peaceful goddamn protest. <laughs> no, it's not. They're a bunch of thugs. Oh, it's a bunch of Gazas. But I don't agree with the right-wing framing, says Davey. And Labour would say, look also at the police and crime commissioner elections. Low Shit, turnouts it's not really quite right often, wing, is it? Uh, sometimes dismissed, but quite often more of a two-horse battle. And in those, Labour is doing really quite well. There are some concerns for Labour in these numbers, uh, though, and that is to do with uh, sometimes more left-leaning voters who are drifting away from Labour, maybe in some uh, wards. And as you well, said, a uh, Muslim uh, voters who seem to be definitely uh, walking black, away from Labour in some green. numbers. That could end up being more of an oh, issue for Labour okay. in government than necessarily trying to win an election to get into government.
but for Rishi Sunak, well, it looks pretty grim wherever you look. That 25% share of the vote, which we Poor think uh, he's going to hit when all the numbers are in, yeah, is really colors. quite close to uh, rock bottom for the Conservative Party. There are distinctly flashing red lights on his dashboard. He, he's oh, Davey, do you, do you acknowledge that it was one entrance that was blocked? Okay, that the students could have entered that building from from the building that had the entrance blocked from other locations. Do you acknowledge that? And the occupation of the building is that really is that really a worse crime than what we're seeing being perpetuated? Is occupying a building a war crime, Davy? Because that's what we're talking about: war crimes, crimes against humanity. Is occupying a building apples to apples? Really, bud? You're so pathetically in line with this anti-Palestinian framing. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say, man. There's literally no evidence. There's literally no evidence. It's not a comparison. Okay, so you're not comparing the two. You do acknowledge that the war crimes being committed and supported by uh, being committed by Israel and supported by the United States are far, far worse than some fucking students occupying a portion of a fucking building. Do you you do acknowledge that, right? <laughs> Jeez. It's, it looks like he's going to evade. And those and those people aren't aren't there to hurt people. Okay, they're not hurting anybody, but they're being attacked. Their violence is being brought upon them. Occupying a space in a building is not the same as physical violence. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ! You know, I, I, your, I, I bet your opinions on Occupy would have been just as equally disgusting. Yeah, no, I, you know, I, I rail against the police state, but in this case, I think the police state's perfectly adequate. And this is a good thing. This is against public safety. See, now I'm putting words in your mouth. But come on, if if this if this can't isn't considered a peaceful protest, then I don't know what is. Then honestly, then then there is no such thing as a peaceful protest. If what these uh, pro Palestinian protesters are are doing isn't peaceful then i then that then there's just then there's just nothing that can ever be de defined as that are they literally just supposed to do a quick one hour march and go home we're talking about what fourteen thousand dead children i i'm sure you understand the severity of that once again is that the crimes of killing fourteen thousand children Less important than occupying a fucking space in a fucking university? Get with it. Get with it. Is there nothing you won't justify? Get with it, man. <laughs> then he sort of uh, immediate coup inside his party, as some MPs uh, were threatening. One of them said to me, he's got a stay of execution. Well, we'll see about that. But definitely, red lights hey, flashing Leon on Stoke. his dashboard tonight. Here's what we know so far Leon about the Stoke. results. Congrats, Leon. That's all, it's a lot, of hard, a lot of your hard work there. If you remember one result from yesterday's agree, elections, Keir Starmer would like it to be the Blackpool by-election. Oh, it's always too to much Labour for the Conservatives, post Gavin. records. This was a parliamentary vote. This was directly to well, Rishi Sunak annihilated. to say we're fed up with your decline. I, I, solid win, solid win. Annihilated? Your chaos but hey, you did, you, and your division you worked really hard. and we want Leon. change. But across the country, Labour brought gloom to Tory councillors. Mm -hmm. Here in Redditch, Labour snatched control of the council. In true blue Aldershot, Rushmore Council, some Tories couldn't quite believe the results in front of them. <laughs> some had to look away. <laughs> Labour took control and long-serving Tory councillors were rejected by the voters. Yes, I mean, the national picture didn't help. 
uh, on the doorstep. Um, some people didn't vote at all um, because of the situation. It was quite clear that um, we, were, we were fighting on many fronts. Labour's team celebrating that council gain. Based on the votes cast in yesterday's local elections in a general election, Aldershot, branded the home of the British military, would swing decisively to Labour. On yesterday's yeah. votes, Plymouth Moorview no, would go from safe Tory to Labour. And in the Red that's Wall, Great Grimsby, which went Tory in 2019, could return to the Labour Party. Not annihilation. The Red Wall provided some comfort for the Conservatives. Ben Houchen held on as Mayor of Teesside after a campaign in which he long-fingered his party and his leader. It's not about... He, he, he did what? He did what to... What did he do? Show your hands. Show your hands. He, he did what? Uh, should make as much effort as not to affect the lives of people who want no part in the protest. Oh, yeah, Davey. I'm so sick of this, man. Look, you, you have a good point with the, the highway protest, but now you're just trying to apply this ridiculous standard to all protests that protests can't be disruptive for, for you to think that they're okay. Pathetic. We literally wouldn't have the eight-hour work week if we listened to you, dude. Women wouldn't have the ability to fucking vote and black people wouldn't have fucking civil rights if it wasn't, if it were listening to you. Oh, we can't be disruptive. You understand children and fucking women, innocent, non-Hamas, getting murdered. And you're talking about, well, as long as people aren't disrupted and, and oh, oh gosh, oh, that's, that's, that's not a good protest when people can, you know, when people are disrupted and it gets in their way. Davey, those, those two are unfortunately entwined, my friend. Okay? Those two are unfortunately entwined. And what you are arguing for? Is is for you know I I assume you want these kind of rules enshrined into law, is basically the end of dissent. The final the final lever of change that the that the United States citizens have, protesting, creating disruption, demanding change. That's what you are advocating for. It's disgusting, dude. Fucking Rush Limbaugh. You stink of him. After a campaign in which he long-fingered his party and his leader. I'm sorry, he did what? I know, I did that joke twice, I'm sorry. But he fingered who? Is that a political term, Leon? Can you help me out with that? He fingered what now? Side ...after a campaign in which he long-fingered his party and his leader. It's not about Rishi Sunak or the government. It's not voting on Keir Starmer, Rishi Sunak. The mess that's going on in Westminster. Is that like this? Like he, that's what that he means? Didn't stop he Rishi Sunak to rushing to Teesside to bask in the mayor's yourself, victory glory. Oh, a little baby. for the Labour oh. Party too. Because they know baby loves Rishi. that they had to win here in order to win a general election. They know that. They that assumed that Tees oh. Valley would just stroll back to them. But it didn't. It didn't. People knew that they couldn't be taken for granted. They knew long that it was Ben and over. the Conservatives. I don't know what the fuck you them. guys talk about. But within Teesside, Labour took back control of <laughs> Hartlepool <laughs> Council. In these numbers, oh, they take back the parliamentary seat you Jill Mortimer homework, won for the man? Tories three years ago. She says fellow MPs must stop school. talking about deposing Rishi Sunak. I think any talk of changing lead to going into a general election is yeah. for the birds to be quite Malcolm honest. Malcolm X was right to be disrupted. We will stick in, we will stick MLK together as a party. Right to be disrupted. Channel 4 News right analysis was extrapolated from... BLM was right to be disruptive. Occupy was right to be disruptive. The Vietnam uh, anti-war protesters were right to be disruptive. Yeah, some people were late for work. Boo fucking who? Cambodia was a fucking human rights disaster. Wait, no. Um, I mean, it is. But the... the damn it. I was on a roll. My Lai Massacre. The My Lai Massacre is what I was talking about. The My Lai Massacre was a human rights disaster and was 100% worth getting in the streets for. That was American-made napalm getting dumped on those people.
Oh, yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, divisive. Yeah, you bet. Racist and corrupt. Yep. Uh, no. Corrupt. Uh, racist. No. Corrupt. Yes. Right to protest. A hundred percent. That does. You know, they're <laughs> BML. He's he's triggered. You got it. He's okay. He's triggered. Okay. He's a conservative. That doesn't like to be called out or approving authoritarianism. Literally the last lever of change that we have. Because you know what, Davey? If Trump gets into office, it's, it's in the streets. It's in the streets or nothing. It's, it's listen to you and get rolled over by the authoritarians because we're just too fucking polite. Or it's get in the streets. And dis and, and I'm, I'm unfortunately disagree with you. It's literally the last lever we got. And yeah, BLM the 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 remember the the Rainbow Coalition or what the what the fuck were they called? The 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 pro uh, animal no the the Weather Underground. That's what I'm thinking of from the Vietnam era. Divisive, oh, but essential, essential. Showing people how to resist, reminding people that this is an option, inspiring people to get off their fucking ass. Stonewall, great example. Oh, well, that was too disruptive, Leon. Yeah, well, gay people were getting bashed up in bars just trying to be themselves. What were they supposed to do, Davy? Petition the government that was acquiescing to these cops? Fucking sick of it. Yeah. Racist BLM was not racist. Inspired Trump to be elect. I mean, just. Just leave, dude. I, I What the fuck, man? Get, just go. From the results so far, share of you're the gone. vote figures for the two main parties. You're gone, it projects dude. You're, you're Labour could be on too 35%, much of the and gone. the Tories skirting an all-time low at 25%, a 10-point Labour lead. Labour in opposition has had smaller leads in local elections and gone on to lose the general election a year later. This lead is closer to the sort enjoyed by Tony Blair ahead of his landslide general election victory. But it's not as big as the 20 point opinion poll leads Labour's been getting. Local elections are a very different beast to general elections. Uh, what we're seeing in terms of the Conservatives' performance is among the worst performances that they've ever had uh, in local elections. But what's different in local elections is that you get a more fragmented opposition had, vote. I mean, the Sims World do better, II, right? the Greens do better, independents do better. And all of that is even more true now than it used to be in, say, the 1990s when Tony Blair was opposition leader. So many of those voters will rally behind the Labour banner when we get to a Westminster election. <laughs> The Lib Dems celebrated victory in Winchester parading dinosaurs with blue rosettes. Make this Conservative government history. But the party's 17% projected so share of the national Leon. vote will be hard to match in a general election. UK elections, UK politics is straight up corny sometimes. There were Green Party gains, some on councils where they've never won before. In Pendle, independents who've left Labour over Keir Starmer's policy on Gaza won seats from Labour. And across the country, wards with larger Muslim populations showed a distinct drop yeah. in Labour support. Yeah, Leon. Keir Starmer travelled to North Yorkshire a few miles from... Yeah, there, this, this Channel 4 also tries to poke holes in this, you know, in, in the, like, you know, it was, it was all super, super pro-Labour... Um, you know, annihilation, you know, kind of, and I'm sorry, I keep harping on that because no, I mean, really it's about as close to an annihilation as you can get. But what troubles me is that it really wasn't, you know, just a total victory across the board. And that does bother me a little bit. It's like, you know, you can talk about Brexit a little bit here. You can talk about it a little bit, can't you? I mean, Leon, do you still agree with this strategy that Keir Starmer has to avoid discussion on BLM? I mean, Davey, 
that's fucking so fucking wrong, dude. You know, because your assumption is that the country disagreed with what BLM was protesting about, which the majority of the country does not disagree with BLM in terms of black people getting murdered by police. So, no, it did not inspire Trump. Um, <laughs> just, just so ridiculous. It's just so ridiculous. Oh, there's this disgusting bug in my water. <laughs> Rishi Sunak's home to celebrate the election of a Labour mayor there. I think we're in his constituency now, celebrating this victory. Rishi Sunak had started his day a few minutes' drive away at Catterick Barracks. On the evidence of results out well, so far, alive, his party has not advanced on his watch. I'll go dump Some who plan to mount a coup against him in the coming days say they won't move on him now, but don't rule out trying again a little later. Gary Gibbon, well, in a few minutes, we'll be hearing from Labour's Yvette Cooper. But first, the Work and Pension Secretary, Mel Stride, joins us from... Westminster, thanks for joining us. Um, Rishi Sunak went to Tees Valley and claimed that Labour has to win there in order to win the general election. That is just not true, is it? In fact, it's patently nonsense. It's right at the heart of the Red Wall, uh, as you will know. Uh, and Labour certainly have to make major inroads back into the Red Wall. Now, Which what, they did. Uh, what uh, Ben Houchin, of course, has done is won emphatically there, over 60% of the vote. Yeah. And you've got to remember that in 2021, the last set, when he got 73%, that was a high watermark for So you believe the lies that Antifa, that this was, that, you know, that Antifa was, that this was like Antifa riots. You believe those lies and... <laughs> And you, you were cool with the, the racism, the I mean, all the other red flags with Trump. You were willing to forgo all of that because you believe the lies about these protests. Do you do you you do believe in evidence, right? I've shown the evidence on screen that over 90 percent of these protests were totally peaceful. No damage whatsoever. Over 90 percent. Will you acknowledge that? It's a total lie that the BLM Antifa protests were uh, uh, riots across the city. The whole the whole country lit on fire. In retrospect, with the evidence right in front of you, in hindsight, will you acknowledge that reality, or you're still going to believe that trash, those fucking lies? Man, R D Davin, it's just I'm uh, you know. I don't really have time for, for, for Davies in my life. You got evidence staring you right in the face, and you know what you're doing? It's feelings over facts, Davy. It's feelings over facts, man. For us, we had the COVID uh, bounce. We were riding high in the polls and so on. And, in fact, he won in every single one of the five boroughs that sit beneath yeah. uh, that But, but as you know, area. it's a personal so that's, vote. Uh, it's a big result. I mean, big the point result. of the mayors was to create big personalities. That's what Ben Houchin is. He's got a big personal name recognition, a personal vote. He barely yeah, mentioned the Conservatives or Rishi Sunak in his campaign. He was the only one not wearing a party rosette. Not Antifa, though. Not Antifa, though. I mean, what does that even mean? The, the uh, Antifa presence was completely scattered, wasn't organized, totally random. Divisive and racist. Um, to be fair to Davey, there were members of BLM that made statements that were quite frankly anti-white which is, yes, racist. Um, the entire movement and what it stands for? No, not racist. We're not going to guilt by association, right, Davey? The movement does not stand to lower white people. The movement stands to treat black people the way that white people are treated. By the law. That's what it stands for. On the platform, didn't mention the Conservatives or Rishi Sunak 
uh, in his in his speech. It's about him, not about the party. And you know, it, it, it's just nonsense to suggest Labour needs to win there. No, look, uh, Ben Halchin stood way, as a proud Antifa, conservative. I agree with Antifa uh, being a physical presence, resisting fascism, but. As we've seen with the right-wing conservatives, how easily they capitalize and how easily they, oh, victim, victim, victim. The, the property damage shit doesn't work. So I implore Antifa, who I support and I agree with, stop doing the physical damage. Continue being an intimidating and physical presence in front of the fascists that, li that love to show up. These proud boys, these boogaloo boys, show up to our protests. With fucking guns and shit intimidating us. Legitimate. Um, we need we need Antifa. We need we need anti-fascism to exist. Um, but I implore Antifa, you know, wherever they are, stop with the property damage. It doesn't do shit. Um, but but allow right wing cr crusty ass, boring ass right wing conservatives who are not interested in free speech or dissent, who want to uh, find ways to legally justify capping that, um, it just gives them tools and ammo. We've seen it time and time again. The, the burning down the McDonald's and robbing the fucking Apple store was, was um, more politically effective for the right wing than it was for the left. Don't give me that both sides bullshit, Ken. How about you come? How about you pull some nuance out of your ass instead of some stupid bullshit, huh? How about you give that a shot, Ken? Both sides. You're gonna bust out the both sides, you fucking amateur. Pick up a book and come back, motherfucker. Jesus Christ. Having enacted conservative policies both under sides. a conservative government uh, literature that was used up there to campaign on did bear the conservative uh, logo the hustings he would have been uh, there uh, promoted as a conservative Sorry, Leon. and Back of course when UK. people came to the this is polling important. booth this is important because we you know the the you know the, the elections in the UK are very important right they could they could help they could help stop this right wing churn that we're seeing in the west in western democracies this could help Chud alert. More like dumbass alert. Whoa! I gotta find that special sound effect for you, Lenny. I'm gonna find a special sound effect for Chud alert. Ken hovered Don't over the various it. boxes they put, could yeah. put across on. Right next to Ben Halchin's name would have been the conservative logo and the word conservative. And I think it's slightly patronizing to suggest, uh, to the extent that some are at least, that people didn't really, you know, they weren't really voting for the conservatives. Well, no, I mean, you, he you was heard clearly people, a conservative uh, candidate. You, you've heard people in our package well. saying that they voted yeah. for Ben Halchin, but they don't support the conservatives. That's my point. Anyway, we'll move on well, from that. Some, I mean, but what about Harlow? Harlow was uh, a result that did. Blue brother, are you. Are you comparing the two? Are you comparing the two? Are you comparing burning down a McDonald's to the violence that we saw in Charlottesville? Are you comparing what we're seeing in the UCL cam UCLA campus and all across the uh, nation with the different uh, college campuses? Are you comparing that to January 6th? Is that what you're trying to say? Both fucking sides? Really? I, I love I love the lack of nuance when it when it benefits a narrative. Okay, thanks thank you so much, Ken. My God, such a valuable, valuable opinion. Thank you so much for it. Keep on trucking, big guy. Didn't go Labour's way, yeah. and you had the leader of the opposition down there the night before with Angela Rayner, make it very clear that Harlow is exactly the kind of place that Labour had to win if they were going to get the keys to number 10 Downing Street, and they didn't do that. But, but so, it's just nonsense to say is, any of these places are places Labour has to win. What well, Labour needs to I'm do only, is, win a, only, is win a majority, and it's uh, way on course to do that, as you know. I mean, the I, point I, is... If, I'm only if echoing Sunak, Keir Starmer's comments. Yeah, if Rishi yeah. Sunak is currently... I mean, he, you look at those the, the projected national vote share, yeah. and what's happened over the last 24 hours, he's leading yes. you over well, an abyss. Patriot. You, you are going into a, a big black morons. hole. Why wouldn't you get rid of him? There, there is a huge difference between a well, set so of local election results, which I accept have been 
difficult in, in many areas and the general election. And what we're going to see now is we're going to see this contest narrow down to whether we want Rishi Sunak, who's got a very clear plan based on what people want us to focus on. So that's getting inflation down, yeah, don't, don't getting the cost that. of living That was what the campaign issues. was about. Well, and no, it didn't these work. Are They're important points and because I'm answering your question. And that's the point. You're going to keep repeating them, aren't yeah. you? Which is well, rather well, than change tax. It, it, it's going to yeah, come down to the only tactic. poll that matters, which is, is we're, going we're to be doing the general really great. election. It's ironic because it, this is actually the same strategy that the neoliberals in the United States are employing. You know, oh, no, the economy. Oh, actually, in Canada as well. Now that I think about things are turning around a little bit. Trudeau is kind of uh, getting a whiff, getting a whiff that the messaging change isn't enough. But in the United States, it's all about just messaging, right? Oh, no, it actually, you know, your life isn't that bad. And uh, no, you, prices aren't that bad. Uh, you know, the economy's actually doing really, really great. Look at these, you know, look at Berkshire Hathaway making so much money. And you're like, my rent's up, my food's up, my fuel's up, my wages are, are the same. They have been stagnant for years in some cases. Oh, interesting comment, Blue Brother. Interesting. I'll have to think about that one. I think, uh, but you know what I'm saying. Well, let's get back to it. It comes, and then it is going to be Rishi Sunak versus Keir Starmer. Now, at the moment, I suspect in these local results, you've seen a lot of conservatives sitting on their hands. They are grumpy uh, for various reasons. But ultimately, everybody's going to have to take that decision as to whether you want Keir Starmer or not. There's no great enthusiasm for Keir Starmer out on the doorstep. I know that. Labour isn't, activists isn't even grumpy a slightly disrespectful way to talk about Conservative activists. I don't think. Uh, no, I didn't say conservative activists. Well, vote, I was referring voters. to voters. Yeah, no, I think well, people are entitled to be grumpy. To grumpy. Not being maybe, they, maybe they just think you're useless. <laughs> no, maybe maybe look, they think I, Brexit I, the point was a that I'm making, and I think disaster. it's a very fair point, is that people too get grumpy with uh, 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 governments of all stripes when, when they're them. in office. We've gone through a very challenging time. We've had inflation imported into the country through a war back, uh, in Europe. We've had COVID before that with all the kind of interventions the government had to bring forward back, in order to uh, save the economy and save jobs Including and you, avoid mass unemployment. And Rishi Sunak was Welcome right at the heart back, of that, in fact, uh, as Chancellor. Um, and um, you know, that has been a very difficult time. So what we've got to do now as a party is unite. And as I think your trailer leading up to this interview has suggested that. Yeah, Blue Brother, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, and I basically agree. Because, like, this idea that there is an organized left-wing extremist, uh, you know, problem in any way that, that is in any way comparable in size or scope to the, to the organized terroristic authoritarian right wing that is that is you know out there committing it's pretty ridiculous and i i really got to wrench my brain outside of antifa to think of any examples and and like the examples of antifa it's juvenile shit molotov cocktails and fucking fast food places you know it, it's and not running a car and you know we, we there's not been a single left wing antifa activist running a car into a, a group of you know right wingers You know, that is precisely what the parliamentary party is now going to do. Unite behind our leader, unite be behind our very clear agenda and yeah, the things that we yeah, are So you're doing. not going to change course. And, and you're, you're come stick forward the to the country, come forward to the country with a yeah. manifesto um, that will address and continue to address no. the key so concerns. So what you're doing is asking people uh, to change people their minds. I mean, you're, change you're not going to change. You're going to keep saying the same five yeah. messages and you're going to hope well, that the voters somehow I, change their minds I, about I know you. you Christian, I, I know you don't want me to explain what these five messages are, for example, but some of your viewers may be getting a bit confused now because we're talking about things in the abstract. So I do think I need to lay them out. People care no, about no. the we cost did, of no, living. No, they care care about inflation coming down. Yeah. They care about the fact that real wages have been increasing in each of the last nine months. They, they care about it. illegal migration, See what I mean? where we have a plan in place Your life to deal is with that really and have good. a deterrent. And Labour is saying, proving in fact, my for, point very well. for 90,000 yeah. plus people, People, what so they're, they're literally so the the voters clearly told them gave them a message this this you know uh people in boats and and the the immigration scaremongering and and all this and the and that your real wages are going up fucking cockamamie nonsense they're not buying it that's what they just told you
And what is he saying? Well, well uh, you know, actually wasn't that bad. And uh, here's, here's my crusty ass talking points. So I'm changing nothing. We're changing nothing. Um, which is okay. I mean, this is like day one. This is day one. I just made another clip. Oh, no. After, after I'm done with this. But it's, do. It, okay, maybe it's day one and you don't have your messaging put together. But if they, if you know, if this holds true and this is, you know, this is the strategy, just, just full sail ahead and you know, uh, keep calm and carry on. Uh, yeah, no, that it's going to be, uh, you know, maybe an annihilation. Maybe it is effectively a soft amnesty for those people. Now, as we go towards soft the general amnesty. election, Keir Starmer is going to come under the kind of scrutiny that only happens during a general election yep. campaign. And whereas at the moment he has no plan and we don't know what he stands for on many, many different things because he's frightened of saying anything lest he jeopardise his poll lead, we're going to start to have a serious debate and he will be put under scrutiny. No and I think you'll find that the polls will narrow through time. Well, Labour are going to be under scrutiny right now. Mel Stry, thank you very thank much you. indeed. Now over to Jackie. Well, no, Blue Brother, and that's actually a big problem. I, you know, I have a lot of criticism for, you know, and one of the reasons I think that is 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 true, is that I feel like a lot of communists uh, don't want. They're they're super nostalgic for a lot of shit that people don't want, and I really do think that there needs to be a modernization of communism, uh, because it's ironic because socialism is so essential to balance capitalism that we we simply we can't just throw communism away like we can throw you know there you know it's 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 a legitimate political ideology um in certain aspects you know just like capitalism is a legitimate political ideology in certain aspects like i said they balance each other socialism and capitalism um but the the current state of the communist party is kind of fucking pathetic correct me if i'm wrong with that said, when's the last time you've seen Tapper Jake have a, c a conversation with a with a educated communist about anything? You know, let's not let's not forget that the mainstream media has been, you know, basically in the United States since its inception doing everything it can to suppress those kind of conversations, those kind of debates. So that that's, you know, that's not really the fault of of communism. That's really the fault of uh, the authoritarian, you know, the citizens kind of allowing, uh, you know, the free press to not to not truly be free. Right? Bet Cooper, the shadow Home Secretary, is here with me now. Bet Cooper, was it a good night on your own merits, or as no, I mean, Zio Duke, socialism and communism are basically the same thing. Um, that you know, they're they're just basic. They basically represent the same thing. And my the whole idea is that we have way too much capitalism. It needs to be balanced out with more socialism. And if we go too far into socialism, well, then we got a fucking scary ass brave new world nanny state kind of shit going on. We don't want that either. We go, we go too far right, we get full blown fascism. We go too far left, we get, you know, brave new world kind of stuff. All this Huxley kind of stuff. Oh my God. Can, can the communists stop? Marx. Use the terms interchangeably. I've heard that from academics. Marx himself used the terms interchangeably. But here we go with the communists. Oh, it's actually this. It's this flavor. It's that flavor. This is what I'm talking about. Clean it up. Clean it up. I like, I like democratic socialism. That, that, for me, that explains it all. We get, we get the socialist aspects, but it's democratic, so the people get to keep what they want to keep. Okay. Cooper, the Shadow Home Secretary, is here with right, me. I want to... Uh, sorry, Leon. This is the worst... I'm sorry. Everyone wants to talk about the fucking protests, and then we get into a debate, a debate about the legitimacy of protests. Let's hear this side from Labor, and then we'll, we'll move it over. Now, I bet, Cooper, was it a good night on your own merits, or as Mel Stry suggests, just a good night because voters are grumpy with the government? <laughs> Evening, Jackie. Well, I think dismissing yeah, voters as being yeah. grumpy just it completely doesn't get what's happening across the country. I think people are desperate for change and they were supporting Labour to deliver that change. We obviously had a very good result in Blackpool. That was the one parliamentary result that we had, a more than 20% swing, and that's the sixth 
parliamentary by-election that we've won with a more than 20% swing this parliament. But we're also got to keep working. I and agree. We know that. Sure. We will keep working. We really need to see a general election. That's what I think everybody wants to exactly. see. Exactly. Uh, I mean, as possible. as you suggest, Labour's mantra is that you cannot be complacent. So where would you identify the potential weaknesses last night? Was it Harlow? Um, as, as Mel Stride said, Keir Starmer had said it was critical. Was it Ben Houchen hanging on to the Tees Valley? Are, are there areas that you are worried about? Well, I think we saw progress right across the country. So, for example, the police and crime commissioner elections, which took place really in every corner of the country, we saw Labour wins the first time for Cumbria, uh, for Norfolk, for Cleveland, for Avon and Somerset, really all corners of the country where we saw strong Labour results. And that was really a Labour turnout and, 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 and failures in Harlow. Keir Starmer had said it was us. Absolutely critical. Ben Houchen, you know, the, one of the arguments here, being like made it. that when Conservatives deliver in their area, they're not looking to... Voters are not looking to run to you. Well, just to finish the point on the police and crime commissioners first and then to address that is I think it was important... You're right, those were off sometimes areas where there were no other elections. However, it was a strong support for Labour on law and order, on an issue the Conservatives could continue to think that they're doing well. And actually, they're doing really badly because we're not seeing the police on the streets when people are not getting justice through the criminal justice system. But on the, the Tees Valley mayor, obviously, um, look, it, it, I think there's not just personal factors involved. There was also a 17% swing from Labour to the... Con sorry, from the Conservatives to Labour. So that was a big increase in that vote. And we also won the Cleveland Police and Crime Commissioner, which was a similar area. So, again, I think for the Conservatives to say, oh, that shows it's all all right for us, shows they just don't get it and they don't... But uh, that's, that's true, though, as well. If, if, the, if the Conservatives are pointing to that one anomaly and are like, oh, you see, things aren't actually that bad, no, that, you know, that's just... You got lucky with that one. Not Straight all all right for Labour either, is it? What is clear, walking. what is very, very clear, is the issue of Gaza and the Labour Party's response to it has cost Labour councils seats. I just wonder whether the leadership should apologise for damaging the efforts of local councillors, local activists, because of what many people see as the really poor handling of the Gaza situation. Well, there's no doubt that the Gaza has been a factor in some areas. And, obviously, in some council areas, there have been other factors as well. But th few, there's uh, no doubt, and we should... I mean, in Pendle, Labour didn't win any seats after all their councillors stood Ooh, as independents huge. because of Gaza. In Blackburn, Labour held on but lost seats as some councillors also stood as independents. Sure, and there's no doubt it has been an issue in areas. In some areas, we've had particular other candidates campaigning very strongly on that issue. And this is an issue where... Uh, tens of thousands of people have died, including yeah. the majority of them so women. This, this, I love this strategy where you acknowledge the you acknowledge the issue, you acknowledge you're wrong on it, but then you, you're like, well, we're going to. But then you, what you don't say is that oh, we're changing nothing. And children. So rightly, people feel very strongly about this, and it's and they feel Alvacop. the Labour leadership should have called for a ceasefire much, much earlier. Clive Betts, the Sheffield MP today, <laughs> says that Labour need to Get understand the ready. amount of anger that he saw on the doorstep has to be seen to be believed, and that the party really needs to make a radical change now. It's got to make absolutely clear, he says, we cannot stand by and watch Israel wreak destruction on Gaza. Is he right? Is that what Labour will now do? Well, I think it's clear we need an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. It is devastating what's happening. We're deeply worried mm. about the risks that Israel may then pursue a Rafa inf offensive, which would be catastrophic in humanitarian terms. Yeah. That's why the yeah, that's, immediate... that's why you're going to do you're going to change absolutely nothing about you know you're not going to. I mean, they've they've certainly gone farther than Joe Biden. Um, but they could be they could be a little louder about it. They could be a little louder about it. Immediate ceasefire is so important. Uh, we have to have the release of hostages, but we also have to have a major programme of humanitarian aid. And we are deeply worried about what's happening. So the negotiations the party, are immensely from important. From the point of view of Labour, to, to bring back some of those people, those many, many councillors who stood as independents because they were so angered by the Labour Party's response to this. How will you, you know, there is a danger going into an election. This becomes an even bigger issue for Labour. What are you going to do about it to bring back those people into the fold? 
And I think, as I said, it's important to recognise that this was a factor in some areas. And, of course, in every area, we always need to reflect and to... Still waiting on those links, Davey. You got, you got literally a single link? Any evidence whatsoever to back up your claim that pro-Palestinian goons were beating people up? Please? You seek to rebuild to earn back support, and we must you continue to do that. But we also need to, I think, continue to do a lot of the work we've been doing right across the country, which has delivered yeah, yeah, such yeah, strong yeah. results for Labour, but we need to keep working. It's kind of ironic, because both sides are basically doubling down on their messaging. We're not changing a single fucking thing, you know? And they're just they're like, well, they... And, and just like just like neoliberals do, they learn all the wrong lessons, you know, from from a decent, a good victory, right? But hey, there's some things we could change. There's some ways we could make this better. No, there isn't. We changed nothing. This is great. This is the new way moving forward. Anyway, there we go. That's my UK coverage. Sorry, Leon. I'm sure it's. I'm sure other people do a much better job who actually live in the UK. But uh, I'm very happy for uh, labor. Good news. Big props to your boy Leon for putting in hard work for the Labor Party. Try and make this happen following that three-step program that I'm constantly talking about. Leon is a perfect example of following that three-step program. And, uh, you know, the, the, one, the one part of this big piece here that we didn't get to was the, the big concern, was, which was the turnout was kind of low. You know, a lot of people are not very motivated. It's a local election. You know, we see this as well uh, with local elections in the United States. You know, only really the, the super political pl people uh, are really paying attention to that stuff. Um, yeah, Blue Brother. Well, I try to. I try to. But anyway, I think, I think this is ultimately a good sign that the Tories are still on track to lose, which is great news. Um, but with that said, hey, you know, um, this is an opportunity for Keir Starmer to, to pivot a little bit more. I would say apply more pressure, you know, apply that Brexit pressure. Apply that Brexit pressure. Yeah, that's great news. For 473, that's, that's you know, pretty damn close to annihilation. But not totally. It didn't win every single one. Um, but if you're, you're, you know, the turnout, the turnout was low, but that's local election. National elections, you know, getting the new prime minister, there's probably going to be more excitement about that but once again you know political apathy being the biggest it's so funny ben franklin knew about this man how did he know about this but it you know political apathy being the biggest poison the biggest uh uh acid on democracy the fact that people get comfortable and they just stop fucking paying attention doesn't fucking bother me. Oh, I'm not political. I'm not political. That's grand majority. All right, so moving on. Because he understood humanity. I guess so. He really did, though, didn't he? Boy, he, he really understood humanity. You know what I'm talking about? Over there in France. Baby, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, you couldn't keep that guy out of the French whorehouses. So, a uh, little bit of Canadian news. And before you put, you know, put away your fucking pillow. Okay, this is insane. Canadian news. It happens over here. Um, this maniac um, driving on the wrong side of the road in 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 like a U-Haul, in like a rented van. Um, and the scandal is is that the uh, police out of I think it's Ottawa. I think the scandal is um, that they basically acted like. United States police where they like were pursuing this guy and they're like getting right you know they you know you know making you know make forcing the guy you know to to go even harder and escape even harder and it's like look he's a criminal and he's breaking the law but there's a reason why police will back off from situations like this um so that he can stop you know so that things don't turn tragic and unfortunately they did turn tragic I think a, a, a child died um this isn't when the police back off from a situation like this. This is it, that isn't letting the criminals win. You understand that? It's it's about creating a less chaotic situation so that you can arrest him. You know, and of course, there's still a likelihood that he could smash into a a vehicle going head on, but you're not making the situation worse. You're not escalating when you should be de-escalating. 
Okay, these are common things that American defenders of how the corrupt police do their do their job in America have completely forgot. This is part of that protect, part of that protect and serve, right? So de-escalating in this case, he's a psychopath, clearly he might be on something, you know, something's wrong, back off, we can still see him, we got helicopters, let him, let him make a mistake, let him get off, you know, and like make a mistake in terms of like get on the right side of the road or get into a better position to arrest him, we can set up a, we can set up a, 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 a trap you know, a checkpoint, we can, you know, later a forward, forward, we don't have to, you know, because he was doing like 80 miles an hour. If the cops weren't behind him, I don't know. I've, I've never seen, I've never seen that actually. That's a good question. I actually know I have seen helicopters, but I've never seen like a helicopter police chase in Canada, but you know what I'm saying? There should be de-escalation instead of escalation, like the way that the United States does it. Um, and that's what's interesting in this story is that that's kind of the scandal here is that the cops uh, were escalating. So watch, the footage is totally bananas. So you've stuck around for, you stuck around for this. Uh, thank you. Here's your reward. Insane footage. And unfortunately, it did end tragically. Dash cam video shows how this driver had to move yeah, over strategy. fast yeah. to avoid that U-Haul van barreling the wrong way down Canada's busiest highway, pursued at high speed by Durham police. Now, CBC News has learned the license plate that officers were told was on that van wasn't registered to that vehicle. The plate is unattached, so I don't know where it's going to be going, but um, again, description was a U-Haul. Ontario Transport Ministry records show the license plate is listed as unattached, missing or suspended, mm. and was last associated with a Dodge Ram pickup truck. In uh, Blue Brother, um... The fact that, you know, the America is one of the most well-armed pop populace does not remove the obligation of police to, you know, put uh, the citizen uh, above their own safety. Um, police unions are, of course, arguing against that. But when you, when you talk to your average American citizen about what the duty of a cop is, they would say it's to protect and serve. Um, that does mean putting yourself you know, putting the people that you're protecting and serving above your own safety. That, that's why cops get handsome salaries. That's why cops get awards and are considered heroes and, you know, and all these different things. Um, and I believe are well-deserved because in my eye, to be a cop is to protect and serve. And that does mean putting the safety of the public among your, uh, above your own. And that is heroic when, when that is actually that actually happens um i do find it ironic though that cops are incredibly you know usually right-wing conservatives and they totally support arming the citizens with you know all kinds of you know body piercing ammo you'll see cops you know supporting extended mags and and you know all kinds of you know pseudo military straight up military uh hardware that is then used to get, that is then used against them <laughs> in, in you know in crimes or usually in in like shootouts after they've killed their family or something like that but it is it is incredibly ironic to me that a majority of police are conservative who support um you know unrestricted gun ownership for everybody that absolutely puts them in danger you know, because we've all I've I've seen the footage at least, and I acknowledge I'm one of the few lefties that that acknowledge that cops are absolutely, you know, like it's it's crazy because the the violent incidents have actually gone down for cops, but the violent incidents that do happen are incredibly violent, and cops will get straight up gunned down. You know, I've I've seen tons of footage of it. Um, one you know, one reason is that no one wants to go to jail because they'll be raped. And, and another reason is that, you know, the criminal justice system, you know, if you, you know, will just throw you away. So it's kind of a do or die situation. Um, you can kill the cop and you might be able to get away. Uh, but if you don't kill the cop and become arrested, well, then your life is thrown away anyway. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've seen the footage of, of, you know, split second, you know, cops, you know, not, not treating the situation as cautiously as they should. They're walking up to somebody and gun down. It can be very, very dangerous to be a cop. Um, that's the job. 
I hate to be cynical. I hate to be, you know, hand wave it away if you want to call it that, but that, that is the job. Um, and if you want a safer society, then maybe cops shouldn't support <laughs> arming the citizens with uh, armor piercing weapons, etc. 2017. The minute it entered the wrong way on a freeway at a high speed, absolutely there's no justification for c carrying on with a pursuit of that nature. Oh my God! That wild chase on Highway 401 near Toronto ended with a fiery crash and a tragedy. The death of an infant and two grandparents. The suspect also died. The driver of that mangled transport truck spent the night in hospital. The trucking company tells CBC News their driver saw the cargo van first smash into a car, then lift off the ground with the van flying into the front of that semi. The most egregious, mindless, high-speed pursuit going yeah, the wrong back way crew. at that time of day on a major artery that I've ever seen. Investigators say it all started with a robbery at a liquor store. But it's not clear what prompted the intense nature of the chase. Before the pursuit reached the highway, provincial police were told the operation involved 12 Durham police vehicles. Durham advising there was a male inside the LCBO. He tried to rob the store. He pulled a knife on an off-duty officer. Ontario's police watchdog is so there, handling there the investigation. Go. So it was that that's I think that's it. That's the key right there. Pulled a knife on an off-duty officer back the blue. We've all we've seen this in America. I, I'm sure this happens in Canada as well. It's, you know, being a cop, you there's camaraderie with your fellow cops when you hear of a fellow cop being attacked or assaulted or of course killed. Um we see police action you know double and triple and quadruple. So here we see there was they you know they heard over the radio oh guy attacked a cop guy attacked a cop with a knife and they put their revenge over the safety of the public and look I'm not saying they're directly responsible for killing that infant it could could have very easily have happened if had the cops de-escalated we don't know what kind of state of mind this guy was in right and we're talking about a hypothetical with that said it's it's easy to imagine to imagine a hypothetical where that infant doesn't die because that guy no longer feels the pressure to be doing 70 80 miles an hour. He's totally in his wrong mind, he's in the wrong lane, but like how would that person react if the pressure was if he thought the pressure was laying off him? Would he accelerate? Would he would he, you know, commit more risks? Maybe. Irrational people do irrational things. But um, the, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you were to look at the history of these kind of incidences and the difference between these, you know, what happens when cops lay off versus what when cops apply pressure, I would be interested to I would be interested to see that that information, that study done, because I would I would venture a guess that the incidences like this where the cops backed off resulted in less death than the cops riding this guy's ass, you know, like a Grand Theft Auto, right? Like the cops, you know, he, you know how the cops will like, you know, the, the, the army will be chasing you, running over civilian vehicles and killing civilians on their way to kill you. Um, you know, not, not exactly effective. So interesting stuff. And if I, if I do hear a follow-up on this, I definitely will report on it. And wouldn't comment on whether a knife was used in the robbery or whether the van pursued by police had been rented or stolen. Well, who fucking cares? Who fucking cares, man? Infant died. Cops dropped the ball. De-escalation tactics, de-escalation training. It's necessary. That's part of the reform that I talk about when I talk about how all cops, you know, from the top down, bottom up, need to be reformed. Um, oh, we're moving over to Chad here. Oh, I didn't even change this. Look over here. Look at the, moving over to Chad, uh, just an update. Uh, Chad election security heightened across the country. Chad news. No, it's not the kind of Chad news you think in cells. Is he gonna is he gonna tell us how to be a Sigma male? Do I have to subscribe to your newsletter to learn how to be a Sigma male? I don't know how to grow a beard yet, but um I will one day. Yes, young one. Give me all of your money and I will teach you how to be a Sigma male. 
Is it really that easy? Um, Giga Chad. But no, um, pretty crazy stuff happening. I need to, I need to, re I need to report more on on what's happening in Africa. Um, Chad is in Africa. Please be in Africa. Political campaigns here in Chad have reached a climax. Across the country, security is tight. Officials say it will remain so before, during, and oh after Monday's God. presidential yeah. vote. Chad's part of the coup belt in Africa. Okay. Syndrome. All forces syndrome. have been mobilized in addition to other measures to ensure a violence-free election. They will secure the electoral process to allow Chadians to exercise their civic duty. The presidential election is expected to transition Chad from military to civil rule after a disputed referendum in December. Military leader Mohammed took over after his father, long-term leader Idris Deby, was killed on the battlefront in 2021. His candidacy drew criticism from the opposition. The campaign has been largely peaceful, but it's what happens after the election that worries most Chadians. There is always fear that something bad will happen after each election. I hope it doesn't have to happen this time. Several people were killed in the run-up to the election, including violence that led to the deaths and arrest of opposition figures at the end of February. And remember, this is the kind of shit that we that Trump wants to make normalize in the United States, right? Those are in power going after their political opponents the moment there's any popular the moment democracy starts happening, assassinate, blow it up, remove it. That's the kind of normality he wants to create here. Um Clamping down on protests, I need to add. Sorry to pile on, Davey. But your opinions are right in line with these tin pot dictators who would love to clamp down more on dissent and protesting. Oh, well, you know, a protest over here where it's convenient in a park for an hour where it doesn't bother anybody. I love your idea. I love your idea of targeting the government specifically and avoiding disrupting the public as much as possible. But like I said before, that's impossible. And to have that standard is, is, is absurd. Because if we look back at the protest movements that have 100% been effective and had 100% made our lives better, none of them fit that criteria. None of them fit that criteria. They were inherently disruptive to the people around them and the governments that manage those people and, and those, you know, the, that are put in power, place of power by those people. So it's, it's just a, it's a, it's an absolutely ridiculous standard. Um, <clears throat> anyway. Many Chadians are looking forward to this election, just as some say they are staying away. Those opposed to the vote insist the process that produced the candidates is flawed. As a result, some groups are calling on Chadians to boycott it. The Electoral Commission says preparations for the elections are complete. We believe after the election, constitutional order will be restored and the security situation will improve a great deal. But to get there, the main opposition party says there must be an acceptable free and fair process. And what the people of Chad will decide is going to be what everybody should respect. This is what we are pushing for and this is going to be, I hope, the case to make sure that the, for the first time of our history, the Chadian people can choose their leader. Looming large over this election is concern about security. In April, the Chadian government demanded a small group of American troops stationed in Chad leave the country. That decision will likely leave a void in its fight against armed groups like ISIL and Boko Haram. Many yeah. people here who see who the vote as crucial to put Chad the on a path good. of reconciliation. If it fails, they say, the country could be plunged further into political uncertainty. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera, Jemena. Well, we'll definitely sure be following up on that, um, seeing, seeing where that goes. Like I said, there's been a lot of uh, chaos happening in the coup belt. Um, so, you know, it would be nice to see a, you know, peaceful election, a peaceful transition of power. Um, foreshadowing. <laughs> foreshadowing. <laughs> All right, so moving on to El Salvador next. Um, this is shocking. Um, that's that's how I described it when I was when I was going over the recap. And there's no other way to put it. And this is this is a feather in the cap for characters 
like Davey, uh, but, you know, this is, you know, the conservatives have just been absolutely uh, blowing their load, being like, look, see, authoritarianism works. Police states work. You just have to do it the right way. Um, so what we're seeing here, just to, you know, just spoil it a little bit, just to give you a little context, so I can give you my opinion, and then we'll just watch the clip. I'll try to I interrupt it as little as possible. But... What, what he's do he gathers everybody together in this room, um, all of his cabinet, all of his cabinet, and he uh, orders his AG to investigate everyone for bribery. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong button. This one. Right? Everyone, everyone, and, and there's, and there's, you know, there's a visual, there's a visible, like, reaction in the entire, in the entire, you know, you know, there's people that can't hide their reaction. Um, because they're extremely corrupt, um, because they're, according to him, part of, you know, they were part of the old regime. And what he says is that um, people, you know, people used to say Duterte um, was not a thief, but he surrounded himself with thieves. And he's saying, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to be considered that thief. So that's what he's saying. What I think is happening is kind of like when we see corporations hide layoffs behind uh, removing remote work. You know how when a company wants to lay some people off, they all of a sudden change the rules on remote work? Oh, we're, we're no more remote. Everyone to the office. Everyone to the office. Because they know, they know a certain amount of people are going to quit. So, they, so they're not really announcing a layoff. I think what uh, Slick Willie over here is doing uh, um, Mille? No, that's not Mille. That's the other guy with the, uh, sorry, yeah. Naib Bukele. Bukele. I'm getting him mixed up with, uh, with Mr. Chainsaw. But what I think he is doing is this is his excuse to remove pieces of his cabinet. He knows all of them are guilty. He knows all of them are guilty. And I don't know if he's guilty himself. He says, I don't steal. That may very well be true. This guy's brand fucking new. He's super squeaky clean. Very possible. Or, oh, oh, and then here comes, this, so the conservative, right, who is, who is desperate to legitimize the actions of El Salvador because if El Salvador does it, well, then police states work. Authoritarianism works. So the conservatives are very interested, and thank you for sticking around, Davey, but the conservatives are very interested in the success of this authoritarian experiment in El Salvador. So we've seen it, I think it's been 24 months of this crackdown on MS-13, right? And the crime is off the streets. I think 73,000 people have been arrested. I think something like that. The dragnet has not stopped. There's plenty of evidence that innocent people are getting caught up in this dragnet. Girlfriends of some of these gang members and things like that. Getting locked away, the key thrown away. No real process to get them out. No real transparency, right? Because that's what, that's what he promised. That's what he promised. So we've seen 24 months of that, no sign of stopping. And, and instead, of, instead of talking about, okay, it's been successful, but let's, you know, we, I don't want to institute a police state. I don't want to be a dictator. Let's talk about reducing this. Let's talk about reforming this so that we're catching less innocent people. He's not doing that. He's justifying the reduction of the, his limits to power, the checks and balances around him, his cabinet. Maybe, maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe. But let's, let's watch the clip. But that, that's, I, I would be interested in the success of this because El Salvador with MS-13 was a fucking nightmare. Legitimate nightmare. The things that they were doing to human beings, the things that they were doing to children, unimaginable. MS-13, scum of the earth. Okay? I see these guys, you know, running through the prison with, uh, in their boxer shorts with the full, full face tats, I don't feel bad for him one bit. I'm kind of interested in the success of this as well, just to see, is, this, is he doing anything different? But there's this other side that's like, he's also following step by step the fucking blueprint to become an authoritarian dictator. <laughs> he's laying that foundation, dude. Like, you know, he's got the cement truck in and the cement support in. I also see that. So anyway, that's kind of my thoughts on this. Let's watch this clip from El Salvador. I'm sorry, from, what's this, Sky News? What is this? 
Australia, Sky News Australia. Como pueden ver ustedes todos, los que estamos aquí reunidos son parte del Ejecutivo, del órgano ejecutivo, que es el que el del cual yo estoy encargado, a excepción de una persona. Es el fiscal general que está aquí, él no es del Ejecutivo. Y está acá por una razón bien sencilla. Y es porque le quiero pedir en público de que investiguemos a todos los que están acá. Para atrás y para adelante. Past crimes and Yo me imagino future. que pues no, no hay ningún problema, ¿no? No one's got a problem with that, right? Right? No. No, I don't. I don't. No, I don't. No. I don't. Hey, if it's on the up and up, I love it. Could also could also give him the ability to kind of just push push people out of his way. <laughs> Might be that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Blue Brother. No. No, you know, and, and look, Davey, right? You know, Davey, it's not possible for a right wing leader to be doing the right thing. Um, highly unlikely, Davey. Can you, can you give me a single example of a right wing leader anywhere across the world doing anything positive for their people outside of El Salvador? Any other example? Because there's not too many. So as, as we can see here, Charlie Kirk loving it, you know, Davey, you, you got some strange bed, bedfellows. You got some strange friends there, bud. But the right wing coming out, full support. This is great. Love it, love it, love it. This is how you run a country. This is how you run a country. Full blown, you know, n <laughs> no checks and balances, not non-transparent police state. Charlie Kirk, this is how you do it, man. This is absolutely remarkable. This is great. This is how you lead. Welcome back, Kissing Gonzo. Right? I mean, can you repeat that question? Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Sorry about that. I, for I forget about that. Definitely felt like theater for the camera to me. Yeah? Maybe other motives. Uh, it's, you know, I want, I would love, I would love for Bukele to be the start of a, of a new right wing, right? Of, a, of, of right wingers that are actually legitimately conservative, that are not warmongers, that are not authoritarian, that are our principled right wingers. They used to exist in some form with characters like William Buckley. He, William Buckley was always kind of a slime ball, though. Like, there's always kind of this slime ball element. But it was it was nice when there was an era of Republicans that, you know, there were certain lines that they didn't cross. They didn't embrace shamelessness to that level. I said, no, 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 Voy a, en 100 años pues, no va a haber nadie vivo. Nadie. Ninguno de los que estamos aquí. Ni, ni, pero más, más probable es que nadie sabe cómo se llama el papá del abuelo de uno. Pero hay algo que yo sí le tengo miedo. Y es a dejar un mal legado. Y hay presidentes, unos presos, otros fugitivos. Pero la mayoría son recordados como ladrón. Yo no quiero ser recordado como el ladrón. Entonces yo no robo, porque no quiero ser recordado como el ladrón o el corrupto. Like Pero un presidente, that. el presidente Duarte, que la gente decía Press en ese entonces, el presidente no es ladrón, pero se They rodeó de ladrones. Y en algún momento corrupt. representó una esperanza para, para el pueblo salvadoreño. Pero si acaso es verdad que él no robó, qué tonto could, fue. Lost, could, porque él hey, era esperanza. If, if I was doing this, if I was in charge and I was going after, I'd do it just like this, though. If I was legitimate, I haven't stolen nothing, and I don't want to be surrounded by thieves. I'm telling my AG to investigate all of you. I'd do it right in front of the cameras, in front of everybody. As a left-winger, if I was in charge. If, he, if this is legit, 
I'm not going to sit here and say it's not legit. And really quick uh, for you there, Blue Brother, sorry. I was just talking about how I would love to see Bukele being the start, you know, because Davey was saying, you know, is it really so hard to believe a right-wing leader could do something, you know, altruistic and good for his people? And it's like, yeah, dude, yeah, look at the record. Can you, you know, can you give me a fucking right-winger in the last fucking, what, 50 years that's done anything for anybody besides themselves and their own crew and their, you know, their own power? So I would love for Bukele to be the start of a new wave of principled conservatism where there was actually conservatives who, you know, they they said they believed in something and they actually held themselves to it, like a Ron Paul kind of guy, right? I would really love to see that. Um, instead of conservatives embracing shamelessness like a superpower, um, you know, but there's, you know, <laughs> it would, if, 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 if that's true, Bukele would be, would be the start of a whole new type of right-wing conservatism. It would be a whole new level, but you know, you know what makes me think that that's not the case? The fact that he hasn't done anything to fix the, um, dragnet. To, he hasn't done anything to to fix the, the you know or or find these people that were caught up in his you know anti gang sweep and get them out of jail as quickly as possible. He's doing he's doing the oh we didn't make mistakes we don't make mistakes that didn't happen. He's doing he's doing that usual shit. So that's telling me he's he's not actually doing the only thing that we're seeing that's different is that it's slicker it's media it's media savvy it's packaged really well. Um. But I'm seeing evidence that this is, like I said, if, if, you know, check, 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 dictator list. But maybe. Sorry, Blue Brother. Esto representó una esperanza para para el pueblo salvadoreño. So he's talking about Duterte. Pero si acaso es verdad que él no robó, qué tonto fue, porque él era la esperanza del pueblo. No tocó un centavo y manchó su legado por rodearse de so la droga. The, the people around him still made him seem like a criminal. Entonces, a mí no me va a pasar eso. I'd love for this to be true. Yo no voy a ser el presidente que no robó, pero se rodeó de ladrón. Mm, okay. Pero que me recuerden como el presidente que no robó y que no dejó que nadie robar. Y al que robó lo metió a la cárcel. Ya hay un par que ya están en la cárcel. Okay. Wait and see, huh? Like I said, there's a plenty of evidence to, that says that this guy is not, you know, like like I said, like if I if I had done something as drastic as a left winger, I'm in charge, and I did something as drastic and authoritarian as the police state that was implemented in El Salvador to get rid of MS-13, which has been effective. If I did that, I would immediately be telling the public, you know, this is not forever. I want to make this better. I, I understand that some innocent people have been caught up in this. I'm going to do everything I can to fix that. Uh, we want we want to end this police state. We want to end, you know, we want to we want to make sure that, you know, that there's a clear hierarchy that, we, you know, that this won't get out of hand and be extended indefinitely. He's not doing any of that. He's not doing any of that. And yeah, of course, he was the guy that was also talking about how we're going to do Bitcoin everything until that fucking... Right. It's not like Bitcoin's dead, but I think the, the, the era, thank you, Kissing Gonzo. I think the era of Bitcoin being, you know, oh, you know, maybe it's a pretty safe investment. I think that's over. I think everyone understands it's risky as shit. And also this, you know, they sell Bitcoin. They sell these exchanges. They sell this uh, blockchain technology as being unregulated. When th we've seen the moment it starts becoming serious, the regulators come down on it. So this whole idea that you're going to enjoy this unregulated market forever is totally fucking ridiculous. And you, you shouldn't want to participate in an unregulated market because your ass is going to get ganked. <clears throat> Hosh's uh, CPAC speech? No, I did not. I didn't miss that. So over here in the mystery files... Second Boeing whistleblower dies after short illness. Um, need to remind you that Boeing is connected to the U.S. government um, in a myriad of ways. This is, it is Boeing is not a normal company. Um, this it is a company that the United States depends on and has deep relationships with. So what I'm trying to say is that you know it it's not totally outside the realm of possibility that there are subversive governmental elements that could be interested 
in clamping down on this using techniques and tactics that only a government a covert intelligence government agency would have access to um we have no proof of this though the first the first guy is it's, it's suspicious as hell the first guy was suspicious as hell this one less suspicious but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean the intelligence agencies don't know how to make it look like a natural death um oh sorry here i got a paywall one second just strip the paywall here using this wonderful archive function oh come on for real this is the first time come on all right well this application needs to download it it seems it seems pretty suspicious seems pretty suspicious give it a second here folks i mean you can tell me what you think about it but you know they're saying natural causes second whistleblower died maybe i need to start believing conspiracy theories look i don't i don't like the idea you know i don't like conspiracy theory in general i like to base my conclusions off fact yes that includes 9 11 by the way i don't really like theories all right here we go what the hell what the hell is this oh <laughs> Oh, that's why oh this is the this is that stupid i'm sorry strategy this is the this is strategy members clip i i forgot I to see hit. what you're saying and i basically agree because like this idea that there is an organized left-wing extremist uh you know problem in any way that that is in any way comparable in size or scope to the to the okay. organized we already heard that thank you for the clip and don't forget to share those clips online everybody Okay, I forgot to hit copy. That's why. Don't forget, you got to put the, uh, you know, share those clips if you if you want to help the stream. Uh, put that put that stuff on social media. This is what I expected. It should have been ready to go. Um, so Joshua Dean, a Boeing whistleblower, a Boeing whistleblower who warned of manufacturing defects in the plane maker 737 Max, has died after a short illness. The second Boeing whistleblower to die this year. Dean, 45, not exactly. Uh, Oh, was a former quality auditor at Boeing supplier uh, Spirit Aerosystems, filed a complaint with the FAA alleging, qu quote, serious and gross misconduct by, by senior quality management of the 737 production line. So just almost word for word, exactly what we heard from the other Boeing whistleblower. Yeah, Blue Brother. Um... Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree with you, Kissing Gonzo. Um, anyway, I just want to see, I just want, okay, yeah, Dean was, okay, so according to the Seattle Times, Dean was hospitalized after having trouble breathing. He was intubated and developed pneumonia and a serious infection before dying two weeks later. Pretty sure you can do that with a poison, but we don't know. Quote, he passed away yesterday morning and his absence will be dealt deeply felt. So, so two weeks ago, he's totally healthy, not a single problem. And then he gets freaking, he needs to get intubated. All right. I mean, the, the other guy died in a parking lot, killed himself in a parking lot. Pretty goddamn suspicious. I got to say, I, I would like to know more. Like if, if, if this was like, a was this like something that he had for a while um, so Dean was represented by the same law firm that rep that represented Boeing whistleblower John Mitch Barnett, who was found dead from what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So this is just going over the other guy. So another whistleblower who hasn't been killed yet went to Congress. Sam Selpour told Congress that there was no safety culture at Boeing. I am not getting on one of these planes, dude. I am not getting I'm I'm gonna be that guy. When I'm buying tickets, I'm gonna be that guy that's like, no, I like get me schedule a plane that doesn't have a Boeing. None of them. Parts flying off them. Firmware's not being updated. Goddamn things crashing out of the sky. Two of them. 
Okay, so we have no information about this guy's previous health. Can you request that? I don't know. I'm going to try. I'm going to raise a, one hell of a stink. Probably not. I probably got no fucking choice, do I? Don't I? So I would... So what, what would make this less or more suspicious is knowing what this guy's health history was. That's the guy I sail for. Dude ought to buy some armor. Hire a food taster and go on social media every day saying I am not suicidal. Day day 107 of me not 100% not feeling like I want to kill myself. Anyway, everyone have a nice day. Um, yeah, I mean, Blue Brother, totally possible. Totally possible. You know, 45 years old is not exactly elderly by any means. You know, I'm getting up there. Um, but it, uh, you know, hey. People in 45 could have all kinds of health issues, you know, previous. It just seems kind of suspicious. If he was totally fine and then he catches something and gets pneumonia, he's got to be intubated. Maybe he caught COVID, wasn't vaccinated. I don't know. Anyway, just wanted to talk about that for a bit. Probably should remove this El Salvador thing from my current subject. Tornadoes. We got some really frightening... It's the second whistleblower. That's a difficult. It, it's it's the timing, the timing. I'm I'm 50 50. I'm right on the fence with this one. I do that a lot. I'm sorry, but I'm 50 50 on. You know, was he killed? Was it suspicious? There's there's too many coincidences here. Too many. Okay, too many. But what we basically have right now is a conspiracy theory because there's just intentionally engineer. It could be, you know, because they know how to engineer these things, how to make things look like an accident, how to make things. Well, there's enough plausible deniability to like, you know, there's not enough evidence. They know all this. So staff infections happen. Yes. Without medical attention, they could be fatal. Thing is, he had medical attention almost right away. That's no normal staff infection. Pneumonia progress. Yeah, it's a good point. I'm not a doctor, though. You know, you can punch somebody in the head and, you know, kill them instantly right then and there. You know what I mean? And so it's like, you know, human beings can surprise you and how human beings can surprise you and how like they'll survive the craziest shit sometimes or they'll just, you know, die over anything. You know, he had an aneurysm in his in his, you know, in his sleep and he he, he died, you know, like, just you know, that shit can happen. It happens every day. But the, the timing, the relationship the, the you know with the with Boeing the pretty a lot of big fucking coincidences here dog and I'd like to know more about this guy's previous health history because if he was 100% healthy and then this just happened to him but really woke patriot yeah pneumonia wow staph infection take care of yourself folks um, all right so moving on this is shocking footage favorite word of the day this footage will blow your fucking mind. Um, massive tornadoes in Kansas and in Texas. Um, thankfully, the death count is low. Injury count is, is unfortunately up there. But the death count is, is pretty low. Um, once again, I always say this when it comes to climate news. We can't blame every single incident on climate change. But what we can say is that these incidences that do come up are more powerful are and, and are catalyzed by climate change. Basically, climate change affects all climate. And what what might have been a smaller incident, a smaller tornado, um, is like I said, catalyzed by climate change. So that's that's what we need. We need to remember that that this is kind of like all encompassing. Um, and we can't we can't say oh you know climate change caused this one but climate change didn't cause that one no climate change is affecting all climate everywhere and sometimes you know it, the extreme will go in the other direction where it's like wow it's in the middle of winter and it's a beautiful summer sunny day you know and no one's bitching about that but it's actually totally irregular and you know a sign that things are out of whack so that's my statement I make about climate every time we show climate related news. Yeah.
watch your back, niggas. Top of the year, but I don't forget. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Can't show that. <laughs> Can't be brawling with the police on Twitch. This was a while ago. Well, I just, I, I clumped it together. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't go, don't go one to one fisticuffs with the cops, man. I remember hearing about a YouTube family whose son literally died at the kitchen table while eating cereal. He's feeling tired and suddenly died from an aneurysm. The son died at 13. That is, you know, his name was Caleb oh Radalehi. Well, RIP, that is, yeah. Look at it, look up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's a crazy. Basic inclusion, guys. Westmoreland. Danger. Dangerous tornado here. <laughs> Dangerous tornado. I'm standing right in front of it. I'm going to get killed by the tornado. I can subscribe. <laughs> This is pretty intense. Like, look how clean the funnel is. And it goes all the way up. Yeah, death surround us all. Look how far up. It's pretty awe-inspiring. I still got the drone. It's coming right towards us a little bit. Then look at this. Look how much shit's in the air, dude. How you get to Oz. I'll reduce the volume here for you. Sorry. Oh Jesus! He put he puts put the camera outside. He doesn't know what to do. Sir, you are not equipped for this. I'm gonna get on YouTube. He's like in the tornado right now. Holy shit, dude! You're you're like you're like ten feet away from the tornado. You could easily your, your entire truck could get tossed away. What are you gonna do? You're driving? Oh no, he's getting out of the vehicle. Hey, My God, man! Violent tornado here. Yeah, we know. Come, honey. We know. What a loop. Look above, Edgar. Edgar, take a look at the tornado. Where's the bird? <laughs> at, the, at, at this moment, he knew. <laughs> Edgar, look at the tornado. It's gonna kill us. Yeah. I mean, at any time, like, a piece of debris can go right through your head. Look at, Look at all this dangerous debris that can Look kill us at any road. moment! Debris is raining on us! Look at the curly Q! Edgar's a good name, yeah. God, that roar! Pretty intense stuff. Yeah, I mean... You got people. Get off the fucking road, you moron! I'm trying to get out of oh. here! There's a black tree! Uh oh. Tree blocking the road! There's a tree down! Thank Good job, Obama. You need help moving that tree? Okay. Yes, sir. Alright, he cuts, yeah. But oh, man, look at this, dude! Oh, look at it! And you, you see his drone oh, over to the God. left over here. He's got a drone going closer. too. Hear the roar! Here comes the roar! <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, the footage that he's capturing though is spectacular. <laughs> it's unbelievable, it? dude. We gotta land it here. I gotta land this. He's talking keep about shooting. his drone. Can you hold mine? Hold mine and shoot it, please. I've never seen anything like this after. Get out oh, of the car. There it is! Over here! Touching down. I mean, so he's catching the moment it's touching down. Here it comes! Ah, oh, spectacular. It's in the <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> his his commentator is all, his, his 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 commenting is awesome. He's 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 adding nothing. <laughs> he's from. The last, the last book he cracked was, you know, was in high school. He knows nothing about any of this. But fuck me, if he's, if he's getting just the sickest video, you know?
Bravery and stupidity, those, they go hand in hand. He's wearing Crocs. He's wearing Crocs. <laughs> He'd be a hero? I don't know about hero, man. But, I mean, you got one hell of an epic video to show at your funeral. Fly two by fours. There's two by fours flying everywhere. I'm going to die. Edgar, Edgar's running for cover. He's, he's all, you know, Edgar's like half a mile away running in the other direction. He's still yelling at Edgar. <laughs> Crocs are fine in the house. I mean, yeah, Blue Brother, you know, <laughs> abattoir. That's a funny comment. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, Crocs are ugly as hell, but, you know, they seem to last a really long time, which is a really great yeah, thing for footballer. That guy just light up a smoke during the tornado? I think so, yeah. That's Reed Timmer. He drives into tornadoes. He has a PhD. Oh, okay, thank you, Kawabunga. Okay, all right. All right, thank you, Kawabunga. I'm a jackass. Okay, so he's a legitimate scientist on top of that. He's not just an amateur. Okay, all right. $80 a pair for Crocs? It's like 80 cents of plastic. Okay, so he's got a PhD. Thank you very much, Kawabunga Tootsie Roll, for that correction. This is Reed Timmer. He's almost got a million subscribers. Hey, congratulations. Congratulations, Reed Timmer. $80 a pair. Paying way too much. This what you just come on, man. There could be nails. You got Crocs on. Are you guys okay? I mean, this this is a little theatric because he's like shouting for. There's like no one here. He's like kind of he's kind of doing the ghost chaser thing, kind of making it seem like there might be people here. He probably should have cut this, but whatever. Amazing Hello. footage, all the same. Hello. Waiting for the Cybertruck reservation. You know. Is anybody home? If if the build quality wasn't so terrible. My God, Crocs are legitimately that expensive. You you know it's like the the cheapest material. Like I understand they're engineered well, but it's like literally the cheapest thing. Like you know, poly polyethylene plastic. It's like the cheapest material you could possibly be making this. You can make it out of recycled water bottles, for God's sakes. Damn, dude, the oh damage is unbelievable. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get a just, you know we're talking about staff infections over here. That's a great way to get an infection here. Okay, these are regular shoes. I don't know. Maybe he ch did he change his shoes? Different guy. I won't date women that wear Crocs. You would if she was hot. Shut up. Hello. She's all looking cute and she's got some Crocs on. Oh yeah, you're gonna. Oh, I'm done with you. Pineapple on pizza, bitch. Yeah, the uh, sewer cover sucked out of the road here. Sewer sucked out. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, put it back on there, Slick. He just leaves it. Look at that occlusion. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Maybe if he had a big booty too. Ah, no, you said it kissing Gonzo. You're gay. You're busted. You're so gay. Do those storm spotting and chasing. He's a really good dude. But he's also a bit of a lunatic in the best way. Well, Kawabunga, we need those people. Thank you for correcting me. I'm glad. Um, yeah, look at that vertical wall on the left side. I'm glad, I'm glad oh, we got maniacs cyber. like this out there. You know. Like I said, this this part was a little, eh. You know, this part was a little, you know, Mr. Beast chasing tornadoes. But I'll, yeah, I'll let it be, you know. Um, I got more footage. We're not we're not done here, folks. So moving over to Texas. So that was uh, Kansas. So you know, very ironic tornado out of Kansas. But we have uh, Texas uh, feeling the heat just a couple days ago. Might I think it was just two days ago? I think that new round of devastating weather in Texas already battered by torrential rain. Look at this. This footage is bananas. This guy's over. He's 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 getting. He, dude, he's like, I'm fucked. I'm totally fucked. He's getting out of his damn car, dude. Does anyone have an extended clip of this? Yeah, God hates it. You know, there was there was one gay couple in Kansas. That's it. They, that's you know, Pat Robinson was right.
that new round back, of Clutch. devastating weather in Texas, already battered by torrential rain, flooding, tornadoes, <laughs> and huge hail. Here. Samara Theodore oh, is live oh, you in up. Conroe, Texas. Good morning to you, Samara. Good morning, Janae. So Conroe, Texas sits about 40 minutes worth of a drive north of Houston, and this house sits along the San Jacinto River. The river has swollen so much that it has completely inundated the grounds of this family home. In fact, I'm standing in the driveway. You can see the saturated grounds have caused two large oak trees to fall. Compl well, that's fascinating. It wasn't a tornado that knocked it over. It was the, the, the water making the, the soil loose, and it just fell over. Completely impeding access to this family reaching their home. And unfortunately, there's that more could be rain. The scene That's terrible for news. Many more Texans as we gear up for another round of severe weather and heavy rainfall through the weekend. Yeah. Oh, wow. Throughout the weekend. This morning, Texans bracing for more severe weather after dangerous yeah. storms slammed the state. Tornadoes Why would gay tearing people through towns, do this to leaving Texas. wreckage in their wake. Heavy rain, flooding towns, closing roads, and shutting down schools. Oh my God, that's a With rivers rising, authorities enforced mandatory evacuations while coming to the aid of trapped citizens. First responders yeah, arriving in... I've actually... I'm, I'm from Michigan. I've been in a few tornadoes. I've at least been in, like, tornado, like, get in the basement situations. I've never actually seen one up close like that. So I've, you know, I've lived amongst tornadoes. I even lived in a trailer park. It's pretty <laughs> funny. Um... But yeah, never seen a tornado that close. Um, I can tell you though that the weather it turned it's totally creepy. It's like a horror movie. Everything gets still and quiet, and like the the sky is raging, and you can see like the clouds are moving rapidly, and you know, and are like big and black. But everything is quiet. Even the animals and everything, everything's just quiet. No birds chirping, nothing. You can hear a pin drop. But then when the tornado gets close, it's like a tr it's like a choo choo train. Um, that's what I hear. I've never I've never gotten that close to hear it myself. But everyone says it's like it's it's a roar like a train. Boats and pulling people to safety amid the rushing water. You live back there? Yeah, I did. Wow, wow. I lost my home. Outside Huntsville, lost his a group home. of good Samaritans banding together to rescue this man whose truck had gotten washed off a road. A helicopter arriving later to bring him to safety. If you're in a low flying area. Got to get out of there. Go to safety. Do not wait till it's too late and then you endanger our first responders. Got to get out. Get of there. in. Get in the car. Well, this is wild. So look at this family right here running for their lives. Too late. Um, and and wait till you see the the images of uh you know, how they were looking. They they took some real damage here. It's wild. Then you endanger our first responders. Get in. You can see them running over here. Get in the car. While driving through the town of Hodges, storm chaser Freddie McKinney spotting the Lambert family. Yeah, and you can see you can see that the the While all driving the blood through the town the of young Hodges, man right storm chaser here. Freddie absolutely heroic kid here, just totally soaked in blood, and you'll see what it, what condition he was in. It's unbelievable. McKinney spotting the Lambert family, desperately running for safety. I remember hearing glass break, and then Got I remember up. hearing bricks coming down and they were coming down on top of us one touching down in holly destroying homes and so sending residents fleeing survived. for their lives our maria villarreal witnessing the damage in holly firsthand where families are trying to pick up the that's pieces. a whole wall gone. the tornado that actually hit this area completely destroyed this home but there was a family of five inside when it actually hit they hid in two closets they are okay they survived I want to see that new twister the storms movie. also it's... bringing hail to parts of the lone star state it. two inch hail reported in scurry county big old chunks of hail all right and then she just she just gives us more well she's going to give us some science let's go ahead and we'll get some science here now, you know, this rain that's getting ready to move in on Sunday comes on the heels of some epic totals. Take a look right now. So in the last couple of days, we've seen at least 23 yeah, inches money. of rain in yeah. in Texas. Huntsville, Texas saw around 21 inches of rain. Right now, we remain under flood watches and flood warnings throughout the greater Houston area. And while we have this break, the next round of wet weather is anticipated to move in overnight by 2 a.m. arriving. Heavy rainfall then batters this region through Sunday into Sunday evening. The more imminent threat, though, is actually this afternoon, a little bit farther west in San Angelo, Texas. We're anticipating right, Peter, more strong one. thunderstorms. Take a look at this risk. This is level three out of five. Highest tornado risk exists for Midland, San Angelo, down to Fork Stoughton, and we could see very large hail and damaging winds along with these storms. Geo? It's that tornado threat we really have to watch. All right, Samara, thank you so much. All right, a couple more uh, clips here. Uh, you know, I love showing the local news when it comes to uh, these climate these climate things. It's uh, it's you know they get they get they get right there. I, I prefer not to have Tapper Jake talking about these. 
Webster that hit Marietta was at least an EF4 strength, packing winds as high EF4. as 170 miles per hour. Its destructive path clearly evident in this Damn, video from McIntyre Law Chopper right 4. The twister peeled off the roof. Damn, you, that is the contents of the warehouse. You can see the shelving. Whoa, the roof of dude. this Dollar Tree distribution center in Marietta, a major employer in that other in that area. Other buildings flattened just wow. now. Piles of twisted metal and some insulation. Sure we have to. News John Hayes has been in Marietta for much of the day. And John, so devastating down there. What's the latest? Around the standing water. Oh, yeah. California, yeah, Heather, definitely. Heather, really just painful to look at here. We are standing in front of what we imagine might be some kind of vehicle. We've actually been scratching our heads trying to figure out just what exactly it is. You'll see this fiberglass behind me here, but you also see some wood and what may look like a boxcar door behind us here. You're too stoked. You're too stoked about this, homie. You got to tone it down really just confusing but a lot of this damage is just really torn to shreds really just mangled on top of each other and really just emphasizing how terribly strong these winds were and if we just we walk a, a little bit example. further you'll see all of these power lines and of course right behind me here this homeland grocery store i'm told this is the only grocery store in town and you really can't tell it's much of a grocery store again all of that metal just mangled wow. together parts of the building looking like it could give way any second crews keeping us a safe that's probably as close as he could get but distance away because they really aren't Man. sure how much more debris could fall what other parts of the building could collapse it's really just an unstable a devastating situation for this community here now struggling really just trying to figure out what their next steps are but really just focused right now on recovery this has really crippled our community um, as far as infrastructure goes. The crippling effect. I, I, you know, I hate to do this. Politics is involved, though. Let's not forget, Donald Trump literally brags about how he, you know, if this, you know, if the stuff like this happens to left wing states, he's going to, you know, proudly withhold aid. And of course, Joe Biden is going to do everything he can to help these folks out as well as he should. Um, but we, we could be dealing with the future where the sitting president um, picks and chooses based off of purely politics, of who he's going to help in these natural disasters. Back to natural disasters, by the way, that are going to be getting worse. Damage everywhere you look in Marietta. Buildings reduced to rubble, trucks wrapped around each other like toys. Damn, dude. Come on, that's a good shot. You're not going to, you got to stick on that one for a little bit. Damn. Damn. Okay, I think I have one more. Yeah, okay. And I think, no, no, the, uh, the other one I think I showed you was the craziest one. That was, yeah, okay. Um, not for broadcast. Another storm chaser here. Brett at live. Jesus, bro, you're so close. Wow. Backing up. Beep, beep. Is it the train video? No, I've not seen the train video. Go ahead and put that link in the chat. Why should have time until Trump will claim he could he could prevent earthquakes? There's really no limit to what he will say to, to obtain power. It's not new. Not new, it's just American flavored. Damn, dude. Gee, that's all I have to say. It's just, if I saw that coming, I'd shit my pants. Look at how destructive that is. Wow. <laughs> it might be coming towards you there, bud. I thought that was a cow. I thought that was a cow in the sky. Yeah, I wish we could harness that. Yeah, me too. That would be very something. It would be interesting. Harness that. Wow. Oh, 
Oh yeah, this is crazy. Holy shit, this is crazy. Oh my God, okay, yeah, this is a crazy video. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. All right, we definitely got to show this. He once saw cows flying? Really? No way. And he didn't get it on camera though? Come on, Reed Timmer. You lying. Lying, boy. I saw the Wicked Witch in there. There goes Dorothy. Um, no, this is totally bananas. Kawabunga is correct. It starts slow. Starts slow. Trust me. No, this is this is bananas. I think this is coming this way. This is an engineer in, in a in a train. That's the quiet. Yeah, this is that eerie ass quiet that you yeah. Sends a shiver down your spine, dude. It's we it's weird. Oh, he's got video, son of a bitch. Okay, okay. I don't have time. Well, I can't be talking about Torres. Going back up. Okay, this is from 2018. We'll do this one next stream, I promise, Woke Patriot. Thank you for that proof. Thinking it is. Hope it stays small like that when it does. Just, they're just joking. They're like, you know, trying to keep the mood light. Well, that thing looks like it's coming right for us, doesn't it? Now it's like, are you better go? I wouldn't sit right there. It's coming right for him, too. Okay. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, Shit. Oh shit. I think it just ripped him. It just ripped something up. So I think I think he went from his headphones to the camera's mic or something like that. I think he disconnected his headphones or something. Just checking. Oh shit. Batten down the hatches, dude. Close it up. You're in a train. Out. Yeah, dude. Um, should we get away from the windows? Yes. Yes. Take a cover. Take a cover. Right over us. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Windows crack. Shit all on the thing. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a devil plane window. We're in an emergency. Yeah, I'm sure we're in an emergency. Yep. Let me see. Yep. Let me see. yep. Oh, yeah, we wow. got trees and everything else. Oh, you're not going anywhere, down. buddy. Yeah, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, Radio yeah, that shit in. The car over? No. Yeah, we ain't going nowhere. No, oh, you ain't going We're nowhere, buddy. Yeah. Here's a yeah. Wow. Hey, and you know what? Professional, total professionals the entire time. Batting down the hatches. Right? They were like, okay, yep, it's happening. <laughs> it's, just, it's just happening, boys. Real professionals there. So congrats, you know, good job. Good job to these guys holding it down. Um, last little bit of tornado news before I get to a useful bit of news uh, about how you can do your taxes. Um, how soon you'll be able to do your taxes in a much cheaper way. Uh, but no, I, I saw this while, while looking up some uh, tornado related stuff. I saw this and, you know, got to give credit where credit's due. 
Hold on, sorry. No, I'm doing it again, sorry. <laughs> it's smoking weed. Uh, but no, this guy, this kid, total hero. Nine-year-old hero, um, nine-year-old's heroic act saves parents after Oklahoma tornado. Quote, please don't die. I'll be right back. That's what he told his parents before he, he left them because they had a broken, one of them had a broken neck, broken hip, totally fucked up. Kids somehow survived. They were in a truck that was hit by the tornado and the truck flipped over. Um, and, you know, they were severely hurt, but the kid was able to, Kid was okay. Kid got out of there. An Oklahoma couple now in the ICU with broken backs and necks has their nine-year-old hero son to think after a tornado tossed their truck into trees. And look at the state of this truck right here. It's amazing he survived. Tornadoes left a trail of destruction in Oklahoma over the weekend. At least four people were killed, dozens injured, and many lost their homes, businesses, and belongings. Wayne and Lindy Baker, along with their nine-year-old son, Branson, were headed to Dixon, Oklahoma, just north of Marietta, to seek shelter when a tornado suddenly picked up their truck and tossed it. Um, Wayne Baker's back, neck, sternum, ribs, and arm were broken. He also lost part of a finger. Lindy Baker's back, neck, jaw, ribs, and right hand were broken. So both of them can't move. Um, she also suffered a punctured lung. Yeah, what a rock and mullet, right? Somehow Branson got out of the truck and ran over a mile in the dark through downed power lines and debris to get help. He made it to the house of a neighbor and friend uh, who brought him back to help his parents. So just total hero. The only way he found his way back was with uh, lightning strikes that lit the road. Um, he ran it. So he's just pitch black, total dark, no street lights, no flashlight. Um, you know, he's just maybe he's got the moonlight, but he was using lightning strikes to, to help orient himself. Um, he, he ran as fast as he could, as hard as he could. He made it a mile in 10 minutes. Uh, that's impressive for a little kid, said Branson's uncle, Johnny Baker. The last thing Brandon told them was, Mom, Dad, please don't die. I'll be right back. Um, and he was. He came right in. He, he got him help, and they're, they're healing up. There is a GoFundMe. There's the family right there in better times. There is a GoFundMe. Um, that's only raised about $10,000, so... Um, we could talk about America's healthcare system later. Um, good job. Good job, Brandon. I think it was his name. Branson. Good job, Branson. Rock and mullet. Hero, hero of the week. Garbage Fuels Hero of the Week. Branson. All right. Um, this is a very short video, but I wanted I wanted to show it to you from More Perfect Union. They're awesome. But I wanted to show this to you because, hey, this is actually legitimately helpful information. It looks like Davey's putting in some helpful information as well. Uh, but this could actually affect your life. Uh, everything we talk about seems so ethereal. You know, because we look out our windows and it's like, oh, it doesn't seem that bad. Even though it's very, very, you know, very, very important. But it's not like, it's not like, you know, the information, you know, you, what you learn about Chad is going to change your trip to the grocery store. This could change your trip to the grocery store. This, you know, this, this is the financial well-being of America. We're being, we're currently being victimized by this, you know, TurboTax uh, Intuit company who is ripping off America. These companies, including Intuit, including many other companies, are lobbying the government to make our tax system more complicated, to make it so that it's harder for you to, you know, to file your taxes, yada, yada, yada. And there are forces fighting against that on Ukraine aid. Uh, uh, not only should Ukraine receive the aid, the Ukraine, NATO should be helping Ukraine defend itself at the north northern borders to relieve those soldiers. Um, I'm gonna be reporting on David Cameron um, talking about how um, right here, Ukraine can strike inside Russia with British weapons, says UK's Cameron. And I totally agree with that. The United States putting these ridiculous restrictions when Ukraine has, has proven time and time and time again that they're only striking military targets, that they're not going to strike. And all of a sudden the United States cares about their weapons striking innocent civilians, pretty fucking funny. Uh, with what we're seeing in, in Gaza. But Ukraine over here proving, proving that they're perfectly capable of avoiding civilian massacres. 
anyway whoops well i didn't mean to <laughs> we're getting a little getting a little ahead of ourselves so going back to this so that's how i feel about ukraine i know i know where you're going just leave don't make me don't make me flush you just go ahead and leave you're not going to find you're not making any points We've gone through it a million times. Ukraine has the right to defend itself, and the West has the right to help Ukraine do that. Go ahead and take a hike, okay? We, I don't want to hear your Russia apologetics and you just asking questions because you care about fiscal fiscal conservatism. You're full of shit. Because if this was a if this was Trump's war, if this was the right wing's war, and not a slam dunk for Biden, you guys, oh, this is what we got. We do everything we can to help. We got to do everything we can to help. The only reason you right-wing conservatives, oh, I'm not a right-winger, I'm not a right-winger. Sure, you're not. The only reason right-wing conservatives are shitting on Ukraine, pretending to give a shit about uh, the money that's being sent, pretending to care about World War III, is because it's a big slam dunk for Biden and, you know, Keir Starmer. And we, we, we don't see the Tories in, in the UK shitting on Ukraine. Captain. He's just asking questions. He's just a he's just a captain asking questions. We are one step closer to being taxes. able to file our taxes completely for free. Taxes. That's thanks to a new pilot program launched this year by the IRS called Direct File. The program empowered working class taxpayers to file their taxes directly with the government without paying corporate giants like TurboTax or H&R Block. Yeah. The new program has already helped save working class people $90 million in refunds and an estimated 5.6 million in tax preparation fees. Over 140,000 taxpayers used the service this year, far surpassing Treasury's goal of 100,000 users, with an overwhelming majority reporting a high degree of user satisfaction. Thanks to funding from the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRS has simplified yeah. the- And it is good to know, like I said before, um... This, this kind of stuff will be reversed with a Trump presidency, with a right-wing presidency. Um, they'll, you know, it, it, slam dunk, we reversed an Obama-era policy that was making you, you we, we wanted to give the American public choice in the matter of how they do their taxes. And we felt the, the liberal way was so draconian, taking away your choice so that you could choose to have a corporation charge you out the nose to do something that we used to offer for free but but that wasn't fair thanks to funding from the inflation reduction act the irs Captain, we get a lot of bad actors. the tax filing process and set a new standard for how the government develops we get a lot technology. of bad actors just asking so questions why direct file well, for far too long, the tax filing system hasn't worked for taxpayers. All of us collectively spend 1.7 billion students. hours or $31 billion annually just to file our tax. You think the people that are putting their bodies at risk for, the, for, for a free Palestine are communists? Really? You think that's a commie thing to do? To, to protest against war crimes? Father Dari, you think that's a communist thing? I.e. something un-American? Dissent. One of, one of the foundational elements of American democracy is commie. Huh? That's cute. That's cute. Taxes, even though the overwhelming majority have pretty simple returns and should be able to file in mere minutes and for free. The problem is, the nation's largest tax prep companies want you to pay to file. And so they've spent millions lobbying to maintain a broken filing process. They've even tricked taxpayers into thinking they can file for free, but then charge them for filing anyway. Yeah. This tax filing season, the IRS launched Direct File with a pilot in 12 states relying on an iterative process that's similar to how a private company would beta test a new tech product. They offered a mobile first tool in both English and Spanish and robust bilingual customer support. 
The direct file pilot was a test, and the IRS passed with flying colors. It's time to fully fund the IRS to make direct file a permanent fixture of American tax administration and to meet the needs of taxpayers everywhere. Americans deserve a real choice in how they file their taxes. Look, if, if we're going to give more money to the IRS, that better come with some reforms. Um, but uh, I do think that we should fund our, our IRS because what we see is oligarchs like Donald Trump and Joe Biden who support oligarchs. I wouldn't specifically call him an oligarch, more of like an oligarch fanboy. Um, but what we see, what they see, what we see them do is they, um, you know, they make it much more difficult for us to um, hold on. Yeah, yeah, they needs of taxpayers everywhere. Americans deserve a real choice in how they file their taxes. And the IRS is setting a new I totally lost my train of thought. How I was the reading the comments. I can got completely and should work for its people. Visit yeah. better. So uh, I wanted to show the map real quick. Just so if you live in one of these states here, it looks like you do have the ability to direct file. Um, and you should absolutely do that. Oh, okay. That's that was the train of thought. I was going to say is that Oligarchs like Joe Biden, oligarch fanboys like Joe Biden and oligarchs like Trump, they want to make, um, wow. I'm sorry, they want to make the IRS tooth, toothless. Wow, I did it twice, it's unbelievable. They, it, it, is there some kind of drug in the water? No, it's the drug that you're smoking, jackass. But no, they want to make the IRS weak and, and incapable of going after, you know, high-end financial crime, you know, if it's if it's complicated, if it's got a bunch of different bits and pieces and requires a really complicated investigation, uh, a lot of the time the IRS won't have the resources to follow up on that. So if you want to hide your money, you want to commit financial crimes, you just make it more complicated than what the IRS can handle. So what we see is the IRS going after small fish, easy, easy to get, you know, but they, they tend to ignore um, extremely rich uh, individuals because it's so complicated to, to actually uh, catch them on the financial crimes that they're committing. Um, check out Cash App Taxes for a totally free filing service. All right, well, there you go. Davey's recommending Cash App Taxes. Do your taxes with Cash App. No, hey, maybe it works. Hey, that's fine. All right. <clears throat> Moving on to our, you know, what's up with, what's up with the fascists segment here. Uh, I just got some quick ones, some tweets, some other evidence, just to once again reinforce that our democracy is under assault from the conservatives uh, that are embracing authoritarianism and fascism. Davey, Davey somehow thinks that these conservatives are somehow going to drop MAGA one day and go back to, what, the Bush-era Tea Party shit? It's not happening. I'm sorry, Davey. The conservative Party is lost. They've embraced MAGA. They've embraced authoritarianism. What, what, other, what other direction can they go in? They are a direct assault to our democracy. They are a direct assault to our liberty. American conservatives. The... The, even the good ones like Liz Cheney basically fully support fascism and you know and it's like they'll surprise you they'll surprise you you think Adam Kinzinger is not going to vote Trump Adam Kinzinger he's the right winger right he's the right yeah he's the right winger that was part of the January 6th committee is he voting Trump let's see let's see did he make a He, he's, I'm sure he's been asked. Kingsinger said he'd vote for Biden instead of Trump. Okay, so I'm wrong on that one. In a heartbeat, he said. Okay, he said that in January. Okay, sometimes they'll surprise you. We just had the Bill Barr. We just had Bill Barr making a shameless and disgusting uh, justification for why he's going to. He literally served with Trump. Literally made, made uh, statements to the January 6th committee about how dangerous Trump is. And he's literally saying, oh, I'm still going to vote. I'm still going to vote the Republican ticket. I'm still going to vote for Republican ticket. So Adam Kingsinger was a bad example. But, you know, this assumption that just because they're anti-Trump or never Trumpers, that doesn't mean that they don't support the authoritarianism, the authoritarian shift 
the anti-democratic shift that this Republican Party has gone into. Here's some examples, um, just random ones. So, you know, wanted to talk about Joe Rogan. Uh, he's a right winger. He just recently interviewed Tucker Carlson on his show. Oh, well, he's so open-minded, he's so open-minded. That's why, because he's so open-minded. You see, Davey, that's what I'm talking about. No, the fuck she isn't. She's wildly corrupt. She's wildly anti-worker. Uh, she's she's not she, all she is is a nicer version of MAGA style fascism and you're like oh she's a good future of the conservative no she isn't she's part of the problem she's 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 the bile that's been that's been churned up by this party she doesn't represent a change she represents acquiescing That's a, you're not, you're, it, it's never coming back, man. The mask has been ripped off. The full embrasure of authoritarianism cannot be reversed. You can't put makeup on authoritarianism and make it more palpable. The policies are pretty clear. Fuck your rights. Police state. Corporations can do whatever the hell they want. I, you know, Nikki Haley fully 100% agrees with Mitch McConnell's destruction of our judicial system. Thinks, you know, thought, you know, fully agrees with Mitch McConnell and what he did to our justice system. Fully agrees with what's happening to the Supreme Court. Nikki Haley is not the future of the fucking conservative party. She's a symptom of the fucking disease. Um, I think I think if if the progressives to to answer your question, Davy, that's because that's a good question. Davy over here asking, do you think there's a chance that we will have a large political shift in the neoliberals? We become the new conservative party. Um, if progressives gain ground, continue to fight, use political leverage, organize, gain power, then yes, that is what we will see. Um, the, you know, if, if democracy is to, is to, is to continue to exist in America after 2024, um, it's very possible that the Republicans could become irrelevant, but it, that would be several decades. Yeah, I am evil. <laughs> yes. No, captain. No, you're, you're dead wrong. Russia doesn't want that smoke. Better watch out, World War III. I'm just saying, I know you guys are talking about right-wing fascists, but I'm just saying if we continue to help Ukraine, it can cause World War III. If NATO were to get involved, it could cause World War III. I'm just saying, I'm just asking questions. So here's Tucker Carlson on right-winger Joe Rogan's show. Tucker Carlson tells Joe Rogan that Alex Jones is able to see the future because he's a prophet who is channeling supernatural power. Cool. He doesn't, it's good. Remember, remember that Tucker Carlson is a nihilist who will say anything, who will say anything to, 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 you know, I honestly think Tucker Carlson, you're, you're, you're still here. Father Dari. You're just going to, you're going to say that bullshit about commie, campus protesters and then what you're just going to shut your fucking lip you got anything to say for yourself about your comment about how the core of american democracy is communist dissent peaceful dissent literally the fucking thing that i talk about every single fucking time i stream about how it's the only thing that's ever worked is that communist to you dari and yes, Davin, yes. Here's another reminder that Joe Rogan is not to be listened to. Quote, Elon Musk may have very well saved humanity in some way by buying Twitter. So I think he said this early on. 
But just to get, he's fully captured. He's 100% red pill. He's 100% right winger. This whole idea, oh, he's so, he's so open minded. He's so open minded. Because he, because sometimes he'll have some left wingers and he doesn't, you know. The guy's still talking about ivermectin, still talking about how our liberties were infringed for, because of COVID just a few months ago. They lifted the restrictions, cue ball. Yeah, the people's billionaire, yeah. Stop with the lies. Stop. Don't let the gaslighters convince you. This motherfucker's right wing. And he's voting Trump. Some lies are love. <laughs> Interesting. Um, here's your weekly reminder that Republicans are pedophiles. This New Hampshire Republican state rep, Jess Edwards, arguing in favor of child marriage this week and referring to girls as, quote, ripe and, quote, fertile. Thankfully, the bill passed and child marriage will soon be illegal in New Hampshire. So once again, this this is this is your party, Davey. This this is who you guys are. This is what you guys are. I'm not saying you, Davey. You, you have more principles than this, but this is what you're supporting. This is what you want to be fixed, to be corrected. This is, this is what this is. This is what this party is, man. Pro-child marriage, pro-child labor. Nikki Haley, and by the way, Nikki Haley, I believe Nikki Haley totally supports child labor. Let's double check that. Didn't I read something about that? Okay, no, that was something else. Okay, that was something else. Glad I looked that up. I'm thinking of something else. But this is the party you're defending, dude. Um, Jordan Peterson is has always been crazy. Yeah, true steel. Jordan Peterson is so fucking crazy. It's, it's, you know, th the only reason I talk about him is because he's still brought up as some kind of defensible intellectual as, you know, in a kind of a similar way that people defend Joe Rogan, right? There's like this myth. There's this myth around this individual that he is, he, you know, he's, he's like, he slam dunks the left and, and he like, you know, he's like, he's a, he's a good exemplar of intellectual conservatism. Well, here's him commenting, quote tweeting, the Associated Press, the Associated Press reporting a New Jersey city that limited street parking hasn't had a traffic death in seven years. Wow, a regulation that works and has resulted in a better society. What does Jordan Peterson think about this regulation? You have become pathetic beyond comprehension and the woke death will soon visit you. Excuse me, sir? Hey, this regulation helped a lot to save some lives. You are be pathetic beyond comprehension. <laughs> the woke death. <laughs> I'll go to bed now. Really enjoyed the discussion as always. I'm not a native speaker. Please pardon my mistakes. Hey, Blue Brother, I appreciate you coming in. Thank you so much. Blue Brother over here in Germany. Thank you, Germany. Uh, thank you, Blue Brother from Germany. Appreciate it. Thank you, Blue Brother. Have a good night. Um, if you don't know who Benny Johnson is, he's a pretty well-known um, right-wing grifter that is pro-theocracy. He's very, very, his, his big thing, you know, if you go woke, you go broke. I think that's what Peterson was referencing, Father Dari. Um, but uh, Benny Johnson, very, very pro-theocracy. He was super, super stoked about anti-abortion, about abortion being destroyed. 100% um, believes that women should be slaves uh, of their husbands. You know, does not believe that a woman should have the right to divorce without a husband's permission, yada, yada, yada. Um, smiles, smiles and grins with the biggest shit-eating eating grin you've ever seen in your life when discussing how... He is going to control society with his Christian theology. Um, Captain, buddy, 
Look, I've I've let you I've, look. I, we're talking about a subject, okay? I need you to stay on topic, okay? You're gonna go ahead and take a time out. All right, Captain. We're gonna give you. Let's give him just a one minute, just as a warning. We'll start off instead of going big, like I usually do. Um, stay on topic in the chat. Little non sequiturs here and there. Little divulgent conversations, okay? But 20, 30 fucking minutes of uh, just asking questions. These are the type of people I don't consider to be conservative. Well, you're wrong. They consider themselves conservative. The The population at large considers this conservative. This is conservatism, Davey. A theocratic authoritarianism is conservative, Davey. You're not rescuing this. You're not saving this. You, you're putting this whole whole thing on your shoulders, man. This, this fucking, this disgusting garbage pail kid on your shoulders, this greasy, booger-eaten, authoritarian nightmare, and you're somehow going to redeem it. It's not happening, dude. Stop trying. Stop defending this. But one thing I wanted to point out from Benny Johnson here, who, like I said, is a proud authoritarian uh, theocrat, who, who can't wait to put humanity in chains, especially if you're a woman. Um, just to, just to show you how obvious the grift is, just to show you how, um, little respect he has for his own audience, um, total lie of some story, some made up shit about Biden had pallets of classified documents sent to Mar-a-Lago, but look at the thumbnail, you know, look at, look at how obvious, um, look at how obvious the grift is. You know, the psychological techniques in the thumbnail here to get you to click. The same, you know, the same things that get young people to click on thumbnails, you know? This is how you, you never, you, you really don't see leftists doing this too often. And I'm sure there are some leftists that are doing this, but the right wing, totally shameless, thinks you're a moron, you know, uh, happy to manipulate you into clicking on their content. Um, you know, rage bait, unsh shameless rage baiting. With lies. Um, just to give, just, I just thought I'd just give you a little peek at this madness, and you know why? Why your uncle is so pissed off all the time? Yeah, Davy. Well, it works. It certainly works. <sighs> wow. Uh, you know, I did not see this one coming. So what, what you are looking at is a real image. This the this young man was instructed to wear this shirt by his father, I assume. <clears throat> I nobody saw this coming. So uh, uh, the, the the shirt says "Real men wear diapers." And uh, God, this I mean this they had these shirts ready. Look at this. They had they had the flags ready. Real men wear diapers. You got the flags and the shirts ready. Um, so the reason why this is happening is because the in the Stormy Daniels trial, um, a comment made by I think Cohen about you know Donald Trump, a, a nickname he came up for Donald Trump called uh, Trump Von Shits My Pants. Um, because Trump wears diapers, you know we've, this is a well known fact. Trump ruined his GI track in the eighties. Uh, taking a high high quality quaaludes and like the really good rich guy drugs the, the kind of rich guy drugs that only Dennis you know Dennis uh, what was his name the fucking comedian I'm an asshole I always say is it Leary Dennis Leary yeah, it's Dennis Leary he's got a great bit about quaaludes how he wished they would come back um but no he blew his GI track out in the 80s taking these high end luxury drugs Dennis Leary yeah um I just want to say other Dennis's. Um, he's been wearing diapers for a long time, and I'm not trying to, sorry, pun here. I'm not trying to shit on people who wear diapers. Sometimes that's a serious, you know, hey man, sometimes you you you, you get a shitty, you know, your life is, becomes shitty. That's just, that's, that's life, dude. It sucks for some people. It sucks for everybody, but it just, it sucks for some people more. And sometimes you, you your GI tract blows out and goes to hell. And you got to wear diapers. Um, the problem is, of course, the hypocrisy. 
People criticize Biden for his age. They literally say Biden wears diapers. Biden farts. Remember that viral video? That's what they they always say when they see Biden on the screen, the conservatives in my chat. Oh, he's in a coma. Oh, he's an old man. Oh, he's shitting his pants. Meanwhile, the person that they worship unquestionably, absolutely 100% wears diapers, unlike Joe Biden. There's no evidence that he does. Um, and he, he has like, there's a long history of him uh, evacuating his bowels at inopportune times during when he was, a, you know, filming his uh, TV show, The Apprentice. Eyewitness people, people coming out saying, this, yeah, dude, he had an intern that handled that. Um, and then, of course, we're hearing in, in court that he smells like shit because he has feces in his pants. Sure, Storm, storm Star. Only because you asked so nicely. Um, I really do, uh, Woke Patriot, thank you for saying that because I really do feel bad for this kid. Look, when I was this age, I didn't know shit. I didn't know shit for shit. Okay, I called Romney a flip-flopper because I, I heard that somewhere in the news or something for five seconds. Bush or Romney? Oh, I don't like Romney because he's a flip-flopper. <laughs> so, I if I if I was you know, it's just pathetic. <laughs> you know, I just feel so bad for this kid and this man as well. Uh, they they're so quick. They're so quick with this. All politicians, both sides, huh? Both sides, right? I mean, we got one side on the right who literally wants to destroy democracy, institute an authoritarian theocracy, maybe destroy our rights left and right. And then we have like corporate neoliberalism that is milk toast and, you know, kind of pathetic, but is mainly going to keep the status quo going, kind of leaving the door open to possibly reform it. Those two things are totally the same. Yeah, okay. Uh-oh, Chud alert. The Chuds are here. They're here to defend Diaper Don and make dishonest comparisons, both sides. Isn't it funny how the right wing is constantly saying, conservatives are constantly saying, both sides, both sides. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote, I'm gonna totally support the right wing side. But you know, both sides, both sides. It's almost like there there there's a there's a political advantage to 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 you know to kind of just basically saying ah fuck it ah it's, you know both sides here ah fuck it chud magnet i i attract him um wanted to end on this <laughs> proof <laughs> here we go yeah, Eskinor. But who who are you gonna vote for, buddy? Who are you gonna vote? For? Who's b both sides, right? But who are you gonna vote for? Third party. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for admitting that. Yeah, because I I don't like it either. I don't like the choice that we have to make with Biden. Oh, Davy. Oh, Dave, that's all I got to say. Dems are clapping down on free speech and banning info, which is a fascist tech. Yeah, well, the True Steel, you're not wrong. Lot, you know, but I think True Steel, you would admit that if Joe Biden loses an election to a progressive or to Donald Trump or to whomever, whomever, he would peacefully hand over power, right? Steel, I think you would agree with that. Um, there's a very good chance that Trump is never leaving. If he gets in, there's a very, very legitimate chance. You know, Mr. Pat here would never acknowledge that. Maybe he, maybe he thinks that's a good thing. Over here making vociferous arguments. Be Joe Biden's a pedophile. Joe Biden. Meanwhile, we got pictures and evidence of Donald Trump on Jeffrey Epstein's pedo, pedo plane. But oh, Joe Biden, Joe Biden, Joe Biden. So hey, Pat. So Pat, you're you're voting Trump, right? No, that's ridiculous. What, what, okay, wait a minute. Why am I arguing with children? I'm arguing with children and right-wing conservatives in my chat. This was a great comment here. I think this was posted by Woke Patriot. Dr. Megan uh, Elilia Green. When, remember when the fascists take over, it's not because of the left who tried to resist. It's because of the moderates, who because of their commitment to order over justice, were too eager to let it happen. 
Um, okay, okay, thank you, Pat. Thank you so much, Pat. We'll go ahead and give him a 10 minute. See if he wants to give me the view. Um, totally agree with this statement. And we're experiencing right now exactly what Martin Luther King warned us about when it comes to the, the white moderate. Or it's not even, it doesn't even need to be white, but just the moderate in general of any race who prefers order over justice. And that's exactly what Davey is talking about. Order over justice, right? That's exactly what he's arguing for. Well, I agree that protesting is, and we see this so much from, from it's not just Davey, but we see this from, from a lot of so-called conservatives. But, you know, I agree with protesting, yo, yeah, yada, yada, it's, you know, it's part of our country's heritage, yada, yada, but it shouldn't be disruptive. You got to protest the right way. And there's never a right way. There's never a right way. And it's, it's that order over justice. And what are we talking about? Order, like, oh, they should be following the law over justice, which is war crimes are inexcusable. And if, if your government and those that are leading you are acquiescing to these war crimes, or in the case of the United States, supporting and funding these war crimes, um, it's your obligation to dissent. And the vote is not enough. The vote is not enough. Um, all right, so Stormstar. Didn't see that name before. Uh, right. Just asking questions about the motivations of the Palestinian, the pro-Palestinian protesters. Okay. Thank you so much, Stormstar. not businesses or private see you see order over justice he's to, he's he's doubling down tripling down order over justice oh someone protect the private business oh no davy did they occupy did they occupy a couple rooms in a university oh no oh no that's just as that's that's just as bad as dropping a bomb on a family over and over and over and over again. Oh my God, Captain. Just asking questions. Uh, here's a follow-up to that. More information about the real men wear diapers story here. Um, here's another. Here's another image that's been going that's been going viral as of late. Uh, this woman here. They're apparently wearing diapers over their clothes. Um. Diapers over Dems. They had this so quickly. They had this, uh, they, they, you know, the Von shits my pants thing. That was like three days ago, four days ago. Yeah, I bet Trump loves this. He, he hates uh, rednecks and hillbillies. That was his one criticism on January 6th, is that all the people that were there to support him were rather uncouth, unwashed hillbillies. Yeah, Trump can't grab him now. <laughs> All right, that's a funny one, Dari. Trapaholics mixtape. Today in court, as witness testimony continued in this hush money trial. Michelle Ross was there and has the latest tonight. Donald Trump back in court Thursday after campaigning in Wisconsin on Wednesday. It was nice to be able to campaign one day without being in this ridiculous show trial, Biden trial, I call it. Judge Juan Bershon holding a second contempt hearing this morning after the former president was accused of violating his gag order an additional four times. He's already been fined $9,000 for nine previous. Yeah, uh, Davin, I did hear that. His violations at $1,000 each. Once the gag order hearing finished, attorney Keith Davidson was... <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Captain. See, he was just an honest actor. Just, just, you know, not trying to start shit. I'm just asking questions, guys. The captain was just trying to ask questions.
didn't you know China's going to be the next superpower? Okay, Captain. Well, I hope you, I hope you were paid well for your time here. <laughs> I hope you were paid well for your time here. Thank you so much, Captain, for letting us know, ex showing, showing everybody why I'm so careful about bad actors, why I'm so hard on people who are just asking questions. As you, just thank you so much for showing everybody why I, why I'm like this. <sighs> yeah, Lenny, he has three more gag offenses to answer for next week. It's unbelievable. He won't shut the hell up. It's back on the stand. Davidson is the sixth witness in this trial and represented Playboy model Karen McDougal and adult film star Stormy Daniels in their deal to receive money in exchange for keeping quiet about their alleged sexual encounters with Trump. Davidson arranged the deals with Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, saying that Cohen was upset over not getting a position in the White House after the 2016 election. Davidson. America has lots of equals. Um, just because it has a big military. I mean, how well has America been able to exert its power across the world and its influence? It's been failing horrifically, barely holding on to the, to the, to the shaky Western alliance. America has no equal. What a joke. Um, so, like I said uh, early... And, you know, maybe we got some conservatives in the in the chat right now that want to double down on this ridiculous idea that the Trump economy was a booming economy. And, oh, remember, remember the economy during Trump? It was so good. And don't we want Trump again? Because the economy, the economy, it's like the first thing that Trump defenders on mainstream media will talk about when they're like, oh, well, yeah, I know he's he said he wanted to be a dictator. And I know he's uh, he's. You know, he's in he's in court for a million different crimes and offenses, but the economy was really good under Trump, and I want that economy again. It's a lie. It's a lie. Yeah, tell that to Ukraine, Davey. Tell that to Ukraine. Tell that to India, who spit in the face of the Western alliance. Happily taking money from Russia or taking oil from Russia. Not worried one bit about the ramifications of that. How about the Taliban? Huh, Davey? Was the Taliban destroyed? Or did the great American empire just make the Taliban more powerful? America has no equal? Not from my perspective. America's barely holding on to this fragile coalition. And if it continues down this path of anti-democratic, hypocritic actions, it will lose its power. It will lose, it will lose this, whatever it has left. America is, of course, powerful. Of course, America is influential. But this idea that it's the greatest, the best... Unequal, uh, unequal, you cannot be challenged. Ludicrous. It can happen here. It absolutely can happen here. Yeah, Ice King, exactly. Might makes right. Seems it seems like it's a good system. Might makes right when you're on the when you're on the might side and you're winning and things are looking good and there's a there's a calm that feels like a peace. Um, there, there is a expiration date on might makes right. So back to what I was saying before. Um, it's a lie. It's a canard. The Trump economy wasn't gangbusters. We weren't making money hand over fist. Headline from the Salon article, don't like this economy? Okay, just wait for Trump and the GOP to ruin it. Yeah, well, Davey, how well did that do against the Taliban, huh, buddy? Wow. All that all that money and all those bases, and we couldn't defeat the fucking Taliban. What does that say? If Iraq was about oil, how come we're not how come where's the where's the American oil companies? Or we you know, we Donald Trump made that made that criticism. We didn't even steal the oil. From Iraq. Uranium the second. 
Vietnam and Afghanistan were about opioids? No, the fuck they weren't. Oh, my God. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Escator. Thank you. If you think, if you think the military-industrial complex spent trillions of dollars for opium, you're fucking not... You're not... You're only paying attention so much. You're wrong. <laughs> Before they took back the country. Good point, Lenny. Alliburton made some money. Thank you, Pucker. Pucker's plugged in, seems like. He's kind of getting what I'm getting at. Um, Start of this article. You're unhappy with this economy? Okay, that's your right. But you should seriously consider whether you want the available alternative. Last November... Are you, you're really, really, Davey? Davey. Pathetic, dude. That's just pathetic, dude. Last November, I wrote that I was, uh, that what I thought was a modest commentary about how Biden economy was doing remarkably well, at least by most standard macroeconomic measures, and much of the corporate media wasn't reporting about it. This is true. It's not, it's, it could be a lot worse it's and and this whole idea that you know the the neoliberals are going to convince you that the economy is really great while your food prices are too high and your oil prices are too high and your wages are stagnant um those things are also true but uh like at walmart uh wall street made a lot of money corporations make a lot of money you know um that does that does offer a bit of stability hello truth seeker Job numbers were historically high, unemployment low, and the U.S. has done the best of all G7 economies in bringing down inflation, inflation resulting from the worst pandemic year. So all these things are true. Does that result in real-world benefits for regular Joes? Unfortunately, no, because that's how rigged the system is. Wall Street's disconnected from Main Street. We all know that. Yeah, woke patriot. I mean, Davey, why do you say that shit? You know, I want to respect you. I know you're intelligent. But then you say some shit like an unwilling country can never be controlled. As Lenny said, we did defeat the Taliban. No, the fuck we didn't. There is no other way to describe the Taliban and Afghanistan as anything other than an abject, total fucking failure. And here you are carrying water. <laughs> you know? Thank you so much, S. Cantor. You've been such a wonderful addition to the chat. Thank you so much for your contributions. Bye bye. <clears throat> I was careful to note that my wife and I and members of our daughter's generation were still feeling economic pain around the cost of food and housing, and that many younger people felt that they could not get their lives started due to high student debt and high housing prices. So, you know, he wrote an article, he said, okay, it's both sides. Not both sides, but there's more to the story than just, hey, the economy's doing great. I got considerable grief from readers for that one, but I stand by what I wrote about the Biden, uh, Biden administration's active economic moves as a renewed focus on industrial policy to accomplish goals that simply cannot be left to, quote unquote, the marketplace. And this is true. This is objectively true. I've reported on it. There's some real dubs coming from the Biden administration um, when it comes to Wall Street, when it comes to the larger economy. Yeah, truth seeker. No, big victory. Leaving infrastructure work to the marketplace is how America wound up with so many embarrassing airports, shaky bridges, and pokey, increasingly dangerous trains. We have reported on the training, the train derailments, all happening at once, seemingly. Uh, there are things that we must do together. As I wrote at the time, Biden's manufacturing plan invests in rural areas and will transform local economies. So he just has a quote from his article, more evidence of fact. The general economic news has not improved since then, including strong job numbers for March and April. As Democratic strategist Simon Rosenberg writes, the U.S. economy typically does much better when a Democrat is in the White House. Fact. Fact, right-wing conservatives. Davey, do you acknowledge this fact, or are you still, or are you are you doing the, the Trump economy was so great canard as well? Are you buying that that lie as well and repeating that lie? That blatant lie that the Trump economy was so, so great? Or do you acknowledge the fact that the economy does better under Democrat? Biden's record for more than 15 million new jobs amounts to eight times as many as were created under the last three Republican presidents combined. 
Do you acknowledge these things, Davey, or are we, are we rejecting reality on this level too? Yeah, isn't that weird, Pucker? Although inflation for consumer goods rose slightly in March, which is not good news for anyone, the Federal Reserve has done a good job in carefully bringing inflation down after the supply chain disruptions and supermarket price hikes of the pandemic. Eh, that's arguable. Good job. Uh, they, they did a good job for Jeff Bezos. Remember the corporate media braying endlessly about the coming recession? Well, it never came. Well, there was a real danger. So it was good that the Fed stepped in to reduce inflation. Because had they not, it would have gone out of control. And, and right, right wingers, you know, Trump, he didn't want to change those, those interest rates. So here we are. The macroeconomic indicators look great, but your household budget uh, may, re may remain a struggle. Gas prices keep rising, but that's largely the result of decisions made in Saudi Arabia and Russia, well beyond the Biden administration's control. Not exactly true. Last time I checked, America is one of the largest oil producing countries in the world, right next to Saudi Arabia. Biden's got no control over this. That's a lie. Um, can he magically make the gas prices go down? No, that's not true either. Are there concrete actions that the White House could be taking to make gas prices lower, going after profiteering, increasing the gas, you know, increasing pulling gas from or oil from our own countries instead of getting it from Saudi Arabia and Russia, by the way? Yes. I don't really think the economy has been particularly great over the last four years, but I don't think it was really anything to write home about under Trump either. Thank you, Dave, for acknowledging reality. I appreciate that. Um, see, he's a mixed bag, folks. He'll frustrate the hell out of you, this guy. Um, blah, blah, blah. Lots of shit about Biden. Anyway. Okay, somewhere in here, there's more evidence of Trump's terrible economy. You get the point. I won't belabor it. If you want the link to this whole article and would like to read it yourself, it's right here. Uh, one second here. You're right back. Yeah, let's have fun. All right, just got to get an update there. See, see what's going on with my family. Where my family's going. Where's my family going? Um, here's a great clip. Uh, I, I set this up at the beginning of the stream, but um, the, the, the conservatives are reaping what they sow and are they're the dog that caught their own tail when it comes to abortion. Turns out Republican women don't like conservative men telling them what to do with their wombs. Shocker. Uh, it's really actually hurting their their politics, their 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 day-to-day -day electoral prospects, their ability to keep their jobs. Kharkiv, Ukraine, so we can watch uh, Shogun on Amazon Prime. Hey, thank you, Truth Seeker, for helping them out as any way you can. I do appreciate that. Congratulations, Truth Seeker. I do appreciate you helping out the Ukrainian military however they can. Been meaning to watch uh, Shogun myself. Let me know what you think of Shogun. Um, Trump really was a continuation of the strong growth built by Obama, then COVID crash things. Um, I mean, we, we see that quite a bit. Republicans coasting off of the success of the of the Democratic, um, you know, the previous Democratic establishment or uh, administration. Um, but I mean, we, I, you know, I remember like the first year of Trump's presidency, you know, there was like, it was like the tax cut was passed and there was, you know, job, there was, there was clear indicators that the economy was not doing great. Um, Shogun's very hit or miss. Oh, that's a shame. But you get the point. You get what I'm saying. This it's don't believe the gaslighters that things were so great under Trump. Because at best, at best, they were nominal. Didn't get, didn't get horrifically worse because Wall Street was happy. Um, certainly didn't get any better. And then COVID hit. COVID definitely confuses things a little bit because I wouldn't, I wouldn't put COVID on the back of Biden. I'm not going to put COVID on the back of Trump. That shit was, you know, an, an anomaly. All right. Anyway, back to abortion, back to Republicans here. Um, they're reaping what they sow. The dog that catches the tail. They... We saw Arizona um, 
pass a law, pass a law that says the law that was made in 1864 before Arizona was a state, apparently. I don't even know what that means when it was just what? A fucking colony of Puritans or something? So way back in 1864, for the fucking Union, um, they they had this law on the books to repeal abortion 100%, and the Republicans drudged it up and said, nope, this is the law of the land. And then I think the Arizona Supreme Court, the right-wing, totally controlled, conservative, activist cons- Supreme Court of Arizona, said, yep, this is the law of the land. Um... Pissed, I mean, talk about, talk about, you know, pissing off. It's so bad that uh, Carrie Lake has had to come out, you know, Mrs. Miss Anti-Abortion, Miss Sanctity of Life. I care so much about the life and life, life, life of kids. Um, Coming out here saying, oh, this is too far. This is too far. So now they've repealed, they've repealed the law. But what we're going to see here is Republicans, you could call them principled in their own twisted way. It's not happening, Davey. Uh, if you go to Reddit, it's filled with people who's, who have been waiting for the crash since the 90s. You know, been waiting for the waiting for the crash since, you know, since decades ago. And are really filled with regret that they didn't buy sooner. Um, I would like to see it. As a homeowner, I would like to see the housing prices go down. Anyway, back to the clip here. Um, so this is the we see we see uh, a right winger still defending in a, in a like I said twisted you know principled way the Republicans willing to uh, destroy their party destroy their politics uh, because they believe in the sanctity of life they they they're true believers abortion no matter what even if you're raped by your dad is a bad thing and even even when you have a dead fetus in your body. You should um, you should be forced to give birth to that because it's a miracle. They're true believers, um, and they're they're legitimately hurting their own party at this point. Oh, super quiet. Of course, the vertical video, super quiet. Uh, but he, this is the vote right here. By your vote, sixteen A's, fourteen nays to repeal the abortion ban from eighteen sixty four. So those enough Republicans got on board to make this happen. That it was, it's mainly Republicans in this in this body. you have passed House Bill twenty six seventy seven, and I am disgusted at the fact that the political propaganda no. in this room, yeah, including from all of you in the media, continues to call this the territorial law, when <laughs> you know full well that that is not the case. Who cares? It's not even the same statutory reference number as the prior territorial law. First, I want to explain that the graphic descriptions of abortion given here today do not bear any resemblance to the vast majority of abortions that are performed in this country. They're being, so she's being shouted down as a liar for saying it because she's, what she's pointing out as a Democrat, she's pointing out that the Republican lie that all abortions are, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, late term abortions, you know, the baby's about to be birthed and the the Democratic pro abortion doctors smashing the baby's head as he's coming out of the mother is, you know, all these all these absolutely horrible edge cases, because when there's late term abortions, it usually has something to do with something being really, really wrong with the fetus, um, even in even in super, you know, pro abortion, California. You can't, you can't go uh, you, in your third trimester, you can't go to the doctor, well, I changed my mind, and now I don't want to have this kid. They're, the state does not pay for that abortion. You don't get that. Only in the extreme cases are there late-term abortions. And Republicans are constantly saying all abortions are like this. The, the worst-case scenarios that you've ever heard of, all abortions are like that. When that is not the case, the grand majority are first and second trimester. Um, which you know, it still it, it still sucks when a woman has to when makes a decision about having a baby because of an economic situation. Um, I would like to correct that. I, I wouldn't, of course, make abortion illegal or anything, but I do. I do. It, it does make me a little sad when when a when a, a person who could be a very good mother has to make that decision because the economics are so terrible. But ultimately, that is her decision. So here she is being shouted down. 
Liar, liar, liar. It's, it's, they're just, they're doubling down, tripling down, quadrupling down. Totally not true. It's, she's not lying. She's 100% being truthful. Their side is the one that's lying. Um, like I said, late term abortions, late, you know, late trimester abortions do not, uh, are, are super edge case. I mean, look it up. Look at the numbers. It's less than 5%. When members are speaking on the floor, there is no outbursts in the gallery, please. So there's the uh, Republican Senate, uh, head of the Senate there, um, telling his right-wing colleagues to stop making fools of everybody. Did I make it? You made it, Trailhead. We're still streaming. Yeah, he really meant it, too. Wow, really passionate, right? Please follow the rules. But they're true believers. You know, some of the, there's, you know, Davey is correct in that there is a old Republican guard that still believes in some kind of process and that there is this rising extreme minority. Um, that dynamic does exist. Um, but the, the, the problem is, is that this guy has to appease the minority Whereas the neoliberals don't seem to really have to. I mean, they 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 pretend to use the language of, of progressivism. Okay, we're we're getting off the rails here. Uh, scratch that. Scratch that. Scratch that train of thought. Okay, now here we go. Here we go. Now we're talking about the commies. I guess the protests, the super communist protests that are they should they did it the wrong way and. How dare they occupy a building? Meanwhile, 90% of residential homes in the Gaza Strip are fucking gone. Oh, we're gonna clutch some pearls over over a over a, 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 a couple rooms in a university being occupied by some by some fucking zoomers. Oh, it smells like vape smoke in here. Oh no. They didn't protest the right way says the right wing they always say you're not doing it the right way you're not i would i would agree with freedom i would agree with protesting but you're just not doing it the right way wanted to start off with this news the pro-israel counter protesters at ucla were organized what okay hold on here were organized by a group funded by billionaire bill ackman and friends including jessica seinfeld yes Jerry Seinfeld's wife. No, not the 16-year-old that he banged in the in the early 90s. Not her, the other one. Um let's see here. Let's just do protests. Did I spell that correctly? Okay, yeah. That counter protest was BS. I bet they get away with it too. Well, it, it only it only perfectly aligns up with the with the oligarch and the the police state and the the United States' narrative. So, and I, I have examples of the mainstream media framing it exactly the way that the that the um, anti-protest, anti-democratic movement wants it to be framed. Um. Jessica Seinfeld and Bill Ackman fund pro-Israel counter protests uh, <laughs> counter protests at campuses sorry it's something in my throat this is this is jessica seinfeld cookbook author and wife of comedian jerry seinfeld is funding a pro-israel counter protest at ucla where violence broke out tuesday night after a mob attacked demonstrators inside a pro-palestinian encampment davy could you do me a favor be honest with us because you're, you're you're an honest guy so could you do me a favor and be honest with me and and tell me what you would say if the shoe were on the other foot if there was evidence that the pro palestinian protests were being funded by hamas or you know qatari iranian maybe connected oligarchs but you know rich folks you know pro, you know pro terrorist rich folks supporting pro palestine what would you have to say about that 
A GoFundMe for the effort, which Seinfeld promoted in an Instagram story this week after contributing at least 5000 What? That's it? That's it? No por- posters that have a picture of Ackman. They're at Bill Ackman fucks poodles. Jesus Christ. Is that it? 5000 Come on. Has since made the majority... Oh, okay. Jesus, I should probably read the article. Has made the majority of its donations anonymous. The fundraising page has raised more than 93000 as of Wednesday and also changed its organizer name and description since launching over the weekend. Oh, interesting. Americans funding an American protest is fine with me. Yeah, that's a good point, Davin. Um, so... I would definitely not be okay with our enemies funding protests in our country. But I guess that is a good point. This is Americans funding America. Regardless of whether you agree with them or not. Um, okay, well, that's a good point. Davin makes a good point. Because uh, I, I don't necessarily disagree with Americans funding American protests either. It's fair. It... It does show it does show that there is a wealthy elite that is interested in defending Israel regardless of uh, how horrific the actions of Israel gets. It is it does show that. Uh, but that is a good point that you know because if uh, my, my example is not apples to apples because I'm talking about foreign entities paying for protesters in the United States. But no, these are Americans who are funding American protests. All right, that's a good point. Um, all right, all right. I got plenty more. I got plenty more. Um, this was posted, I think, by someone in the Discord. Please let yourself be known. Um, I think this might have been Woke Patriot. Um, 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 um. Uh, Israel, Israeli pro boxer identified as assailant intimidating UCLA protesters. So... We have video of this guy, unlike Davey, who apparently has seen lots of pro-Palestinian goons attacking people, but was not able to provide a single link. I'm going to keep harping on that until I get my link, Davey, because I want to show it. Um, but uh, Mr. Mr. Sexy Britches, who needs who needs a better face cleaning routine, you can't do anything about it. It's hormones. Um, there's footage of him. Throwing bones and, 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 you know, and uh, getting up in people's faces, spitting on people, spitting on people. Surely Davey would agree that spitting on people is assault. I don't, you know, I don't think he would disagree with that. Davey, Davey is not denying that the counter protesters were violent. I guess Davey was just trying to throw in uh, both sides argument about pro-Palestinians. The violence is pretty one-sided. I have not seen a single clip of pro-Palestinians instigating violence. I've only seen pro-Palestinian protesters defending themselves. If you want to read the article, it's right here. There's video of him being aggressive, spitting on people. Calls himself the Lion of Zion, was seen hurling racial slurs and spitting at pro-Palestinian demonstrators. Doing the, during the UCLA protests on Sunday. Yeah, homie, homie should be. Yeah, uh, yeah, they need him over there. Can we also talk about how he's doing the 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 arm thing, guys? You know what I'm talking about, right? Where you you put your you put your arm underneath your you know you want to look tough, right? But you put your 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 hand underneath your bicep. You stick the bicep out, right? We all know, or you know what I'm talking about. Mr. Sexy over here. No, he's he's obviously fit. He's obviously cut. Doesn't really give him an excuse to defend ethnic cleansing. He's doing some duck lips too, yeah. Well, you know. Sexy is as sexy does. Um wanted to show this clip here, you know, Biden, you know, we saw this with Obama during Occupy and, and you know, I'm sure Davey was totally on board for it. Yeah, great crackdown, great job police state taking care of those hippies at occupy am i wrong davy you, you said you were 16 years old you were you were mad you were you were sad at, at fucking mitt romney losing i can assume should i assume what side you were on during occupy all right we got to stop picking on davy we're done we're done picking on davy today you just you you say such 
outrageous things. Okay, Davey, you say outrageous things. Not in a good way. But we saw this during Occupy, Barack Obama's full embrasure of the police state that was put in place during 9-11, during the Bush era. We saw, of course, Barack Obama making um, those temporary emergency laws, uh, making them permanent. Of course, the tax cuts making those permanent, but also the, the temporary powers that were given to the, to the state to spy, uh, to, to, you know, to enhance, enhance our law enforcement, to give them more ability to infringe on our rights. I saw a video just yesterday of a guy getting completely surrounded by like 10 people, all extreme bright flashes shining directly in the guy's eyes and saying he's going to regret trying anything. Are you? Okay. So I've seen video of pro-Israeli protesters kicking the shit out of somebody. He was desperately trying to defend himself and the barricade. He, he, he was knocked to the ground and then pro-Israeli people were kicking the shit out of him. Do you have an equivalent, Davey? You just told me they were flashing flashlights at him and then telling him he's going to regret making violent decisions. Not exactly the same fucking thing. Oh, we could be blinded. We don't know the medical state that that guy was in who was getting the shit kicked out of him. He's in the fucking hospital, maybe. maybe. I don't know. So I got I got video of real blood being spilled. You got videos of people with flashlights. Are you trying to make my point for me? Oh wow. Wow. Did he have to close his eyes? That's equivalent. That's the same thing. That's the same thing as kicking the shit out of somebody. Car turned down the alley in front of me where a crowd president was standing on the dash. There was a car of beer, bear mace, and the license plate hosted, We the people, this was an accident. Driver accelerated towards the protesters' police before exiting with a can of mace, fleeing the car, and spraying people in the way. So is this supposed to be a pro Palestinian? Or is this what? Pro Israeli? What's, her, what's she carrying? Fucking idiot, he's got the bear spray. Wait, was is this? Oh, we the people. Oh, I see. Gee, okay. That the protesters fucked his car up. <laughs> uh infantada there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we're about to get. Free Gaza. Okay. Okay. So this is this is the this is same thing then. Uh we're going to we're really going to provide this as evidence. The guy the guy runs his car, almost runs his car into a crowd, antagonizes everybody with bear na bear mace like a pretend badass. Look at this goofy son of a bitch. At least hey, you know, props to him. He didn't run anybody down. He made the right decision. He didn't commit murder. <laughs> yo, yo, 40 year old with the kick in the butt. Well, he, you know, he kept going, Davey. Stopped right here. No, he almost went into the crowd. Hey, get away from the car. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> so this guy gets bear mace. That's why he's kicking him. Okay. So because of this, it's okay to it's okay to violently assault this <laughs> I love it. I love the guilt by association. I love it. Well, this this look what they did to his car, man. Look. They're just as they're just as guilty. They're just as guilty, guys. As the as the guy covered in blood like putting his fists up same thing. 
same thing um i mean do do i think the do i think the crowd should have avoided doing this to the to the car yes but th once again this this idea that a, a protest movement has to be responsible for every single individual action of the protester of, of, of every of every protester who says that they're supportive of it it's a really it's a really dangerous and stupid path to go down because all you need to do is show up in the colors of the other side and break a window right spray paint free gaza whether you believe it or not and then that's it that's the that's the end of the legitimacy of the protest movement Um, I don't like it. It's ugly. I don't like this. At the same time, I prefer this over stomping the shit out of somebody. Over cracking people's heads. If I if I got a choice between property damage and people getting hurt, physically hurt. Um, but yeah, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say he was his intention was to kill people because he made the right decision. He was like, I think he was driving forward because he was a little scared, right? So he bare maces a little bit. Should have hit it in reverse, buddy. You should have put it in reverse. I think he was a little scared, but I don't think his intention was to murder people because he makes the right decision. Second bare mace, this bare mace, by the way, makes the right decision to flee. So that's the right decision. We're not going to both sides this. People, people defending themselves, um, is not is not the same as, uh, you know, I guess getting getting some money from Jerry Seinfeld's wife, uh, buying like purge masks and showing up to pe to a peaceful protest to crack some heads. Biden, of course, uh, happy happy to uh take advantage of the situation to to lie to the american public about the situation uh he knows full well the the pro-palestinian protesters were not there to hurt anybody they're occupying terror they're occupying some property they're not hurting anybody um, and you know, a grand, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you can find some evidence of some of these pro-Palestinian people shouting some, you know, pretty nasty stuff, but a grand majority, my observation is that a grand majority of these people are not shouting anti-Semitic slurs. There's a lot of Jewish people that are amongst these people, uh, in the free Palestine movement. And, you know, they would be, they would be horrified to hear that kind of anti-Semitism. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. But it's not, you know, it's not like this, this, this is not a movement um, fueled by anti-Semitism and fueled by hatred. It is the exact opposite. It is a movement fueled by a desire to see the killing stop. Well, Davey, that's a real shame you can't find the video, bud. Real shame. Uh, but even it, I, I'll take your I'll take your word at face value that it was a bunch of I'll take your word I'll take your word for that you saw it I trust you on that level. Um, are you trying to say that was as bad as uh, the the counter protesters who were violently kicking the shit out of people, firing fireworks, hoping to start probably hoping to start a fire? Are are you you're you're trying to compare your flashlight video to physical violence? Yeah, I'll take your word for it. But are you are you really trying to both sides and that's your example? That pathetic example, that's your example of both sides? The protesters started it. How so? Very seeds. Before I ban you, how so? Watch this clip from Joe Biden. Clear. Peaceful protest in America. Violent protest is not protected. Okay. It wasn't violent, in the least. 
peaceful protest is. It's against the law when violence occurs. Destroying property is not a peaceful protest. It's against the law. Van do, we, do we believe? Do we believe that the this crackdown wouldn't be happening if if property wasn't destroyed? But that's the thing, right? You see, you see how it benefits. You see how that property destruction benefits the bad actors, benefits the empire, benefits the oligarchy. You know what's interesting? When there's a left wing protest that does a, that is really disciplined and does a really good job of not destroying property, the right wing provocateurs get in there and start breaking property because it's 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 the most effective way to um, delegitimize a protest movement. They were blocking Jewish students from entering the school and manhandling them, et cetera, battery, a form of violence. So they, were blocking an, they were blocking a single entrance. Students were allowed to enter from other entrances in that building. And uh, manhandling them. Yeah. Thank you, Barry. And I just don't have time for every bad actor. You know, were they were they using their physical bodies to prevent the students from getting in there? Were were pro-Israeli protesters walking up to these people, trying to you know physically get around them? Yes, Have, we've seen we've seen pro-Israeli protesters intentionally walking against the the crowd of pro pro pro-Palestinian protesters. So we're, 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 I'm sure there's video of of Israeli stu of pro-Israeli students trying to get past the physical bodies. Were they being manhandled and battered? No, of course not. Show me the video, because there isn't one. You know why? I, you know why I feel confident saying that? Because a grand majority of the people that are pro-Palestine that are there are there for peace. Are not are there against violence? They don't want to. They don't want to commit violence on people, and they don't want to have violence committed on them. And the right wing and the left wing, who who are happy to take all that money from the Israeli lobby, I guess, want it to be the other way around. They want it desperately. Oh, they're, they're a roving mob that were about to burn the school down, and the property damage helps that argument. Vandalism, trespassing, breaking windows, shutting down campuses, forcing the cancellation of classes and graduations. None of this is a peaceful protest. Threatening people, intimidating people, instilling fear in people is not a peaceful protest. Intimidating people? Threatening people? What? Is there any evidence of that whatsoever? It's against the law. Dissent is essential to democracy. But dissent must never lead to disorder or to denying the rights of others so students can finish the semester. Thank you, Dave, for education. making that statement. Look, it's basically a matter of fairness. It's a matter of what's right. There's the right to protest, but not the right to cause chaos. Yeah, that's the narrative, though, right? Um, it's so outlandish that The View disagrees, that The New York Times disagrees with Biden. It's so outlandish, but he's happy to go. That's he's happy to go along with the narrative, because this needs to be bottled up quick. Every day this is happening, this is hurting his elect, elect electoral prospects, Joe Biden. That's why we're seeing the crackdown as hard as as hard as we're seeing it, and we're seeing Joe Biden get right behind the narrative. Violent, intimidating, cause the cause the. Uh, college to 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 cancel its graduation. You know what caused the college to cancel its graduation? The incredible, massive overreaction from law enforcement and, of course, these violent mobs. College could have had its graduation, right? They they would have had their graduation to the sound of protests. Oh, we can't have that. Clutch, clutch some pearls. Oh, you're protesting the wrong way. You're disrupting our graduation. Oh, you got to protest the right way. There's, there's, there's a right way to protest for human rights. And I'll be sure to tell you, it, uh, every step of the way, I'll tell you what you're doing wrong. Of course, I'm not going to participate. Thank you, Woke Patriot, for this link here. Um, 
New York Times article. Let's see if they've changed the headline. So the headline telling the truth, how counter protesters at UCLA provoked violence unchecked for hours. Wow, the truth. Let's see if they've changed it. Let's hit refresh. They have not changed it. Wow. New York Times used videos filmed by journalists, witnesses, and protesters to analyze hours of clashes and a delayed police response at a pro-Palestinian encampment on Tuesday. So this is kind of one of those, they did this during January 6th as well, like, you know, kind of like an interactive kind of thing here. You know, they hired somebody who knows what he's doing with HTML. On Tuesday night, violence erupted at the encampment that pro-Palestinian prisoners had set up on April 25th. So you're so you know they're saying oh they, they, these pro Palestinians they, they they couldn't do a graduation guys there's no other place to do a graduation there's just no other place on this massive sprawling fucking compound to do they the, the pro Palestinians hate people they just hate people they hate they hate school they hate graduation we had no choice the clashes began after after Davy after. Counter protesters tried to dismantle the encampment's barricade. Pro Palestinian protesters rushed to rebuild it, and violence ensued. Police arrived hours later, but they did not intervene immediately. The New York Times examination of more than 100 videos from clashes at the University of California, Los Angeles, I guess they just couldn't find that flashlight video, found that, okay, I'm done. I'm done, Davey. I'm done. You've been a really good sport. Thank you for sticking around. I'm done picking on you. So you read you read through this and you're still doubling. You still the first comment you make is though there were pro-Palestinian thugs too. You're irredeemable. You're incorrigible. And and quite frankly, your feelings over facts, homie. <laughs> found that violence ebbed and flowed for nearly five hours, mostly with little to no police intervention. The violence has been instigated by dozens of people who are seen in videos counter-protesting the encampment. So Davey read that, and the first comment was, oh, I've seen lots of evidence of pro-Palestinian goons too, guys. Just, I'm gonna, I, I, I keep saying, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stop picking on you, man, but you keep saying absurd things. <clears throat> Let me see here, hold on. The video showed counter protesters attacking students in the pro Palestinian encampment for several hours, including beating them with sticks, using chemical sprays, and launching fireworks as weapons. We have video of all that. As of Friday, no arrests have been made in connection with the attack. Pretty good. Cool. To build a timeline of the events that night, the Times analyzed two live streams along with social media videos captured by journalists and witnesses. Interesting that legitimate journalism is now depending on independent journalism to provide information to people. Because shouldn't CNN have been there? Where's Tapper Jake? Where's Tapper Jake? The melee began when a group of counter protesters started tearing away metal barriers. So the melee began. You mean the melee didn't begin after the uh, pro-Palestinian protesters were shouting anti-Semitic slogans at everyone that was walking by, according to Tucker Carlson, you know, fill in the blank? That had been in place to cordon off pro-Palestinian protesters. Hours earlier, UCLA officials had declared the encampment illegal. Security personnel hired by the university are seen in yellow vests standing to the side throughout the incident. I mean, I, once again, I say this, I don't really blame the security guards for not you know what are they getting paid 15 dollars an hour you know they're not here for this shit they're here to make sure you, you're not smoking on the quad they're not here to quell a riot so i don't really blame the uh security guards for not doing anything i do of course blame the cops a university spokesperson declined to comment on the security staff's response oh here here are those flashlights oh man It's not clear how the counter protest was organized or what allegiances people committing the violence had. Oh, yeah, it's not clear. Here's the New York Times. I, I knew it had to be in here somewhere. 
Um, that's not true. We have information that it was funded by Jerry Seinfeld's wife. And these motherfuckers were wearing Israeli flags as capes. It's just not clear. It's just not clear, guys. The videos show many of the counter protesters were wearing pro Israeli, pro Israel slogans on their clothing. Oh. Oh. We're going to admit that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, New York Times. Um, okay. There it is. Some counter protesters blared music, including Israel's national anthem, a Hebrew children's song, and Harbru Darbru, an Israeli song about the Israeli Defense Forces campaign in Gaza. If I remember correctly, it's not just a song about the IDF's campaign in Gaza. It's a it's a boppy pop song about the destruction of the Palestinians in Gaza and how awesome that is. But uh, you know, allegiances of people committing violence. They're not sure. It's not clear who the allegiance is. Come on, New York Times. This is this is why people who pay attention they don't they throw that New York Times right in the trash. It's a joke. It's not the paper of record. It's not clear. We've organized, we, we watched all these videos and it's not clear where the allegiances lie. Just pathetic, man. And then, and then they just completely, you know, they just completely uh, undermine their own, their own statement right here. You know, the entire paragraph undermined the, the undermining the first sentence. Jewish man was blocked, eventually got a police escort through an encampment. Interesting, Davin. Um, Should we film? Okay. All right. I will show this out of fairness, but honestly, should, shouldn't we be wary of people who are performing fear? Who are, who are pretending, oh, yeah. who are, who are pretending to be victims? See what I mean? Walking, walking into them, walking up to people. I'm I'm doing nothing. I'm hurting nobody. Don't. And then you know, if they're if they're pushed back on, if they're pushed back on. Oh, I'm the victim. Oh, you hurt me. Oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. The cops called them out because that's what they are. They're being incredibly provocative, and they're performing fear. It's a performance. Oh, I'm so victimized. I'm so victim. I'm just a victim. I'm the victim here. Stop. Stop. Stop touching me as I'm walking towards you, as I'm, I'm trying to put my body as close to you as possible. Stop. Provo stop provoking me. By the way, this guy, I believe, so is this the, is this blocking the entrance? Is this the, is this one of those videos? Could have, could have walked around to a different entrance. That building where the entrance was 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 being blocked, there were other entrances that were wide open. <laughs> I can try, okay? But I don't understand what the purpose would be, because I think you know where we're going to let you and do we want that? Respectfully, I am not the problem. If there's violence, I, wait, let me finish. <laughs> if there's if there's if, <laughs> if there's violence against me because I'm because prov I'm provoking them, it's their fault. I am practicing my First Amendment rights. Wait, let me. No, please, let me. no, no, you're not. It's not your First Amendment right to walk against a crowd. It's not your First Amendment right to perform fear. It's it's. There's a word for this. Um. <laughs> um. <sighs> provocateur. Thank you. Thank you, brain. But this person is what's called a provocateur. A person who is performing fear for the benefit of a political narrative. This is what provocateuring looks like. I, I walked I walked down the streets of Compton with I hate N-words on my on my shirt and I got beat up. Oh. I was just expressing my First Amendment right, minding my own business, walking through Compton with my I hate N-word shirt, and they beat me up. Evil Empire, laughing all the way to the back. 
Let's show it. Let's be fair. Flash flashlights. Oh, adult content. All right. Well, let me let me let me watch this first. Let me make sure this isn't oh, just 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 disgusting. Watch this. <laughs> it's being beaten. Uh, okay, I see what you're doing here, strategy member. With a stick and punches in the middle of the lawn. Hey, 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 don't do that. Don't do that, dude. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody is being badly beaten at the. Okay, so here are the. <laughs> here are the. This looks like pro-Israeli uh, protesters cracking the head of uh, pro-Palestinian protesters through here. The, uh, quad. Look at this, somebody is being beaten. Somebody is being beaten with a stick and punches in the middle of the lawn. Davey, Davey, if, if you are walking against a crowd or if you are, if you are walking into a bunch of people that are, that are locked chains, you don't, you don't have the right to, to claim victim. Davey. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't put yourself in direct, in, 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 you know, in direct opposition physically and then get butt hurt if you get touched. <laughs> Davey, come into the defense of provocateurs, man. It just never ends, man. It just never fucking ends. Somebody is being badly beaten at the bottom of that brawl right there. Just to be clear, that is a mob of pro-Israeli protesters beating the shit out of a pro-Palestinian uh, who was who was who was not. You know, he's trying to defend the barricade. He's not out there swinging and you know, I hate Jews, I hate Jews, and fueled by hatred. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Somebody is being dragged and beaten in the front of that, pl that, that plywood wall. Just incredible. Like, where are the police? Where is security? Where are these people? Just, where are, where is authority here? That is not the same thing, Davey. A, pro a, a provocateur intentionally putting themselves in, in in a physical confrontation with somebody is not is not the same <laughs> is not the fucking same as a woman who does not deserve to get raped wow dude is there any is there any shame do you have shame what a sh how shameful that you would that you would make that comparison A, a, a person walking, physically walking into a crowd that where they could easily walk around. They could go. There's some other way to go. It's not their First Amendment right to to phys to use their body, um, and then and then claim the victim and then claim the victim. That's not a First Amendment right. something I have never covered without any sign of enforcement, law enforcement, security whatsoever. This has gone now on for over an hour and a half, and it is absolutely appalling, in my estimation, that we have not seen any response. Yeah, but both sides. I, I saw a video on social media where this stuff, bad stuff happened, so same thing. I've just never seen it. <laughs> You know, this may be a sign of things to come, or this may be what, uh, you know, society has become, but I have never seen it. In my career, I have never seen this level of violence without any response from any kind of law enforcement or authority. Yeah, I mean, you know, being disrupted does not give you a extra judicial right to, to provocateur. You know, if you're, if you're, you know, so that, that Jewish person's, you know, day has been disrupted. They want to use this entrance. That doesn't give them the right to uh, use, to, to use their body, to, to instigate some kind of, um, 
you know, situation to, es to, es to hope, hopefully hope for an escalation, that doesn't give you that right. If you're, if you're, if you were inconvenienced, if you were disrupted, um, temporarily. Now there, there would be an argument for that if those students were preventing that Jewish person from entering that school ever. Never, like they were just indefinitely somehow successfully locked down that school. That's a different situation. Yeah, no, Davey, yeah. If, if you see a group of people that disagree with you and you intentionally walk in, you, you, you intentionally try to walk in and, and, and get as much attention and you're, you're pushing against people, No, he, provocateuring is violence. That's exactly what he's doing. He wants violence perpetuated against him so he can justify more violence against them. Against him so they can violence against them. His intent was absolutely to provoke violence. That's what he's doing. Him, him being disrupted, him having his day ruined because he can't use his favorite entrance doesn't give him the right to instigate aggression. Does not give him the extrajudicial right to provoke and be a provocateur. Whatsoever. I, oh, I, I, look at that. Somebody I paid just my tuition. A, I have a right to be here. That doesn't give you head. a right to... Oh. Certainly doesn't give you a right to do this shit. But it doesn't give you a right to you be know, a provocateur. You're right. the, the, the ply board, the, the, the plywood, excuse me, the boards of plywood are moving up. They've been dislodged from that makeshift wall where they were set up with tripods almost. And now you can see them move manually being moved up into the crowd of counter protesters and you're seeing these scuffles break out one after another uh lots of very heavy sticks very heavy barricades so this this guy i've seen a lot of footage of this guy he's he is the one with the bloody hand um openly swinging openly you know crying trying to trying to trying to hurt people um shocked that he wasn't arrested absolutely shocked scooters all types of things being employed to inflict harm on the so we see a pro-palestinian here desperately trying to get the crowd back the uh on the other side here no i don't think that's true ice king i do think these these guys will be eventually arrested eventually tracked down it'll be quiet you know we'll we'll you know there'll be a little blurb I do think they will eventually be arrested. Doesn't seem to be a big hurry, though. So you get it. it the, the gaslighters, you know, the gaslighters, there's no amount of evidence that can to convince the Davies of the world that this was um, one sided. And it was. It was. It was not instigated. They didn't deserve this, they didn't have it coming. They're not anti-Semitic. This isn't a hate uh, protest against Jews. But there's no amount of evidence that will convince the Davies of the world because they have an agenda. It's feelings over facts. Right up in there, right up in there. Thank M Gutter. Thank you for that follow. This guy, he put his body on the line for for Palestine for these protesters, and he paid the price. That one guy got cracked in the head with a two by four. Right there, hat got knocked off. Yeah, this guy needs to go to jail big time. Thank you, Davey, for acknowledging that this is this is bad. The cops finally arrive at 1.45 a.m. Hours later. USA, USA. God, what a joke. 
Of course, the pro-Israeli people would be chanting USA, USA, the fascist chant of choice. Not that pro-Israeli people are fascist. Probably shouldn't have used that word, but I just noticed that whenever there's um, something despicable happening, the USA, USA chant isn't far behind. Can't remember the last time I heard the USA, USA chant uh, happening because um, something progressive or good was happening. Thank you, Davey. Wow, that is quite a series of opinions there. Wow, we got Mr. Kung Fu over here. I kicking it. Fuck all you all, and fuck you all. Oh, so here's here's what it looked like when the cops arrived at 3.30. At 3.30, they finally got in between the, the, the mob, the pro-Israeli mob, and the protesters, the peaceful protesters. You hear that chant at every Trump rally, every single one. Breaking news, um, a, a, a self-hating Jew here, Annalise Orlek, head of the Jewish studies of Dartmouth, has been banned from campus for six months after protecting, uh, after protecting Jewish students protesting for Palestine from police attacks. You know, and, and, and there's every one of these pro-Palestinian protests, there's Jewish people there that are that are saying not in my name not under not uh, you know in my you know not justified because none of this is justified because of my religion none of this i'm here for people i'm here for humanity yes i'm jewish but that doesn't matter i see war crimes i disagree with them so this whole idea that you know the majority of these protesters are anti-semitic and they're shouting anti-semitic slurs and they're making jewish people feel uncomfortable if a person feels uncomfortable because they're being challenged with their support of ethnic cleansing, is that racism? Is that, you know, hating somebody because of their religion? Because you made somebody uncomfortable pointing out that, oh, you know, your unquestionable support of Israel, you know, means that you're also supporting the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians. Why would you say something so anti-Semitic? Cool with the anti-Semitic remarks. So that's I think that's what's happening is that Jewish the things that are being shouted at Jewish people uh, pro-Israeli people is hey you know you're supporting an ethnic cleansing you're they of course are saying genocide inaccurate but I think that's what's happening is that people who support this ethnic cleansing are being challenged and are being pushed back on and they're like this is uncomfortable this is anti-Semitism, full-blown. What a crisis. I almost felt bad for supporting Israel and its actions. How dare you? So this hero here, banned from campus for six months for daring to help protect Jewish students from protesting for Palestine. Yeah, woke patriot. Well, I mean, you know, one one side can get away with rampant amounts of disinformation because as we've seen in the chat, there's no amount of counter evidence to change their mind and they're all too happy to believe outrageous things and make up lies apparently. Still haven't seen the flashlight video. University of Mississippi abhorrent counter protesters condemned. Um, well, they changed the headline on this one. The headline was different. It was, uh, yeah, they, uh, it was calling out the, 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 the headline was calling out. Let me see if I have it on my discord here, actually, cause I made a comment on it. So they've, they've already changed this headline to be more ambiguous, to be less specific. Let's see if I can find it in, in the discord here. Yeah. 
So the headline used to be, oh no, it, it's updated in Discord too because that's how the internet works. Son of a bitch. So the headline w was mentioning that there was one one guy making uh, anti anti uh, r or making racist statements towards these black women. Um, they're they're being called out. Av only you know after after of course the right wing made all their tweets all their social media comments about how this was a great thing and look at these Americans standing up. Well, then they got video, of, I think it was this guy, this howling monkey, making straight up monkey noises at black women. Let's see if I can get the uh, article here. Just really disgusting stuff though. Largely white male group taunts pro-Palestinian protesters on campus and one man makes racist gesture towards black woman. And yeah, they they look they're exactly they're exactly what what you know idiot um offspring of the rich of of the you know of the well to do, the petite bourgeois as the commies call it, you know, the middle the middle managers, the you know, they got a couple million in assets and, you know, they got a good job that pays them over a hundred thousand a year so they can afford to send their shitty kid to a shitty school. But they're exactly what you expect them to look like. Dozens of students at the University of Mississippi gathered this week to protest against Israel's war in Gaza and to call for the state's flagship university be, to be transparent in its potential dealings with Israel. Not really a, you know, Hardcore, yeah, like a Norman Rockwell painting, yeah. Actually, Ice King, very, very great observation. But not exactly an earth-shattering request, you know. Not exactly, not exactly a difficult request to, to fulfill. Be more transparent. Not even, not even saying stop, but just let us know how you're supporting Israel. Totally outrageous suggestion. There were hundreds of counter protests in contrast to the few dozen pro-Palestinian protesters. So they were totally overwhelmed in Mississippi, go figure. The scene evoked memories of the resistance of the civil rights struggle in the US South, uh, the US South six decades earlier. Kind of true, kind of true. It was overwhelming, pro-white, anti-MLK, and a, and a small, strong min minority standing up to that. Guess who won? Guess who won because of disrupting the public? Oh, did they protest the wrong way as well? Got some tips for them. The counter protesters included individuals waving American flags and Trump flags. At one point, they sang the American national anthem, drowning out the pro Palestinian group's chants. How appropriate. The Oxford Eagle reported that one person held a come and take it flag while another flew a don't tread on me banner completely lacking all irony uh, the pro-Palestinian students held signs reading Jesus was a Palestinian stop the genocide and cut all ties with Israel well will someone please stop the rampant anti-Semitism affecting our college universities across the nation Jesus was the Palestinian my god is there no shame Less than an hour after the protest began, police disbanded it. Oh, it's a, it's a tiny little protest. Police had to disband it. Notably after counter-protesters threw items. I see. Wasn't that cute? Counter-protesters uh, threw items. And, so, Davey, was this, was this free speech? Full-blown provocateur, uh, provo you know, provoking? At the pro-Palestinian group, police uh, safely evacuated the pro-Palestinian students as the largely male group of counter-protesters chanted, na 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 na, hey hey, goodbye. Hopefully they'll be chanting that uh, in reference to democracy when these disgusting human beings get what they want and they get their orange dictator who wears diapers. My God, they, they look exactly like you'd expect them to. to. 
very brave individuals here who were protesting against this. They had to. They had to have known that this is what the reaction was going to be. Here's here's a look at what this disgusting anti-Semitic um, pro-Hamas protest looked like. Pro-violence, provoca pr provoking these innocent Americans. My God. Mika Brzezinski was right. This is a crisis. Moving on to my next clip. A little bit of video here. Pro-Palestinian encamp encampment continues at the University of Toronto. It's day two of the pro-Palestinian encampment here at King's College Circle. And her mic is And the demonstrators I spoke to today tell me they have... Okay, good. The video that she cuts to is not mixed in that horrific way. Mono kind of went out with the record player, okay? Audio specialists at the news. I think it was some guy just plugged the mic into the left. There's like a, <laughs> who knows? Who knows how it happened? Oh, did you see that? Did you see that violence? Hold on, let's, re let's rewind that. Hold on. My God, that pro-Palestinian protester completely violated that person's free speech rights. I can see where the police got involved. It was a rainy day, too, at the pro-Palestinian encampments, but the demonstrators weren't concerned. I'm not bothered by the rain yeah, right strategy. now, and that's why I did buy the ponchos. It, it, the, honestly, this rain is nothing compared to what people in Gaza are facing right now. Jake says while 100%. he believes the university was wrong to threaten to shut down the encampment last night, he's glad they didn't pull through amid the initial 10 p.m. deadline. Faculty members are among those ensuring that students are so being found as they demonstrate. We just had Shabbat um, here on the, on, at the camp, uh, so there's been Shameful. really beautiful stuff happening. But of Shameful. course, people were anxious that it might all be. Um, member of, of Jewish faculty member. I don't get it. How could how could a group of such virulent, hateful anti-Jews? How could how could how could a person? That is Jewish. Hang out with them. Don't they? Don't they? Don't they sling anti-Semitic slurs at every opportunity, making the Jewish students at the campus feel uncomfortable? Into something else, which we've seen on American campuses. Um, even just this morning, we wow. saw the camera out of focus, microphone. You're running a micro left channel only microphone. City News. Um, are you hiring? NYU campus raided and, and dismember, dismantled and people arrested. Deb says the demonstration today has remained pretty calm and peaceful and is grateful the University of Toronto is committed to having some dialogue with the students. Encampment organizers say they're keeping busy through scheduling prayers and holding movie screenings. This as they continue to communicate Disgusting. with university officials who are addressing their growing... Probably Hitler speeches, right? You know, I saw a video on, uh, on social media. This is pro-Palestinians watching Hitler. I can't find it, but concerns over safety on campus. While university officials say I can't. Okay, fix your mic. My God, City News. Okay, on to the next video here. Um, New York police are especially authoritarian and are especially eager to uh, go above and beyond when it comes to cracking heads. There's kind of a there's kind of a um, uh, you know uh, cracking heads culture in the NYPD. And, uh, you know, all too often we see, we see them eagerly, eagerly um, contribute to, uh, to, the vi to violence against people. Saw it in Occupy. It was an incredible, incredible uh, display of violence by the police in Occupy. Um, you know, during Rudy Giuliani's reign with the stop and frisk, they were all too happy to target, you know, black and minority people um, constantly. Not a single bust on, on Wall Street for Coke or amphetamines of any kind, but uh, lots of black people getting locked up for, for weed and other, and other offenses, you know, from just, from just existing, just walking by. Uh, NYPD all too happy to do that. Eric Adams is supposedly a Democrat. Supposedly Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, is supposedly some kind of left winger. Um, I've never seen that. I've never seen that. Eric Adams seems like a, like a bog standard Nixonian conservative, uh, right in line with Obama. 
It's a legal observer. You have to pay back more. So back up, I said. You back up. You back up. You understand that? Do you understand that? I have a job. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Make a five minute video. Almost certain it was posted by Vice Grad. I tried to search with translation. I passed that. It was real, though. Davey, I believe you. Um, what I don't believe is that you're stupid enough to think that it somehow helps your argument, that it somehow backs up your argument. Remember, your first comment was. Oh, I saw Palestinian violence, and I saw goons, Palestinian goons committing violence. You have not provided a single bit of evidence. And your description of this evidence backs my argument up. I just have to shake my head, man. You're smarter than this. You're better than this right-wing shit. And you just gobble it up, man. I don't get it. We have a job too. We have a job too. All right, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I kind of agree. I kind of. I hate to. I hate to do this, but I kind of agree with the cop a little bit here. Look, if they tell you to back up at a certain, you know, as long as it's not, hey, back up to the fucking New Jersey, you know, get the hell back six miles. Observers have a right to observe, right? But the police do have a right to set up a perimeter. You have to buy back more. So back up, I said. He was tased. He was tased? Yep. So, can I hey, man. Did they tase you? Yeah, I've got my hair to the ground. Tased me. Shit, dude. There's, there's so many people here. I don't press. There's so many. Okay, can I back up? Oh, you gotta go over there. Or go down there. You got legal observers here. There's people, I understand, but this is a frozen area. You either have to be over there or around the corner over there. Okay, I can stand with the uh, people here. Stand with the sidewalk. I'm not a stupid. But you don't live there, so you have to go either that. No, there's a whole press thing down there. All the press is down there. I know. But... Yeah, you see, that's that's what I disagree with, right? Oh, go to the press corral. Way, way away from any anything that's any interesting thing that's happening. Way, way away. Go to the go to the corral where where Tucker where where uh, Tapper Jake and and uh, and Aaron Burnett are happy to sit like good little like good little stenographers. Go over there where nothing industri- interesting is happening. I don't know. That's you got to be done. You've been here long enough. You got to. You're not even supposed to be here. Old. I mean, there's nothing. Right? Right. If they come pull the rope, you're here. Whatever, slick. Look. Um. At a certain point, you do have to you do have to just acquiesce and accept that you're uh, arrested. Um, I don't I don't really understand how like. Um, I mean, there's really no other way to handle it. I guess uh, the, they have to be physically separated. I don't know. Couldn't you just walk them into the paddy van? You know, you don't really need to do this. But it does frustrate me when you're obviously under arrest. They obviously have you in custody. And you're still resisting. Um, but I do, I, I guess I, guess I kind of get both sides here. I guess I kind of get both sides. There's, you know, you don't want to give in. You want to resist until the end. Charging cops with trash bin shields. Um, no, I've not seen that video. Davin, you're kind of you're kind of o for two so far. Both videos that you've posted has is only been more evidence against Israelis. <laughs> Against the, I, I I think you're trying you're trying to like show like there's some, there's some evidence there there's some antagoniz- antagonizing there. Um, so this is this is shocking to me that this is on mainstream media. We got Chris Hayes here pointing out that this is not um this is not this is not about um the protest. This is about 
the war crimes that are happening in Gaza. And this crackdown is a perfect distraction from that. Now, does that, is that the pro-Palestinians fault for, for, you know, for, for protesting and creating a scene? No. Um, the, the distraction, it's it, the, the police state and the government are reacting to this with, with the kind of energy that they're reacting to because they could, uh, it's dangerous, it's dangerous and dangerous. <laughs> Fence sitting white moderate. But this, this feeds, that feeds into the narrative. That's, that's the narrative that they want. And Chris Hayes is, uh, surprisingly, mainstream media. Hope you have a job, Chris. They're going to they're gonna put you in the, uh, uh, they're going to put you in the Kornacki corner. You keep telling the truth like this, Chris. Um, but he's pointing out that, you know, perfect distraction from the real issue. Um, it, I, don't, I don't understand how this is supposed to benefit Biden, though. Doesn't really seem to benefit Biden at all. In the spring of 1969, a group of students at Morehouse College, historically back college in Atlanta, were frustrated by what they said was the school's slow progress on civil rights. And they'd protested, they'd been rebuffed. Yeah, woke patriot. That's so they locked the college trustees in their office for two days and essentially held them hostage. Now, one of the trustees was. Yeah, I, yeah anybody comparing what's happening to January 6th. Um, would would if you're if you're making that comparison unironically, then you are effectively watering down the attempted s seditious treason of the January six protesters. You're trying to destroy the definition of sedition if you're trying to compare the two. There is nothing that compares to January six, um, especially leftist protests was Martin Luther King Sr., father of the... locked the college trustees in their office for two days and essentially held them hostage. Now, one of the trustees was Martin Luther King Sr., father of the recently slain civil rights leader. He began having chest pains, and one of the students later said, we let him out of there so he wouldn't be accused of murder. That student and his classmates eventually gave up under a prominence of amnesty from the college. The college reneged, and he was expelled. It would be years before he was rehabilitated, decades before he became known the world over as actor Samuel L. Jackson. Now, I tell this story for two reasons. One, to remind us that college activism has long been a part of college education. The other reason, though, is to get a sense of proportion, which seems lacking today. As we watch the disturbing imagery emerge from campuses at Columbia, UCLA, University of Texas, University of South Florida, so many others, where cops, or in some cases mobs, uh, took down pro-Palestinian student encampments and protests, as well as professors and journalists and just random bystanders. The cumulative effect of all this coverage, along with some unverified assertions from police and politicians, has been to drive home the idea that student protests are a basically a terrorist-level threat, that they have to be neutralized by battalions of cops armed like soldiers with MRAPs and sonic cannons. The reason uh, this seems to me a reaction that's out of proportion to the protests themselves. It seems especially true when you look at some other campuses like Thank Brown University, link, baby, but I don't where think administrators I to negotiated with student protesters baby, who I'll took down it. their encampment. And Wesleyan University, whose president said the protesting there was nonviolent and non-disruptive, adding, as long as it continues in this way, the university will not attempt to clear the encampment. Now, these universities, crucially, have reiterated their important existing rules against anti-Semitic invective and harassment, certainly, while also protecting assembly, which seems sensible, also out of step with what you're seeing elsewhere. Because ever since October 7th, when Hamas committed its atrocities in Israel, there has been this obsessive media focus on college campuses. And that's true partly because there are genuine issues worth debating, including the degree to which universities are creating spaces that are, that are hostile to pro-Israel Jewish students where they feel under threat, or universities, the degree to which they're suppressing pro-Palestinian speech. And those issues really do matter. But the way that so many prominent voices have focused so exclusively on colleges feels honestly a bit decadent to me. Like we're doing a, a paper doll version of the conflict because the actual reality of what's happening 
in Gaza is so horrific, unceasing, and high stakes, it's more enjoyable to argue about what college kids are doing than to confront the human misery and destruction that's happening in the actual conflict that is, of course, the source of these protests. What seems most worth debating isn't campus speech, but whether the U.S. government should continue to fund and support an Israeli war in Gaza that has pushed more than a million people to the brink of famine, a war that has damaged half of the buildings in Gaza, a war that has failed to more bring home most of the hostages held by Hamas that has fact and led to the death of some of those hostages, as well as the deaths of an estimated 34,000 Palestinians. Maybe, maybe half of all total buildings. The number, the 90 percent number, I think, is residential buildings. Palestinians, including roughly 10,000 women and 13,000 children. Is that ongoing effort morally defensible? Is it strategically wise? Are we as a nation doing the right or wrong thing and continuing to support it? Now, whenever that becomes a question, it almost becomes reflexive to challenge the questioner. That's right. And I can't help but think of the protests that marked the lead up to the Iraq war, which yep. were both widely attended and widely attacked. And I'm and sorry to beat up on you, Davey. <laughs> Where were you standing on this one? Mr. Mr. Pro Romney, I mean, you're prince. You're you're somewhat principled, Davy. Did you stood up against this war, right? It was unnecessary. We didn't need to go there, right? And many many prominent war supporters, including one I time student teeth professor activist. Christopher Hitchens, blasted those demonstrations. And he pointed to the fact that some of the people organizing the protests <laughs> held genuinely odious and fringe views. All right, fine, I'll let you off the hook this time, Davey. Just this time. Oh, oh, I'm Davey, I'm a toddler. I don't even know what politics is. No excuse! For instance, the view that North Korea is a worker's paradise and a great place. That's a horrible view. There were protest organizers with bad views, lots of them. There were people at the protest with terrible views. There were people who thought 9-11 was an inside job. I would argue with them myself at protests. Did that have anything to do at all with whether the war in Iraq was moral and prudent? No. The war in Iraq demonstrably was neither. On that, the protesters were right. Which brings us back to Columbia University, where 56 years ago, almost to the day, student protesters took over the same building, Hamilton Hall, that was occupied earlier this week. They, too, were forcibly removed and arrested. Many were bloodied and beaten for protesting, among other things, the university's involvement in the Vietnam War. <laughs> You're they believed the back. war was a moral catastrophe and the U.S. should stop waging it. They were right. And the fact that there were absolutely genuine extremists among those protesters in 68 again, had no bearing on whether they were right or not about that. What I find particularly maddening about our focus on the protesters of the conflict is that it's an invasion. It avoids the difficult task of being universally empathetic to our fellow human beings and truly reckoning with the scale of devastation that is wrought by our country, in our names, with our support. In the aftermath of 9-11, we waged a global war on terror for two decades that killed an estimated 430,000 people, many of them children, million. women, elderly, innocents. In more Vietnam, like we were estimated to have killed more than a million people, huge swaths of them, civilians, Much, women, children, male noncombatants, old people, and the like. Can you even make sense of those numbers? I can't. No one can. It's hard to think of them, to contend with them as actual real human beings who lived lives before you took them, who are people like you or I, who were loved by the people in their lives. It is much easier to get angry at the spoiled brats on college campuses. Why are they being so disruptive? What are they so upset about? If you feel that way, which I can understand, honestly, I felt irritation and anger at protesters many times in my life, even ones I was ostensibly on the same side as, broadly speaking. If you feel that way, just try recasting the question. Why are all these people so upset that we're helping a government wage a brutal war that's killed 13,000 children? The question kind of answers itself. To take seriously the scale of human suffering that's happening in Gaza doesn't mean you must come down on the side of the protesters, certainly. There are many people who think the war is a brutal but necessary campaign for Israel's defense. What it does necessitate is that you weigh all the human suffering Indeed, against the actual end game of the conflict that is currently being waged 
and is unarticulated as of now. Yeah. A conflict the U.S. continues to support. Yeah, in, in a way, it's a kind of gaslighting. The, the timing is not, is not a uh, mystery. Um, Chris Hayes has been going along with the gaslighting uh, until, until recently. So, I mean, we need to point that out. But, yeah, so it's kind of like a mass gaslighting technique, this, this overt focus on you know, spooky uh, protesters. Our humanity demands we focus on those questions first and last. Sure, Chris. Uh, not bad. Not bad for Chris Hayes. Thank you, Woke Patriot, for posting that one in the chat. I guess let's take a look at this stupid Al Sharpton fucking video, him comparing the protesters to January 6th. Oh, wow, this is a clip from Morning Joe. Okay, wow, so that we get to see Mika's reaction too, huh? What about that 5% mm -hmm. on the far, far left that are going to call me this or that or the other? No, call this out. This is wrong. Call this out. Say we need to help the people of Gaza. Right. You can do it. We need to end the, the, the threat of famine in Gaza. We need to pressure Netanyahu to move towards a ceasefire and bring those right. hostages home. This detracts from our bigger cause. And let me say this: the politics of that, what is being wrong. So, Joe, so, so, fucking Joe Scarborough is saying that <laughs> that the best way, <clears throat> the best way to force the government to 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 do a ceasefire, to negotiate with you know, force Israel to come to the table and do all that, is to shut up and behave, is to shut up and be good little boys and girls and. And let and let Daddy Biden handle this. Is that basically what he's saying? So then, so then oh, Al Sharpton, so then Al Sharpton that, comes Joe, in here. With hostages so, home. So, there's, so, that, so that's that's Joe Scarborough's part, and he's been doing this twenty four seven with with Gaza. Um, you know, fully repeating one hundred percent Israeli uh, propaganda talking points. Um. So here's here's Al Sharpton. I'm curious to hear what Minka actually has to say. This detracts from our bigger cause. And let me say this: the politics of that, what is being robbed by them not doing that, Joe, where you and I agree. How do the Democrats? How do all of us on that side say January 6 was wrong? If you can have the same pictures going on on college campus, Lord, don't make a parallel with January 6. You lose For the some moral reason, high ground. That has happened though. Yeah, Joe Scarborough agreed. Good Lord, don't make a comparison, Joe Scarborough. Ah, well, he makes a good point. Never forget who Joe Scarborough is. It's it's every time I show a clip from him in the fucking uh, uh, morning douchebag show, I like to point out that he is uh, ex-Republican, uh, pro-establishment all the way. Thank you, Davey, for that clip. Uh, okay, so now we're we're actually past our uh, protest news. Finally done with the protest stuff, and now we're moving on to just uh, Gaza in general. Here, just a little few few little tidbits. Al Sharpton's a lizard. Just a few little tidbits coming uh, coming out of Gaza. That's you know nothing has gotten better. It's in fact gotten worse. The Rafa offensive is still very much on the table. Um, bad actors, including a, uh, one person in the chat saying, um, you know, repeating the, the, the lie, the talking point that uh, Israel's offer was very generous. Uh, Israel's offer boils down to release the hostages and we will destroy you 40 days later. That's supposed to be the new, the new deal going down extremely generous to hamas um it's the same fucking deal as before that hasn't changed really now i i don't have it queued up but right before i started the stream i was uh listening to uh, an interview on al jazeera with a hamas spokesperson calm down um and the a spokesperson was uh talking about the the current negotiations that are happening in egypt uh, long story short, they're talking, but nothing, nothing has been, no progress has really been made. 
basically. This extremely generous offer, I guess, still being mulled over. <clears throat> Starting off with our Gaza news here, here is, uh, I can't remember her name, but she's a really well-known, uh, she's like, she's basically considered the leader of the settler movement. Um, like to, like to point out that this person is not a, yeah, Davey, thank you for repeating what I said, except for the hostages part there, but basically, so yeah, it's give us, give us all your political leverage and we will destroy you 40 days later. If, if would you would you take that deal if you say yes you're a fucking liar nobody in their right fucking minds taking that deal give us all your political leverage and we'll destroy you 40 days later welcome back smash good to see you thank you for coming here anyway back to this it would be one thing for this horrible person to be saying what she's saying um in a vacuum. The problem is, is that this woman is highly respected by Israeli government officials of all different shapes and sizes. What she is saying is being reflected by the Ben Gavirs uh, of, uh, of Israel. Very much a harbinger. Another fella here. Yeah, this fella. Um, totally got the back of this of this unapologetic pro settler person. You hear? Uh, trigger warning! You're about you're you're about to hear just you know just disgusting casual talk about the annihilation of uh, of an entire people. Gaza Strip. We can't just take a whole strip of land and and say Israel's, Israelis can't live there. It doesn't make sense. This is our sovereign state. Would you live there? Of course. By the beach? Oh, for sure. Yes, my husband's also talking about a building. He so I'm sorry, I've already shown this clip. Uh, I thought this was a new clip. I thought maybe she was just wearing the same clothes, but I've actually already showed this clip. This was recorded several months ago. We'll go ahead and finish it out, but I just wanted to point that out. I thought this was new. I should have Proofread this closer. He has a yeshiva, a Talmudic institute here, uh, so building a branch in, uh, yes, in Aza. We have lists already of about 500 families that are willing on the drop of a hat. Hamas is not stupid enough to think that, the, that they're going to garner goodwill with the United States and Israel by handing over the hostages. Davey, you, you, you like, you're, you're insisting on making my point for me. I don't know, I don't know why you're even commenting, bro. You're, you're just legitimately making my point for me. It's the, it's the shittiest deal, and there's no way in fucking hell anybody's taking that deal. To just move into, uh, we have North, Central, and South uh, Gaza, and people are going to start building towns. We have names of the towns. We have where we're building them. It's, it's already being planned, and we have people signed up. You can't leave it without Jews in the Gaza Strip. It's too big a piece of land. It's too important for us to let it become Hamas town, as we call it, filled with terrorists. We love the Gaza Strip. Yeah. We can't just take. Yeah, filled with terrorists, women and children. Um, <clears throat> I don't have time to to show this, but um, well, I guess I'll show the I'll show the real clip, the 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 Bibi Netanyahu here. Uh, getting ahead of the story, so it's it's looking like the IC, uh, ICC is about to issue arrest warrants um, for members of the Israeli government, including Bibi Netanyahu. Now, does Bibi Netanyahu and and Ben Gavir and all the rest think that they're going to be arrested? No, but I think the reason why um, he's getting it, he's trying to get ahead of this, he's actually commenting on it instead of ignoring it, is that it it will create inconveniences. And it also makes this um, Israel is the most moral army. Israel's the, you know it's the most everything everything we do is moral and justified. It makes that argument all the more harder to make when you have international when you have the highest international legal bodies of in the world, you know who who define the de who make who 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 make the definition of what is and isn't genocide and et cetera et cetera. 
when when they're saying no you're not the most moral army you're not you know you're you're war criminals and in fact if you know if if any of our member states if you land on any of our member states we will they're they're going to be obliged to arrest you netanyahu knows that he's still going to be able to vacation in the united states without any resistance canada to probably the uk as well but this does complicate things you might see he might want to take a trip to the UK and you might see Rishi Sunak saying, well, you know, obviously I'm not going to arrest you, but I don't really want to deal with the bad press from not arresting you. So if you could please not come, that would be really great for me. I have a reelection happening and I don't really want to try. I don't want to I don't want to have to try to defend myself from not arresting you in the press. I can't deal with that right now. Of course, I won't. But. I don't want to deal with the with the bad press of 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 not arresting you. So like I said, that makes this, you know, that makes it more complicated for Israeli officials to to travel around. It even even it it hurt uh Dick Cheney. I remember one time Dick Cheney uh landing in in France and there was there was speculation is he going to be arrested? Is he going to be arrested? And of course he wasn't. Um but it can complicate. It can complicate that free movement and like I said, it's a big uh, bullet hole, the big bullet to this narrative that Israel's the most moral army and that, you know, that they can do no wrong. That news led to this response from Netanyahu himself. You have to hear this to believe this. The International Criminal Court in The Hague is contemplating issuing arrest warrants against senior Israeli government and military officials as war criminals. This would be an outrage of historic proportions. International bodies like the ICC arose in the wake of the Holocaust committed against the Jewish people. They were set up to prevent such horrors, to prevent future genocides. Yet now, the international court is trying to put Israel in the dock, yeah. 80 years after the horrors of the Holocaust. Yeah, the Jewish state calls on decent people everywhere to reject this outrage by the ICC. To stand with Israel. You know, I, I, not that it needs to be said, but having the Holocaust committed against you actually doesn't give you the right to commit Holocausts against other people. The, it, the, the, the phrase isn't never again except Palestinians. It's never again. No matter how hard this government, no matter how hard the people that carry water for Israel work, the history is actually really, really well documented. The Nakba was well documented. The 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 nineteen forty seven uh, invasion by Israel was well documented, and of course, what's happening in Gaza right now is well documented. No matter the repeated insistence that everything that this that this government does is justified. We do have the history. They they can't take that away as desperately as they want to as desperately as they want to. They can't take that history away. They can't, no matter how many journalists that they kill, they can't stop the truth from being documented. They can stop the truth from being effective at creating change by gaslighting and you know, giving, you know, doing PR and spin for governments and things like that. So they can stop that information from actually creating change, that's possible, but they can't stop it from being documented which I guess is something. <laughs> Ask the Native Americans if that matters to them. As we fight the barbarians of Hamas in Iran, and as we work to secure a more peaceful world. It doesn't really get more kind of crude and cynical does, uh, than that, does it? The ICC was set up, or too much the ICC wasn't set up after the Holocaust. It was set up in sort of the, the, the 1990s, I think, very recently. <laughs> um, but he's right, sort that. of this idea of genocide, um, we did get that after the Holocaust. Um, but the idea that because Israel is a Jewish state and because Jews suffered under the Holocaust, you can't possibly accuse Israel of any war crimes whatsoever, to me Sir. just seems, I, I think to most people in the world, seems transparently ridiculous. I know at the end to call Hamas and Iran barbarians. Now, to me, that's kind of, that's verging on genocidal language. You know, you're dehumanizing, um, you know, a whole people, Iran's many millions of people live there. You're calling them barbarians. 
Yeah, it's one thing to call Hamas barbarians. I, I don't know if I would agree with that. Um, I certainly agree that they're vicious, disgusting terrorists, and I don't shed any tear for them. But it's that dehumanizing, you know, that we're, we're different from them. You know, that, they're, that they're, a other, they're an other species. They might as well be alien. No, they're human. Same kind of humans that, that, you, that you and I are. Same kind of evil that you and I are capable of. They're not that separated from us. That's where that language gets kind of iffy when it comes to Hamas. But then, yeah, calling the entire population of Iran barbarians? Well, holy shit. Well, holy fucking shit. But there you go. If you want to see the rest of this amazing report from Navarra Media, go ahead and check it out right here. Navarra Media just absolutely kick, kick, killing it. No, no pun intended, sorry. But they're doing a great job. Um, great clip here from Owen Jones where he, he just plays out in full this Danabash. Originally just meant doesn't speak Greek or Italian. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Um, some, somebody in some Italian restaurant using the word barbarian accurately, completely confusing everybody else. But no, this Dana Bash uh, clip says it all. This is exactly the framing that Joe Biden wants, that, you know, um, that these protesters were violent, that they're, that they're making Jewish students across the entire nation feel uncomfortable, that this is, this is inexcusable, that they're, um, you know, they're, they're violating free speech and they're manhandling and, and, you know, all the things that we've heard in the chat so far. This is the, this is the framing that Dana Bash is very quick to come to. Yep, this is, this is the reality. And she couldn't be farther from the truth. And I want you to remember this next time you see CNN, because they really are um, Fox Newsing it up when it comes to Israel. Every time I turn on uh, CNN, it's Tapper Jake with his pretend made up uh, expression. Actually, I think was it was it you that put the was it you woke patriot that put this amazing meme? Yeah, woke patriot put this amazing meme. Maybe it's kind of has small text, but we can see it here. But this perfectly captures the stupid fucking face that Tapper Jake has uh, when he's when he's reporting this stuff. This pretend pretend sincerity. So this. This, uh, you know, this is provocateuring. This, this comic per perfectly describes provocateuring. Um, Davy, in this, in this scenario, I mean, certainly you don't, you don't, you know, I know this is very straw picky, but you don't agree with this person, this, this person wrapped in the Israeli flag, right? You would, you would agree that this is provocateuring, that this is not free speech. He doesn't have a right. Maybe he has a right to slur to 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 sling these slurs, calling Jews self-hating Jews, and then yelling at them to 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 say Heil Hitler. I know you want to do it, but then he he goes and throws a, a coffee cup at him. Certainly, you would certainly you would disagree. You would agree that this is not free speech. I'm on mobile. Okay, all right. Well, he basically says Palestine never existed. You fucking terrorist pieces of shit. Pro-Palestinians are just chanting, disclose, divest, we will not stop, we will not rest. Who's paying you animals? Soros? Iran? Go get raped in Gaza, Hamas dogs. Absolutely the kind of shit that you, that you absolutely see thrown at pro-Palestinians. Absolutely the kind of shit you see thrown at them. Is that a fake Jew with you? Is that a Jew with you? Fake Jew traitor. Enjoy the gas chamber, token rat. Say Heil Hitler, you fucking... Okay, can't say that stuff. But say it. Absolutely see that kind of stuff hurled at pro-Palestinians. Take off your mask. Give me your names. You'll never get a job again. Baby raping, rapist scum. I don't know. Baby raping. I guess... Well, no, I guess they would say that because they think they, they equate pro-Hamas. So they say every, every atrocity that Hamas has ever committed. Um, but yeah, I don't really hear the baby killing too often. But no, they, we, do, we do see pro-Israeli people making that argument that, you know, if you support Palestine, you support Hamas, therefore you support the atrocities of Hamas. I think he can yell at her uh, all he wants, as long as it's not threats against them, it doesn't throw stuff at them. So is 
is intentionally walking into this group with your body the same thing as throwing a coffee cup at them? Even even if they are even if they are blocking your entrance, even if they're they're getting in your way and disrupting, isn't that isn't that provocateuring? He can't uh, tell directly in their face. He can yell from a relative distance. But I mean, isn't that isn't this just the same as I'm doing nothing wrong? I'm doing nothing wrong. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't block my entrance. It's against my free speech. How dare you? How dare you? The same thing, isn't it? Even even if these people are disrupting that person's day, they're preventing that person from going to a location temporarily. So then, you know, so then the he finally he finally goes to he, you know, they finally say, Will you please just leave and shut up? And then the conclusion here is Tapper Jake. This just in, a blood-curdling hate crime. Protesters told a Jewish student to leave campus. Many are asking, are American Jews no longer safe in higher education? This is the narrative we see, I see consistently on CNN. <laughs> Thank you, The True Steel, for sticking around as long as you have. I appreciate it. Um, so just have an earful of this. It's disgusting. It's, it's, it's exactly what CNN has been doing, basically from the start. But it really is becoming absurd um, when, when they're, you know, when, <laughs> when one side is so clearly not, not the antagonist. Hey, Lenny, thank you so much for being here. And hey, everyone, if you're, if you're, if you're subscribed to the news underground, make sure you're subscribing to Lenny accidents waiting to happen. Great live streams. Thank you, Lenny, once again, for being a supporter of the news underground and an owner of beautiful garbage fuel merch. If you want to also be like Lenny, get your garbage fuel merch right here sorry i fell asleep but i'm back now <laughs> that's funny no lenny thank you but i'd rather watch a tree grow or a knee grow oh he got me <laughs> he got me i didn't see that one coming he got me guys i was looking at the bitcoin name i was like this guy seems like a like a grifter like a like a bad actor <sighs> he got me Uh, what's wrong with knees? Well, there you go, folks. Now, see, now he's going to what? He, so, what he's going to do is he's going to report my channel for racism, and then you know try to clip that, and then say, oh, you see, he's you know he's racist. So, we might see the channel get uh, get banned again uh, because you know very similar situation to that uh, person who said that they were attacked because of their religion. So we may we, we might see in the next few minutes I might go off air and that will be the reason why because he he got me to say kind of similar to the n word he got me to say it and he's going to report me on it it's a classic classic technique anyway before I get banned let's let's watch this horrible Dana Bash clip on just how badly CNN is uh you know framing this and they're doing this intentionally this is not this is not a mistake this is very intentional and Joe Biden thumbs up he thinks this is great so easy, isn't it, to issue fiery denunciations of the likes of, say, Fox News. That's a bogeyman of biased broadcasters, isn't it? Like a pantomime, we can all boo at it. So obviously propaganda, so obviously spreading falsehoods, so vulgar. You want to make common cause with a respectable American liberal and watch their eyes roll to the back of their heads in shame and embarrassment? Just mention Fox News and bingo. CNN, on the other hand, that's seen as respectable. Not propaganda from them, they're just straight down the line, right? Now, that should always have been an illusion, but CNN have utterly disgraced themselves over Gaza. Now, I'm going to start by playing you an absolutely toxic segment from CNN. It's the sort of propaganda you expect, frankly, from the news channel of a tin pot dictatorship, which turns oh, reality on its head and tells you that up is down and black is white. No, so, I mean, the reason why I showed this after all that coverage is because I wanted to, I wanted to fill your head with evidence, right? With, with stone cold evidence of, of what the real narrative is. So we know what's real and what isn't, right? These were peaceful protesters being antagonized by provocateurs who were committing violence against them. Majority. Maybe, maybe we can find 1%, 5% evidence of the contrary, of the contrary, but so far, no clips provided, except for Davin, who is basically 
shown more evidence of Israeli pro-Israeli protesters. Um, only really shown evidence of Palestinians defending themselves. So that's the reality. All right. Now watch, watch. This is CNN. This is airports, old folks' homes, doctors' offices. Right across the world. This is you know CNN considered real journalism, real information. You would never assume that they're just stone cold lying to you. You would never assume that CNN is just like straight up fabricating things. That's the context. Let's play. The presenter behind it, the network's chief political correspondent, Dana Bash. Brace yourself. Make sure you're not in a too bad mood first. Let's have a listen, shall we? Welcome to Inside Politics. I'm Dana Bash. We start with destruction, violence, and hate on college campuses across the country. No, and she's not talking about the, the, the pro-Israeli pro counter-protesters, by the way. This was the scene just a short while ago at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Police clashing with protesters. Twelve people were arrested. <laughs> Hours earlier, protests rocked the University of Arizona, where campus police used chemical irritant munitions to remove protesters. Around the same time at UCLA, pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian groups were attacking each other, hurling all kinds of objects. Attacking each other, huh? Wood pallet, fireworks, parking cones, even a scooter. So that, that makes it sound like both sides were, were using those things when, in fact, there was le legitimately one, you know, pro the pro-Palestinians were not firing fireworks. Um, I haven't seen a lot of, uh, I don't think I've seen a single image of pro-Palestinians using bear spray or mace. I'm sure there had to have been a few, though. And before that, the NYPD was able to clear Columbia University after protesters barricaded themselves inside a campus building. 300 oh, people God. were arrested at Columbia and City College of New oh. York. Wow. But it is unclear how many were the actually violence. students. New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Look at this. Look at this pro Palestinian guy. He's tipping over. He's tipping things over. Morning that professional oh, outside agitators are getting involved. There is a movement to radicalize young people. And I'm not going to wait God, until I it's wish. done and all of a sudden acknowledge the existence of it. This is a global problem yeah. that young people are being influenced by those who are professionals at radicalizing our children. And I'm not going to allow that to happen as the mayor of the city of New York. Many of these protests started peacefully with legitimate questions about the war, but in many cases, they lost the plot. They delegitimized themselves by being attacked. Isn't that great? Oh, well, they occupied a building. They, not, not every one of these locations occupied a building, but, but every one of these protests were met with violent counter-protesters. Not everyone, but a good chunk of them. So they, isn't that great? You know, I would normally respect your call to, to humanity and your call for peace and a ceasefire, but you were attacked by pro-Israeli provocateurs, and you, and you defended yourself. That is unbelievably disgusting. They're calling for a ceasefire. Well, there was a ceasefire on October 6th, the day before Hamas. No, there wasn't. Just because, just because there uh, wasn't. <laughs> so, so, there, so there wasn't on October 6th, there wasn't a, a brutal there, a, a blockade. The, the Gazans weren't allowed to fish. You know, all these, all these things, you know, it's like, you know, we, we were just minding our, the, the narrative, right? We were just minding our own business. <laughs> the only business we were doing is helping Hamas, Bibi Netanyahu, helping Hamas. But we were just minding our own business on October 6th. Full-blown apartheid in the West Bank. But no, we had a, we had a, we had a military-style blockade in the Gaza Strip. Uh, they, they weren't allowed to, you know... To, to trade, there was no there was no corridor between the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Complete separation. So the crimes have been documented. Oh, it's a, a laundry list of crimes. But on October, there was a ceasefire. 
We were doing nothing wrong. We were minding our own business. It's a t- full-blown lie, dude. A full-blown lie. Did, did the Israelis deserve October 7th? No. No one, des- no one deserves that. I don't, ca- I don't care how evil you are. That, it's just atrocious what happened. Um, but the idea that Israel was minding its own business with the Gaza Strip, a well-documented open-air prison, Okay, and it wasn't being called a prison because they were being held hostage or the uh, Hamas was their prison guard. It was considered a prison because of the fucking blockade. Because they couldn't come and go. They couldn't do normal business. Dana. But that's not what Dana wants you to think. For a ceasefire. Well, there was a ceasefire on October 6th, the day before Hamas terrorists brutally murdered more than a thousand people inside Israel and took hundreds more as hostages. This hour, I'll speak to an American Israeli family whose son is still held captive by Hamas since that horrifying day that brought us to this. At radicalizing our children, and I'm not going to allow that to happen. Jewish students feel unsafe at brought us to this moment. You don't hear the pro-Palestinian protesters talking about that. We will. That's, I mean, another lie. The pro-Palestinian protesters absolutely want the hostages to be released. They'll, they're holding up signs that says, come home now. They want a ceasefire. They want a legitimate ceasefire so that they can no- negotiate for the rest of these hostages. Not a, not a give up your political leverage and we'll destroy you promise, but a ceasefire promise. Oh, well, that will mean Hamas will exist after the fact. I got bad news for you, jackasses. Hamas is going to exist after Rafa. Yeah, I know. Oh, no, they won't. No, they won't. The fuck? They... Hamas currently exists in northern Gaza. The goddamn, the goddamn uh, uh, dock that the United States is trying to build for to bring in aid was recently attacked by Hamas in an area that's supposed to be cleared. You you can't get rid of an ideology created from decades of of pain and oppression. You're not going to get rid of that by, I don't know what, shaming them? Largest open-air prison in mankind's history. We were just minding our own business. Now, protesting the way the Israeli government, the Israeli prime minister is prosecuting the retaliatory war against Hamas is one thing. Making Jewish students feel unsafe at their own schools. So what does that mean? Like I said, what does that mean? If, if, I, call, if I call a pro-Israeli person out for their support of ethnic cleansing, and that makes them uncomfortable, am I anti-Semitic for doing that? What, what does that even mean? It's completely nebulous. You made Jewish people feel uncomfortable. Really? So what? Any fucking comedian is also guilty of anti-Semitism? The government, the Israeli prime minister, is prosecuting the retaliatory war against Hamas is one thing. Making Jewish students feel unsafe at their own schools is unacceptable. And it is happening way too much. Feel unsafe. Wow. You know, the over 30,000 Gaz- dead Gazans, I bet they feel a little unsafe. You know, the, the, one, the 1.5 million refugees huddled in Rafa feel a little unsafe. What does that even mean? I feel unsafe. That makes you anti-Semitic. What? Unsafe at their own schools is unacceptable and it is happening way too much right so she cares about people feeling unsafe at school huh she gives a shit about that so you care about the 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 pro-palestinians that are getting any number as we've seen in the the university of mississippi literally getting like monkey chants chanted at them i'm sure dana has their back too they feel very unsafe with the cops beating their fucking head in dana Lots of people feeling very unsafe nowadays. Pretty selective about caring, though. Their own schools is unacceptable, and it is happening way too much 
right now. I'm a UCLA student. I deserve to go here. We pay tuition. This is our school, and they're not letting me walk in. My class is over there. I want to use that entrance. I want to use that entrance. That's that's a really key part because he's being prevented from using this entrance, but there's actually, I think, one or two other entrances. He's like, it's my free speech rights. It's my free speech rights. Just walk around, dude. It's not your free speech right to get up in someone's face and get physical with someone because they've because they've ruined your day, because they've inconvenienced you. It's my free speech right to use that entrance. I'm paying tuition here. No, the fuck it isn't, dude. It's not your free speech right to fucking blast through a barricade. Even, even though it's inconveniencing you, even though it's preventing you from learning. <laughs> now, if these protesters have somehow magically figured out how to lock down this building indefinitely, then yeah, we're dealing with a completely different scenario here. But that is not the fucking case. You're temporarily being blocked from using one of the entrances to a building. You are not the victim. It's our school, and they're not letting me walk in. My class is over there. I want to use that entrance. Why can't they go? Will you let me go in? This could be over in a second. Just let me and my friends go in. Again, what you just saw is 2024 in Los Angeles. Harkening back to the night. He felt so unsafe. Oh my God. Oh my God, this poor little baby, this poor little cupcake. He felt so unsafe. Oh my gosh, bro. Me and my friends just wanna go through, we wanna use that entrance. Completely performative. A total fucking joke. And Dana Bash totally has the, totally has the back of this bad actor, of this grifter. We pay tuition, this is our school. And they're not letting me walk in. My class is over there. I want to use that entrance. Well, I can't take it. Will you let me go in? This could be over in a second. Just let me and my yeah. friends. A proper in. protest wouldn't be disruptive against him. And he feels he he feels so unsafe. Dana Bash asked him. He feels so unsafe. Thank you, David, Again, for admitting. What you just saw is 2024 in Los Angeles. I'll be with you in a minute. Harkening back to the 1930s in Europe, and I do not say really? that lightly. Harkening back, and she doesn't say that lightly. This is just like fascist Germany. And I do not say that lightly. Wow, yeah, fascist Germany. Show me your papers. Harkening back to the 1930s in Europe, and I do not say that lightly. The fear among Jews in this country is palpable right now. I mean, what the fuck do you say to that shit? That? This, this little pussy feeling unsafe, incapable of using one entrance out of two or three? This is just like Nazi Germany. Pathetic, dude. All right. Um, I got time for one more clip, and then I got to get rolling here. I've been streaming for five hours now. I got time for one more clip. Um... Yeah, no, I want, I want, this is a 20 minute uh, clip from Mehdi Hassan, Zateo here, really great. I don't want to, I want to give it all the time it deserves. I don't want to rush through this one. There was no in indication that he was Jewish and felt threatened for being Jewish. He was wearing a Star of David. He was wearing a Star of David. So. I, I don't have time for this. And unfortunately, I don't have time for Georgia and Ukraine today, but I will be covering it tomorrow. Look forward to that. Tomorrow we'll be starting with Ukraine. And then, you know, filling it in with some world news and whatnot. The last video, though, I want to show you. Oh, it's okay, Davey. Yeah, it's all right. But no, thank you. You see, this is why you're so fucking frustrating. Because you're, you, you're, you clearly are not stupid. You're clearly capable of critical thinking going beyond your emotions. And then you, and then you just fall back. And then you fall back on this shit. You know, even though you see the reality in front of you, even though you're acknowledging the reality in front of you, you're still falling back on this comfortable conservatism. So here's the last example of um, Joe Biden of the pro-Israeli lobby losing the zeitgeist, losing um, the victimhood narrative. 
when when you have failed to convince the view that you're the victim when they desperately desperately want to make you the victim want to want to agree with your framework when you're when you're too absurd even for the view you're you're losing it you're losing it you know and if if israel ever does ultimately lose support of the united states in some miracle it's going to be because bb netanyahu and the and the right-wing extremists have overextended have overplayed their hand they could have taken half of gaza put up a wall and the settlers could have been moving in right now and the whole world would have would have cheered on netanyahu after october 7th if he just took half of gaza but he's he's going too damn far they want it all ben gavir wants it all and not just the gaza strip you you think this is going to stop at gaza they're already approving and taking historic amounts of more land from the west bank using october 7th as an excuse no hamas to be seen but doesn't matter all right let me just show this here joe biden has lost the view alert joe biden has lost the view we need to shift the framing of these college protests in fact in, in my view i think college campuses have been the place for anti-war protests for as far as i can remember I think uh, recent protests haven't even reached um, the scale of the major students. I think I think you're going to be very disappointed when the when the when the push comes to shove, when the checks need to be cashed, when Israel asks, actually has to go out there and actually defend U.S. interests. I think you're going to be incredibly disappointed in your investment, Davy. The the idea that you that you're okay with the incredible amount of suffering that the palestinians have experienced throughout 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 their entire existence to maintain some nebulous peace in israel in the middle east disgusts me this it's disgusting that that you would justify that that crime against the palestinians because, well, it might benefit maybe one day the U.S. interests. Says it all, man. Says it all. Let's, let's, start, let's start over here. Been the place for anti-war protests for as far as I can remember. I think uh, recent protests haven't even reached um, the scale of the major student protests that we saw in the late 1960s Make against the Vietnam War. strategy put that in the Discord. Or even the 1980s against South Africans, uh, South Africa's practice of apartheid. Uh, we saw calls during apartheid to divest from South African um, companies, and that was very successful. Nelson Mandela said he believed that's what led, uh, in many respects, to pal uh, to you know South Africa being um, freed from that system. And so I think these are anti-war protests, and I think it's very distressing, uh, distressing that we are framing these as pro-Palestinian protests or pro-Israeli protests. These are anti-war protests, and what they are, the students that I have spoken to at many of the Ivy League schools and a student that I did speak to also at Emory, where a professor Thank you, was David. thrown to the ground Thank you. simply for asking the police, what are you doing to these peacefully protesting students? Um, the, the students are telling me this is a humanitarian crisis. What we also don't talk enough about is the fact that 35,000, mainly women and children that are Palestinians, have been murdered. murdered. What we also don't talk about, I think, enough is that for some reason, the discussion of against Israel's policies which the UN has called war crimes which the international criminal court is investigating as war crimes what we don't say is these are people these are civilians and we must protect them even president biden at this point has said you have gone too far so it has never been in my life in my career the criticizing policies of government is equated with anti-Semitism. And that, I think, is a Nailed far it. right, it. comes from the far right. It comes from the 
authoritarian leanings where they don't want students on these campuses to voice their opinions because they want to change the narrative going forward. I, and I think we have I to do, be very, very careful Since I haven't said anything, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I, I do have to do this. Uh, it is one of the great rights as an American to stand up and say something's wrong. You hear that, Davy? Mm -hmm. Regardless of what you're. Davy, Whoopi disagree disagrees with you, bro. Mm -hmm. Not Whoopi. <laughs> Come on, Davy. You've lost Whoopi. Your color is what your, if you're a woman, man, doesn't matter. And we must teach our people how to be on the lookout. Part of our problem is the media takes what is the best clickbait. So you see the same. Yeah, The View should know about this. <laughs> okay, Whoopi, who's, who's been a member of The View, I think from, from its inception or close to it, um, should, be, should be well aware of taking things out of context and only seeing partial views. Posters, or you see the same people, but you don't see the folks who are doing peaceful stuff and saying, here's what we want to do. I agree, well, Patriot. I would caution the media to be very careful about what they're doing and how they're handling this, because what they seem to be doing is pushing a narrative that people are pushing against, which students are pushing against, which I'm thrilled to see, because I like when students get mad and say, we want to change made. Unfortunately, I see that Brian is side-eyeing me, and he's starting to get annoyed because I said I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> so he knows me for the liar that I am. Okay. Some, some inside jokes there. I don't know who Brian is. I think the producer. All right, there you go. Um, yeah, all right. Well, I've said everything I've said. And, you know, it's... Isn't it crazy? I just, you know, two, two and a half hours of evidence of the reality. And we're still going to see people in this chat deny that reality. Um, with that said, though, I would like to give a special thanks to Davey for uh, being the punching bag for today's stream. Um, you stuck it out through the whole stream. I do appreciate that. I even told you to leave. <laughs> you stuck it out. Uh, so big props to you, Davey. I vociferously and vehemently and aggressively disagree with uh, at least 50% of what you said. Uh, but big props to you all the same. Thank you for sticking around, Davey. Big props to Strategy Member for all your work in the chat and uh, the Discord. Thank you for, for your contributions there. Same to you, Woke Patriot. Thank you, Woke Patriot, for all your contributions to the Discord. Um, big props to Ice King of Space. I know it was low input, but I've been here. No, Zio Duke, thank you so much for being here the entire time. Big props. Hey, you've been here from the start. You're lurking. Thank you, Davey. Appreciate it. Big props to Ice King of Space. Thank you for coming back. OGs, all you OGs coming back, making the chat what it is. An amazing place to have an intelligent debate. No joke, no no irony, no homo. You're tubing, big props to you, you're tubing. The True Steel, big props to the True Steel. Clutch Cargo, make sure you're liking and subscribing to Clutch Cargo, folks. Great streams. The True Steel over here falling asleep, but coming back, coming back. So I do appreciate that. You guys coming back. Thank you, the true steel. Of course, you got to give props to your boy, Lenny. Thank you, Lenny. Holding it down. Accidents never happen. Number one financial contributor to the stream, Lenny. Thank you, Lenny. Big props to Smash. Thank you, Smash, for coming back. Always lovely to see you, Smash. Thank you. Uh, big props to you, Smash. Big props to Davin. Thank you, Davin, for trying to trying to find these links, trying to give us a little bit more context. I do appreciate those links, Davin. Thank you. Big props to you. Who else we got on this list? I just go I just go down the chat list. The opinionator. That was an interesting comment from that person called the opinionator. Just one comment, then they left. Some people just like to drop it. Oh, big props to Kawabunga Tootsie Roll. Thank you, Kawabunga Tootsie Roll, for that early correction. I do appreciate corrections that make me look less stupid. I do, I do appreciate it. I honestly do. So thank you for that correction, um, Tootsie Roll. Yeah, great name, right? 
he wants to buy me a 35,000 guitar. This is it. Make sure you click on that link, folks. Saving the good people of South Boston from accidents. You got it. You got it. All right, everybody. Um, you know, today's, today's especially more than ever, uh, I make, I make the, the defense of my three-step program to create political change because all this seems so overwhelming. How do we actually fix this? How do, where do we even start? I don't even know where to go. I just, I just came in here because you're handsome, and now I don't know what's going on. I'm so confused. Said nobody. <laughs> Said nobody. But you know what I mean. We, we just spent five hours talking about um, the problems. How do, we, how do we actually fix it? Well, believe it or not, even though the problems that we're facing are incredibly complicated, the solution is actually incredibly easy. The solution is political activism. And it's, it can be done in three easy steps. The first step is informing yourself. And hey, you started off in the right place. You're welcome to the news underground. You're informing yourself. Step two. You got to join a progressive political organization, a political organization, whatever, even if it's not progressive, but put your name down to a union. Maybe it's a politician that you're supporting. You want to volunteer for, right? He's, a, he's, he's, he's saying the things you like to say, you like to hear, you know, he's going to buck the establishment. He's going to push back. Well, put your weight behind him, help him out, help that help him or her out. Cause step three, we got to put in the work. We have to show up. Put in the work like Charlie Kirk. It's the only thing that's ever fucking worked. And I made that point very clear against Davies' comments about protesting. Oh, you got to protest the right way. We can't disrupt people. Bullshit. Bullshit. It was women protesting against men who got that got them the right to vote. Those men were very inconvenienced threatening sex threatening you know household we're not going to do we're not going to clean their house we're not going to have sex with you anymore that got them to vote and you bet they were blocking traffic you bet they were blocking uh official buildings as well but you bet they were inconveniencing regular people because it was ridiculous that they were paying taxes but they weren't allowed to vote My work here is like $10 a paycheck, like I want to support it, but I don't know if I want to pay that. Davey, I, you, you piss me off more than any human being on planet Earth right now. <clears throat> That's what I got to say to Davey. You can't afford 10 fucking bucks to your fucking union. Peace in that motherfucking Middle East. Glory to the Ukrainian democracy. And motherfuck the motherfucking bad actor, right-wing conservatives, just asking questions and not standing to a fucking principle in their entire fucking life. There's always a fucking excuse. You either stand for something or you fall for anything. And I've never seen conservatives more spineless than I have in my entire life. Take care of yourself, folks. He's that motherfucking Middle East. When Donald Trump asks for money for the 17th fucking time, what do the right-wingers do? They cough it the fuck up. What does the left do? Ooh, I don't know if I can afford progressivism anymore. Gee, I don't know, guys. Change costs money. Right-wingers are never afraid to contribute to their causes to create change. 
but the left is always hesitant. And we pay for it. Don't be a Davy. Huh? How about you not be a Davy? Peace out.